the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. Sweet transition out of Foxy on this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 9th, 2021. Let's go. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for watching at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show. The boys are here at the toxic table at Boston Connor rocking a beautiful flowing mullet at Ty Schmidt, owner of Green Bay Packers. He's obviously excited for another edition of the segment that captivates the globe every single time it happens. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday in a couple hours. What are you looking forward to? Uh, You know what? I'm just very interested to see what he's going to say. I'm excited that, hey, there's a good chance he is playing Sunday no matter what. So, I mean, We'll find out. I'm excited. Me too. And uh, speaking of excited, let's be jacked up about what happened last night. Mm. On this show, right here, on this microphone, mm-hmm. right here, yesterday, we chatted about last night's Monday Night Football game that was going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In the lead up, in the glitz, in the glamour, in the you know the push that Pittsburgh got by the Monday Night Football folks on ESPN last night was incredibly kind. Hey, that was very yeah. nice. Also, fall back an hour on the clock, so it got dark earlier. Pittsburgh was lit up mm-hmm. for the entirety of that, in, you know, showcase of the city that I was very lucky to be from. What was the guy's name that did the reading thing from Mississippi? Clearly, Wright the, Thompson. Wright Thompson. Yep. Oh. Wright Thompson led off the entire show basically with a a deep dive into what Pittsburgh is. Talked about old Joe Permani. Talked about the year 1933. Johnny Unitas took a trip around town showcasing the multiple, you know, incredible points of Pittsburgh that people hang out at and come from and everything like that. And last night was supposed to be an absolute celebration of football. Last night was supposed to be two of the oldest franchises in the NFL. Two of the most storied franchises in the NFL. Two fan bases desperately trying to figure out what their teams are going to be this year. A lot of question marks on either side about the future and the present, but last night was supposed to be all those things. And what it turned into was, these refs fucking stink. Stink! Chris Boswell, listen, Chris Boswell had maybe the greatest fourth quarter I have ever witnessed out of not just a kicker, out of all sport. Had a fumble recovery, hit a 54-yarder, a 52-yarder, and a game-winning 40-yarder, all in the four, all one quarter of football right there. Fumble recovery, two 50-yarders, and a 40-yard game winner, one quarter. Chris Boswell, you fucking legend, pal. Thank you, boss. Fresh off a concussion protocol test. Fresh out of getting his head taken off and the NFL decided not to punish anybody in that whole thing. What the hell is going on here? Positionism is running at an (laughs) all-time high. That could have been the story. But instead, that should have been the story, by the way. Should have been. This morning, everybody should have been leading off with old Chris Boswell. What an unbelievable fucking guy this guy is. Yeah. What a kicker this guy is. In Heinz Field, in Pittsburgh, windy, cold, terrible grass, often a little bit slippy down there. Chris Boswell has become such a consistent member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. After just a few years ago, all of Pittsburgh was trying to run him out of town because he fell into a little bit of a yip town. Ooh. Little yips, ball going left, ball going right. Where's it going? We don't know. Why is it happening? Chris Boswell, I, I don't know. This is not normally <laughs> what happens. He got back on the horse, got a lot better. He's all the way back. He's originally a part of the Killer Bees oh, yeah. way back in the day when it was brown I'm Bryant, Bell, Ben, and Boswell. That was literally the killer bee. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's like four years ago. He's still doing it from them. One of the most consistent in Pittsburgh, which is not easy, in the AFC North. Not. I mean, they sent Santos out there for a 65-yarder. I think everybody in Pittsburgh started laughing. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was sitting at home, and no offense to Santos, he's an incredible kicker. He made like 30-some straight or whatever. He's an absolute stud for what he does. Sending him out there for a 65-yarder in Pittsburgh is, is you're setting him up for failure. Yeah, death sentence. 
Had a lot of friends, obviously, in the stadium that say, you know, on TV, that looked a lot closer than it was. That thing, immediately upon leaving his foot, everybody in the stadium was like, that that got no chance of making it <laughs> that far in this stadium. And it's not Santos's fault, but what we should point out is that Boswell probably makes that kick last night yeah. with the way he was hitting yeah. the fucking ball. He was smoking it. He was crushing it. Roethlisberger made some plays, obviously. A little RPO for old Ben. Whoa. Hey, Ben, we need you scamper around. Yeah, you, hey, 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 you know what they said about... Uh, it was a Toy Story. Sure. Oh, Buzz Lightyear, he's not flying, he's falling with style. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's what Ben Roethlisberger looks like when he's running now. Sure. He's style? just falling with style. Very good comparison. And the style is getting his feet somehow under his body while they're falling down. Mm -hmm. it is, he's 40 years old, though. Have a little bit of respect sure. for that guy. That team, the Pittsburgh Steelers with that defense, Cam Hayward, he's so huge. He's been around so long. He's so good. And somehow he's still as nimble as he was whenever he came out of college, out of the Ohio State. T.J. Watt, absolute animal, absolute stud. Najee Harris, who said, hey, don't be lying about me. Yeah, <laughs> can't do that. Now, Steve Levy told a story uh, that, you know, Najee Harris slept on the floor his first couple months of college because he was so used to it because he was homeless and everything like that. And I think Steve Levy got that probably from another article that we found on the internet that was written. He did not ask Najee Harris about that directly. I think Levy, yeah. doing his research, found that as like, oh, this is a good tidbit. Here we go. We'll talk about this. I'll add it in there. And Najee said, that, that, the original story was a lie. Steve Levy, stop fucking lying. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong guy. Yeah. Which, by the way, makes me respect and appreciate Najee Harris even more. He came on this show, awesome. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Awesome conversation. There was a lot of people uh, that maybe, you know, expect everybody just to be robots that expect him to act differently or be differently. I think not from our, his appearance on our show, but from other shows and other people that have talked about Najee and how he is loved in Pittsburgh. His story, the more and more we learn about it, I assume the more and more Pittsburgh is going to continue to fall in love with him. Oh, yeah. He's a massive guy, takes big shots, gets right back up, seems to be dynamic in all facets of the game. He is the perfect running back for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Love yes. Naj. Just say just hand it to Nosh. Hand it to Nosh. It's a good idea. Just hand it to Nosh. Pick him up, put him down. Why do you pick him up and put him down? No momentum. Uh, same play. <laughs> T's and P's. But anyways, all that could be the story. But instead, what the story is today, which is what the story is a lot of Monday mornings. Yeah. And Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings. Oh, yeah. Basically, it's a story a lot of the mornings that follow when games are had. Yep. Yes. Right. And the reason why is because these refs fucking stink. They stink. <laughs> these refs fucking stink. And I, I don't want to be, you know, known, and I think I am around the officials, uh, if Mike Pereira's words to me rang true, and I know Walt doesn't like me. He's a guy who we haven't liked each other since my playing days. Yeah, he's a clown. He is a clown. All the refs I got along with, by the way, were all the good refs. They're all gone on TV now. Yep. Uh -huh. So all the good refs that I got along with that were great refs were either retired, doing their own law firm. Shout out to Hockey Lee. Hope you're all right, Ed. All right, baby, Ed. Come on back, Ed. Need you back, Ed. Put down the law book, which I tried to read last night. I, I actually tried to take uh, the board exam last night. Nice. Oh, how the was bar? it? Yeah, the bar, yeah. <laughs> how was it? Try to take the board exam. Bar exam. <laughs> Same thing. Well, just because this interview with Aaron Rodgers, I wanted to make sure I had all my goddamn ducks in a row. So mm -hmm. I tried to read all the law books. Mm -hmm. I tried to read all the stats books. And you should have seen it. I fucking read every COVID book they had last night. Wow. Every, wow. every single one of them last night. In preparation for today's Let's go. conversation with Aaron. Did you learn anything? Well, it's, contempla or it's, a, it's a complicated thing. Yeah, it is. And uh, I was thinking about leading off the show with everything that I did learn. Mm -hmm. But then I realized, like, I'm not supposed to read stuff. I never really take things in when I read stuff. Sure. That's why. Oh, you need to know about. That's why I've never read in my life. So yeah, somebody can make me a documentary in the next two hours. Go watch yeah. it. The before, Lincoln Lawyer, maybe. Yeah. Well, what? The Lincoln Lawyer. I'll tell you. I think. What's about law? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's about a lawyer. Yeah, but what about the COVID stuff too? Oh, we could well, not dive into Aaron COVID. Aaron Brockovich, maybe. We no. could we could fill you in on breaks. No, but what I'm saying is, I tried to learn everything that there was to know last night about. What I could everything. potentially have to, yeah, everything. Sure. I tried to know. I tried to learn everything about everything last night, mm -hmm. in anticipation for this conversation with Aaron, because I don't want to be judged the way I was judged this last time by some people, not all people, but some people for looking like a stooge out there. Mm -hmm. Sure. But I, I do fear that it was not enough time for me to prepare. No, it took <laughs> a long time. I do not. I'll ask Aaron about it next week. Okay. okay. Next Aaron Rogers Tuesday. There I'll read more law books, more stats books, more COVID books, right. more um, medicine. 
uh, theories, journals. Uh-huh. journals. Health yeah. and safety. I'll do, I'll do all that before next week. I, I do understand the job that I am tasked with in this situation, and I will try to take it much more serious. But if all those people that wrote those books can make documentaries about those books, nice. buy 205, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Perfect. With that being said, Ed Hockey League needs to stop writing law, needs to get his ass back in the mm-hmm. stripes. Yeah. Because we need him, because all the good refs are gone. Yep. All the good re- uh, good refs get offered more money, less stress, better life with TV networks or somewhere else. And I, I think a lot of refs ref because love of the game, love of officiating. And I have the utmost respect for the men and women who say, I want to be a ref. Because when you sign up to be a ref, you're signing up for nobody to like you. Mm-hmm. Okay, the only people that like you is when you fuck over another team in favor of that team. But guess what? What comes around goes around. You're going to fuck over that team for the other team. Both teams are going to hate you. Yep. And both teams maybe will cheer for you at certain times. But at the end of the day, the only people that are going to remember you are the people that hate you. So signing up to be an official is a death sentence of likeness. Okay, that is literally what it is. So I appreciate the people who are doing it. In the world that we're in with technology, it feels like some games... The NFL is choosing to use the Hawkeye technology that they have in expediting the entire process of fucked up calls. We've seen it numerous times, whether it's a fumble, a catch, a non-catch, it should be a catch, a respot, a move. There's been a lot of those this season, but they've come in spurts. It hasn't been for every single game. It seems like it's only every once in a while. But the conversation has to continue to revolve around these refs, not just not getting the help technology-wise everywhere. And I, I assume that'll continue to evolve as it goes. And allegedly, the USFL is coming back this spring for Fox, so they'll try out some more officiating things like the XFL did and the NFL never wants to be the first ones to try something, so maybe they'll adopt it, so maybe technology will be able to assist the refs on the field in a better fashion in the future, although it's not right now. But there is also something about everything I just mentioned there, that if you go in there and you become a ref, and you become the guy, like Carenti, Tony Carenti, who has been for a long time Mm -hmm. i assume you get a little bit of a power hungry ego sure that could potentially come creeping in Mm -hmm. when hey this game goes as i go Mm -hmm. my game this game doesn't start until what till i (whistles) blow this whistle like some pitchers have talked about how when they're pitching, they just feel like they're in so much control because this game literally doesn't go until I throw this ball. Mm-hmm. Like that's a state of mind that they have to have about, you know, owning the moment, dominating the moment, everything like that. Refs, there are some, not all. There are a lot of humble, incredible refs out there that are just trying to do their job, trying to make the game better. They feel like it's their calling to be an official. They see it better, whatever the case is. But there are some refs, we've all seen them, that try to make the game about themselves. And I... Don't know all the focus groups. I don't know all the studies, but I don't think not one motherfucker has said I am tuning in to watch motherfucking stripes. No. I don't think one person in the history of football, maybe the wife or the significant other or the family of Tony Carenti was watching that game last night to see him give a good couple calls. Oh yeah. Let's call Tony. Yeah, hey Tony, Tony did we talk about that call you made in the first quarter whenever blah 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 blah. Look good. You know? Not going to do that. But Tony Carrente last night obviously clearly wanted that game to be about him. He wanted people to remember that he was the ref there. He wanted fucking Cassius Marsh Mm. to not do what he did on Tony Carrente's field. Cassius Marsh, by the way, TJ Lane gave a hysterical (laughs) tweet about it. Yeah. TJ Lane said, hey, pal. Okay, you just got a coverage sack after six seconds. Maybe don't celebrate, lose your mind. Just go ahead and dap up your teammates and get off the field. That is definitely something that could have happened. Cassius Marsh, though, cut from the Steelers, back in Pittsburgh, Monday night football game for the Bears, gets a sack, albeit a coverage sack, still a sack in a massive moment on a massive play, third down. How you doing? Keep it moving. I think Mike Tomlin probably appreciated the fact that Cassius Marsh potentially walked over, which he did, and stared at that line, stared at the team. Mm -hmm. Are you not entertained? Does that warrant the ref butting into him as he's going off the field, then throwing a flag over in the fourth quarter, throwing a flag over his head, Extending a drive, fucking the Bears completely. Yeah. Is that... 
Is that little piece of emotion from the human that is Cassius Marsh worthy of the entire getting personally offended by what he did, butting into him, extending the drive, and in turn potentially fucking the bears? All because we are allowing emotions to be judged by ego-driven humans, some of them. Not uh, Tony Carrente is obviously an ego-driven human. Let's just... Let's just say how it is. But anytime you have others judging people's emotional response to something, you're immediately going to get a lot of questions. And that's why when the taunting thing became a point of emphasis, and when I started talking about it being a point of emphasis, I had a lot of stooges who don't listen or think that I am dumber than I've ever been. I mean, I guess I have been pretty dumb at times. And I guess, I mean, I try to read some of those law books last night. <laughs> yeah, but it has been pretty dumb. But I never talked about taunting not being a rule. I understand that taunting is a rule. But when it becomes a point of emphasis, that means that the NFL is going to be strict on this. And how can you be strict about something that's a judgment call about emotions in an emotional game, in an emotional situation? What do we do? Well, they don't want to Looking in the person's face, they want to go any other way because they feel like that is what has led in the past to all the moments that none of us want to see that is too much. Cassius Marsh didn't do that. He Now, he did walk from one hash, cross the other, looked at the thing. Presley Harvin was jogging onto the field about 14 yards behind everybody else because that's the punch stamp. So I guess Tony Carrente could say that he dunked on Presley Harvin after he got a sack on Ben Roethlisberger because he did appear to potentially be looking at him. But he just said, in the manner in which he was standing, I felt as if blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up, Tony Carrente. Yeah. And the issue is that the person that's in charge, Walt Anderson, you know how many times Walt Anderson has made it about himself? He's not going to punish Tony Carrente either. And then you can go to that post game interview with Tony Carrente. Listen to the self righteousness of this conversation. The you don't we don't have it. Don't have it. I think we do have it though. I saw it. It's the uh, the bull, back and forth. What is it? The bull call. The pool, what do they call it? They called it something. Pool, I don't even know what it is. Report. The yeah. pool report or whatever. It's just whatever he said in there made you realize even more. Like oh, the reason why all these reviews are being treated the way they're being treated is because you're talking about refs who act like they've never made any mistakes in their entire life. So whenever you review it, you're potentially slapping them in the face and they have such an ego about it all that there is never a time where the review ref wants to step on the toes of that ref because they all know how ego-driven it all is. I think we have it here. Go ahead and pull it up now. Okay, you're going to have to make that full screen, obviously. Um, this is a Pro Football Writers Association pool reporter, Adam... Hodge? Hoge? 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 Hodge? 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 Here's an interview with referee Tony Carrenti. Chicago Bears at Pittsburgh Steelers, Monday, November 8, 2021. This is a pretty official report here. Question. What did you see after the sack by Chicago's Cassius Marsh in the fourth quarter that led to the taunting penalty being called? Carrenti. First of all, keep in mind that taunting is a point of emphasis this year. Exactly my point, mm -hmm. yeah. what I've been saying since literally day one of this entire thing happening. And with that said, I saw the player, after he made a big play, run toward the bench area of the Pittsburgh Steelers and posture in such a way that I felt he was taunting them. Tone's doing the posture right now. He was standing with great posture. He's a professional fucking athlete that just got a sack in the fourth quarter on a Monday night football game against a team that cut him earlier this year. Tony Carrenti, though, thought his posture in which he was looking at the bench was taunting. There appears to also have been some contact between you and the player in question. Did that contribute to the penalty? No, not at all. I didn't judge that as anything that I dealt with. Okay, so he hmm. didn't throw the flag, by the way, until after he... He tries to hip check yeah. Cassius Marsh, who's probably looking at his sideline, by the way, saw the ref, oh, I'm, a, I'm just going to go around him. And Carrenti goes, oh, you're going to walk off my field after doing what you just did without me getting a shot at you? No way. Nuh -uh. No way are you going to. He does a chip on Cassius Marsh as if he's a tight end or a running back on a defensive end on his way off, the, off of his field. Then he throws the thing. So was that him taunting Cassius Marsh Whoa. for him doing something on his field that he didn't like? I mean, he throws the flag right when he got bumped into. Like, there's no, I don't think yeah. there's any, that's all he was thinking about. And everybody says that he had his hand on a flag before then. It's like, maybe, but maybe he was like, if this motherfucker makes contact with me. Yeah, right. I have to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but then he probably, immediately afterwards, somebody in his ear was like, 
Hey, TV just caught you hip checking. Yeah. yeah. So don't say anything about that afterwards. This guy fucking stinks. It would go on. The video showed that you had brief contact with player and then you th uh, threw the flag. So that had nothing to do with the penalty. That had nothing to do with it. It was the taunting aspect. Can you explain the low blow? Now, obviously, when something like that is such a uh, decision maker, then they go on to other calls that Carrente potentially fucked up. Like a new one, which is a low block that Jason Peters had been talking about happening to him all game. Uh, he was actually, if you saw him interacting with the refs, uh, Jason Peters, 18-year vet at tackle, by the way. That's a Dang. long, long time on the Bears. There's a couple times where he turned around and he was like looking at the ref and like, hey, they're cutting me right. Like, I'm getting cut right now. And then all of a sudden, somehow, some way, there's a pulling guard thing that uh, he cuts uh, outside guy, takes back a touchdown. And then, just like in baseball, ESPN had a tight end K zone box yeah. box yeah, yeah. look like a K zone. He painted a corner. Yeah, he That's did. Right. He, he painted. Did. It. He was on that tight end box. So then Tony Carrente goes on to say, "Well, it wasn't in tight end box." And I, I assume Adam Hogues was like, "Hey, listen, pal, we saw it on. It actually was. Hate to break to you, we saw it on TV. It was. But those are things that can't they say upstairs? Like, hey, I understand what you saw, and it might have been fringe, but it was in the. We're cool. It's a touchdown. Pick it up. You're good. Isn't aren't that? Isn't that what the person upstairs like? Steve Levy. Riddick and Greasy being the ones to tell us, like, hey, that was in the box, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was bullshit. That would mean that their people have access to the same exact stuff to do the same thing. Why not just make it right so we don't have this conversation this morning? Why does the taunting penalty even have to be a thing? Let the coaches handle that. Let the coaches and the players handle that. If they think it's gone too far, guess what? They will let it be known that they thought it, go it has gone too far. The refs in the... NFL deciding what is too far in an emotional thing between players. I just think that's a bad idea. You're never going to get it right. There's going to be miscommunication. There's going to be situations like this where we have to say, well, it's apparent that Carrente is just an egotistical fucking prick that wanted to make the game about himself because he made a massive call in a massive moment that went the opposite. But you're putting Carrente in that position. You're putting him in that position to make that call. And that's not fair to Tony Carrente either. It, you have to have some sort of ego to be in a position where you are going to take shells and mortars mm -hmm. on a regular basis. You would have to have some self-confidence that is you know, tough to find, I'd assume, to be an NFL ref. I get it. But when you're putting him in a position to judge others, I just think it's all bad. Like I, I think there are so many little things they could do that could just change it all, and they're just refusing to do it. Well, and Pereira told us, you know, like he's told us a couple times, like they don't want to put these refs on the field in a position to potentially make them look bad, so they don't. They just go with what their calls are, and then they wait for something like this the day after where everyone's pissed about it, and they have a, a massive issue on their hands, as opposed to if they did just have someone up there who could say, like, hey, no, 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 like you, you got this one wrong. We need to adjust this. Okay, and listen. We've been dealing with too much drama around here. A lot of drama. Long time. So much. Too much drama. Right? Mm hmm. I'm sick of it, actually. Yeah, a lot of drama. Barely halfway through. I got people saying things about me sure. that I've never met or done anything bad to. They're bad things about me. Hey, what am I? What, what the fuck have I? Like, I'm tired of that. Yes. Those people stink. Well, it's. The refs of the internet, you could say. Yeah, they are. I, they are. But this is something we have to talk about that isn't football related. The refing thing has to get figured out. Yeah, it has to. Did you see the top 10 states in sports gambling handle mm -hmm. that was released yesterday morning? Or this morning at 8.43 a.m.? I think it was yeah. this morning it was released at 8.43 a.m. There is in New Jersey alone $1.01 billion gambled in the month of September. One month? Mm -hmm. In one state. Jesus. Nevada, seven hundred and eighty-six. Illinois, five hundred and ninety-six and a half million dollars. Pennsylvania, five hundred and seventy-eight million dollars. Colorado, four hundred and eight. You go down the list, all the way down to Iowa, two hundred and ten million dollars bet in Iowa. New York just got legalized. They're fifty-one percent tax they're taking, by the way. Whoa. So if you think about what New York made here, let's just say Jersey is a comparable, even though New York's going to be even bigger. They made $600 million in tax money. Yeah. Okay. Good win. That's an unbelievable get by <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get. New York.
Damn. I mean, that's quite a racket. All right, that is that is yeah. quite a racket. But the government knows that. But as these this money continues to go up and up and up, more eyes are going to be on the fuck ups, the fuck ups, mm -hmm. the fuck ups, and the refs need to stop it. But with that being said, Steelers get a win, uh -huh. big time Here win for the go. Pittsburgh Steelers. Zito is very depressed, like legit yeah. pissed off about how last night well, won. He got quoted in USA Today. Oh, yeah. Justin Fields Fuck gets yeah. treated differently than every other quarterback. He's getting hit. He's not getting calls. Obviously, the Carrente Cassius Marsh on a third down and fourth quarter. I mean, there is a lot. That the Chicago Bears fans can be pissed off about it, but it's the NFL. You guys got to win on Monday night. I assume that's great how win. Boz was awesome. Benjamin Todd Roethlisberger gets his 50th game-winning drive times ties Patrick Thomas Edward Brady for oh, wow 50. Wow, that was beautiful. Pat Brady Steelers beat media darling, best rookie quarterback of all time, Justin Fields, <laughs> who gets treated just like I don't know a handful of other quarterbacks in the league. Uh, <laughs> they beat the Tommy Lee oh, curse. He was there fucking swinging the flag oh, last come night. come on. Dude, Tom Brett, Brett Michaels. Michaels. Oh, Brett Michaels. Hey, by the way, I decided guy. after last night, I'm a Brett Michaels guy. Hell Me yeah. too. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I love he has that, no idea. He's trying his absolute best in all these videos. Like, whenever he did this thing oh, yeah. that we all mocked, he was legitimately just trying to get the boys pumped. Yes. Yes. Look at his soul in that towel. I saw him. Listen, him and Rocky Blyer and the vet diner. Yeah. They were undefeated when they were together. That's for right. the troops. And I saw, for the troops. And I saw uh, Brett Michaels cut a promo on his plane. He was like, hey, we're coming. Here we go. <laughs> yes. I think he legitimately. Oh, I don't. Like, I, I don't necessarily think I'm on board with any more Brett Michaels slander. No Thank way. You. Never have been. Never yeah. will be. Well, I mean, I kind of promoted it there for a little no, bit. No, because it was coming from a place of love. Well, whenever yeah. he went like, to this become... This guy loves the Steelers. Well, when he became a Tampa Bay Lightning fan. Oh, uh, true. true. Yeah. That was when I kind of had to let Eyebrows it happen. Eyebrows got raised Yeah, because we're bit. Pittsburgh Penguins, obviously, pal. What are we yeah. even thinking here? Yeah. I get it, Tampa Bay Lightning. Johnny come lately. They have a great team. They even <laughs> yeah. cheated salary cap. And I was even saying, go bolt there yeah, for a right. while. But Brett, my, your Brett Michaels can't have it. Uh -uh. But after watching the entire situation unfold yesterday and what he did last night, hat on top of bandana, yep. uh, of I fucking love uh, Brett Michaels. On top yeah. of natural real hair. Yeah. Bingo. Whoever. Uh, so anyways, go ahead. Whoever draws on his mustache and chin. By nah, the way. Oh, no, no, no. See, that's no. what I'm talking about. It's not slander. I'm, I'm saying. saying it's unbelievable art. Whoever you need does to stop. That. Him and uh, the guy from Motley Crue are going on stadium tours. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're going to go sell really? on stadium tours. Yeah. Motley Crue? Yeah, they're getting all the old costumes out. They're going out there and they're going to fucking rock it. That'll Don't even awesome. worry about it. I can't wait. The guy from Motley Crue that's going through something, I hope he's okay. This is all from Brett Michaels' promo video that he cut. This You're right. Wish guy was okay. Can't wait to get back on a stadium tour with you. You're going to be okay. Can't wait for the stadium tour. Though. Right. Good mm -hmm. promo. Hope he's okay. Whatever the case, Brett Michaels, Rocky Blyer, uh, and the vet swinging the towel before the game, undefeated. Go back to your They place. had to deal with that. They beat that. And then not only did they beat all those things, they did also beat the refs, So, which is a shout-out. That's good teams. Good teams beat the refs. Okay? You guys got screwed? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you, you saw, but every single play, they lined up in the neutral zone. Bears have no idea what the neutral zone is. Yeah, Their tackles were jumping off sides all game. There was a fucking Mickey Mouse catch down the sideline. Cassius March, <laughs> Marsh, if he wasn't falling asleep in fucking Bill Belichick's meetings, oh. maybe would I would know yeah, that you can't walk 15 yards to the opponent's sideline. Fucking get off. Well, they needed a body is what Diggs will say to that. And to your point that Zito's upset. Zito fucking reads what the internet's doing. Be like, oh, well, this is what. No, no, saying. no. Zito's in, no, no. Zito's in USA he Today. Zito's in USA Today. He was in USA Today. I'm the one who the first, knocks, bro. Probably yeah. the first game he's watched this year. <laughs> hey, bro, he's a thermostat, not a thermometer. Oh, yeah. Right. You set the temperature. You don't tell it. What's that, Nick? Can I just say, I will acknowledge, despite Tony, it, he refuses to, the abhorrent job by the referees last night. Yes. You having said that, son of a bitch. Having said that. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, are we not going to talk about Cassius Marsh doing a spinning roundhouse yes. kick hey, after that's the so sack? Sweet. That's yeah. a sweet and then, and then walking across the field yeah, there to was pose a, in front of the sideline. Yeah, the certainly, you got your celebration in, Marsh. Get off the field. Sir, listen, I understand that. Okay? And I... I mean, it was a little long. I mean, he did the entire... Yeah, yeah. Go back to your opium den, dude. Whoa. Whoa. Tony, Holy he shit. sells Pokemon cards. He's Holy not doing shit, opium. Dude. What? 
the fuck just happened? You've seen the guy. Because oh, he has long oh, hair. Oh, oh, he's he's so so back oh, he tattoos. You're an idiot. You're he looks awesome. Wrestling. Yes. He last that night, jacket. That might have been the best dressed human I've ever <laughs> seen in a uh, post game press. Good jacket. Yeah, yeah, he looked unbelievable. Good jacket. Good celebration. But anyways, let's get back to it. The spinning kick thing. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's enough. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But you know, as he's thinking about it. You know, also, where's that fucking outside linebackers coach? Yeah. Yeah. You know know what I mean? That that whole thing. So, obviously, the right way to handle it is to get a sack against a team that cut you in the fourth quarter of a massive game on a third down and then just walk right off the field. Okay? Now, a little bit better. Get the sack against a team that cuts you in the fourth quarter on a third down in a massive moment. Then do your spinning kick. Yeah, yeah. Kick. sweet, sweet kick. kick. Cool. Maybe the coolest celebration I've seen in some time. A lot of kicking celebrations, by the way, by defensive linemen and outside mm-hmm. linebackers, which I absolutely love because guess what? They kick ass. Hell yeah. <laughs> His spinning roundhouse kick thing where he got in the air actually. Incredible. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Do that, then go off the field. One way, though, you could see how you could potentially get to. Spinning kick after sack. Ju- Whoa, well, that motherfucker told me I'd never play again. I remember. <laughs> Turn around. You know, because you, you have no idea what happened. And then Presley Harvin is jogging onto the field at that exact time. And then Carenti goes, not on my field. Nuh-uh. You do that rounding, has kick Scumbag. if you want. You do all that, but you ain't doing that on my field. And what we're saying is. What a piece of shit. That shouldn't be what extends a drive. Though. Right. No way. Exactly. You know what I mean? That shouldn't be how it goes. Marsh definitely has to handle that in a more hilarious way, a much more efficient fashion so the penalty doesn't come. But, man, how do you tell somebody how to act in a moment that you cannot prepare? Act like you've been there before. Has Cassius Marsh ever sacked Ben Roethlisberger mm-hmm. on Monday Night Football in the fourth quarter on the third down after being cut from that team and then – like, the juice is what makes the game, and everybody handles everything differently. We're not saying that, you know, some people would be able to do that and then just jog off the field. Shout out to those people. Mm-hmm. Shout out to those people. But the reason why whenever I would go out and kick balls and something good would happen, I would get happy. Because I legitimately, okay, I worked my ass off, and fuck you. Like, this mm-hmm. is, like, I felt so good about it. So I have a lot of um, understanding almost more so for the people that are over emotional than the people that are Mm -hmm. under emotional, because I think I view the world of sport as an emotion. Like, Hey, you should, you should be passionate. Like you should want to win. You should, because that drives you to work harder. That drives you to hopefully make better decisions. That type of thing is something that the NFL should want out of people as opposed to the opposite. And when you're putting Corinthian in a position to not only hip check, but also not on my field, you're ruined. Like, I don't think that serves the game well at all. I think it's very dumb. There shouldn't be like judgment calls, like him basically saying, well, the the way he was with his posture, it's like, oh, okay. So every, Every single time this happens, you have to kind of see the way this dude's doing whatever he's doing when he's celebrating. He wasn't saying anything. He wasn't yelling. And to your point about the celebrations, like when you see guys like Adam Thielen come out and other NFL dudes like, hey, this is why the game is awesome because it is an emotional game and you can put your heart and soul into it and then you get rewarded. And Belichick's also talked about that whole celebration thing and the message it sends and also like because of the fact that you work this hard, you should be able to do that. Yeah, Bill Belichick actually had an entire film room where he had a laser pointer. It's in uh, one of the do your jobs. Yeah. <laughs> and he shows a touchdown where nobody ce- or a sack where nobody celebrates. Mm-hmm. And he circles it with a laser pointer. And he says, what is this telling the other team? You know, like you're not even happy for the guy. Yeah. Like you aren't even. And then he shows a touchdown where everybody's jumping on each other's back. He said, what message do you think this sends to the other team? What message do you think this sends to the fans? What message do you think this? This is a team that's happy. This is a team that has worked hard. This is a team that's enjoying what they got going. This is a much stronger, more powerful team than the team that is not doing anything. But the people on the Internet that want people to do nothing, it's like, I understand that it's probably impossible to, for you to fully comprehend how an NFL athlete would act in a situation, but there should never be like a, 
a want for people to lose their passion because that is the knock on the NFL, right? That is the knock on professional sports by the people that love college sports. College sports, oh, they care. They give this whole thing. Yeah. And then in the NFL or in the NBA or in professional sports, all they care is about is their check or whatever. It's like, do you think Cassius Marsh at that moment gave a fuck about how much he was being paid? Or do you think he cared about the moment and what he just did for the Bears and against it? Like that passion is not something that they should be trying to dial it back. We all agree that the in the face, jawing, pushing, like that's just, you're, you're accomplishing nothing. It looks bad for the league. It looks bad for the game. But those moments, oh, yeah. like that, that's poetic. Like that is what is supposed to happen. Like that is what you should want to happen. And I don't understand why it's still a thing. And Torrenti, by the way, him saying it's a point of emphasis this year means that he's still being told by the NFL, like, hey, we still do not want this thing so to happen. Bad. It's like, yo, get over it, bro. You can't expect guys to be emotionless when other people are legitimately trying to kill them and take their heads off. Like, you're going to, I mean, it's a very violent game. And when guys, you know, either, I mean, are going back and forth with the guy all day, you get smacked. Like, you can't expect that guy not to get up and give a fucking first down. Like, he's going to be jacked up. Like, these guys are trying to kill him. They're, they're, it's combat. Maybe he's going to be jacked up. Because there's yeah. people that aren't true and those people never get but it's like not everybody's going to be the absolute same no and well, not every guy like you said has has been there before and has had that opportunity like, it's there's, a huge moment there's a lot of guys Marshall. yeah exactly the whole yeah. game he probably lost every other snap before that and then he finally gets a sack and it's like you want him to just basically walk off the field well tj lang also said you know like you didn't even know really <laughs> yeah dude it, six seconds. <laughs> it didn't matter what happened there seven it was in the stars last night that seven was gonna win uh, of course <laughs> sure yeah. tony uh -huh. Carrenti happened to be maybe orion's belt in right. the stars true to really help the whole thing come together but you're right it's about time the steelers got some fucking calls <laughs> how about the bears you guys just get screwed all the time huh? all the time yeah just let the boys play you know Simple as that. I had to feel pretty good, though. Oh, that's not what yeah. it felt really good. Oh, yeah. Cover Muth, maybe, and then yeah. you'll have a We're chance. It's impossible to cover Muth. But yeah, he's a beast. Muth, especially when fucking Heath was in the house. Yeah, Heath and Muth meeting each other. Uh -huh. Yeah. Great tweet, by the way. It was yeah. in the stars for him to get two last night. Thor and Superman. Like so. Wish Chase Claypool would have scored. That would have been yeah. cool. I had yeah. like a massive one that would have hit. Mm -hmm. Oof. The over, I thought... We're standing down an over game because it was at what 39 and a half. So yeah. So I felt like the sports book were like, "Hey, it's gonna be a bad game. It's gonna be a bad game." Now, granted, the fourth quarter popped off completely yeah. to get there, but I had the over, Steelers money line, Bears plus seven in, in a series of like ten different parlays. Mm -hmm. I hit a few of them, but if Chase Claypool scores, I mean, this one parlay would have been one of those ones that you put out, and he could have went through his hands. But Chase Claypool was getting raped in the end zone. Mm -hmm. by a Chicago Bears player. And that was not called, nope. Zito. That was not good called. Good defense. Well, good defense. I don't know. They Ooh. called the other 46 of them. <laughs> Roquan Smith is awesome for the Bears. <laughs> yes. No Khalil Mack. Yeah. yeah. I think the Bears fans should be pumped about what they saw last night. Like yeah. out of Justin, Justin Fields. Justin Fields is He guy. was the best quarterback on the field, for sure. Okay. I mean... When it's all said and done, I don't know if that'll be the conversation. Maybe at the time he missed like five, six throws that yeah. made you go like, okay, he's like thought he would hit those. Yeah. Thought Justin Fields would hit those. But then yeah. there were some plays that he made. It was like, oh shit, this Ooh. guy is the guy. Yeah. Not bad for a rookie. Drive at the end of the game was awesome. Yeah. Dime down, Robinson. That wasn't the last drive again. Now Nagy, yeah, so the last drive his of the game last was drive, the sixty-five yeah. yarder. But uh, Nagy, um, better record than Shanahan. Mm-hmm. Yep. Shanahan's not sending Kyra Santos out there. Probably Kyra not. Santos no. for a 65 yard in Pittsburgh. Tell you what, if the field goal posts were at the front of the end zone like they used to be, he might have had a shot. And yeah, CFL, I think it out. still hits. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I think it still hits the thing. I don't think it goes in. We gotta get to a break. That's by the way, that's an impossible kick. Yeah, that is. You're asking a lot. Yeah. But I appreciate the fact they sent him out there because the Broncos do have a guy in McManus that yeah. can go from a long, long mm -hmm. way, and they could have kicked the 68 yarder at the end of half. Instead, they had Teddy Bridgewater roll right and get sacked by two people. Yeah. That was in a dome, too. It was in Dallas. Yeah. I bet you McManus still – he didn't have his great greatest game, by the way. He missed an extra point. He missed another kick. In those moments, you know, you hope that they don't show up on a day where you're not kicking well. Mm -hmm. But he's probably pissed off that Fangio did not let him do that. I would assume so. But Santos isn't a guy like, hey, I have the strongest leg in the world. McManus. And those are guys like, hey, I got a big leg. Go ahead and give me a shot at this thing. Santos walks out there for a 65-yarder, though. He knew. Yeah. Gave it his all. He did. He, he even did a. Uh, he did a the Justin Tucker little yeah. stutter step thing mm -hmm. to try to get a little bit more in there. But sixty-five in Pittsburgh is a lot. A lot of ass. Yeah. Yeah. Probably would have been good from like thirty-eight. 
<laughs> I think it would have split the uprights from 35. Yeah, uh -huh. I think so. 45? Yeah. Well, it looked like Janikowski's attempt from 75. <laughs> Do yeah. you remember that? Oh, yeah. Lane Kiffin sent Janikowski out for a 75-yard field goal. Beast. That thing landed. It was a kickoff. Yeah. yeah. It landed like the one or the goal line or whatever, much like Cairo. So this is not a knock on Cairo. This is like a, hey, sometimes there's no reason for you to even think about what, what you're doing. What do you think Janikowski said to Lane when he told him to go out there? For that? I Honestly, I couldn't even guess, but I assume it's, ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that is what Janikowski said. And then when he didn't make it, he, Huh? 25. Huh? <laughs> We're back in four minutes with some phone calls on this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. I reach out to Boz to come on the show today. Oh. I did hear back from Boz. Okay. Boz does not love speaking. <laughs> okay. okay. Respect. Okay. I said respect. Yeah, right. fair enough. Hell of a fourth quarter by him. Can't wait to talk to the people on the 5 Energy phone line. one 833 4 Can't wait to chat with you on the other side. AJ Hawk will join us in about 18 minutes. And then Aaron Rodgers in an hour and 18. This should be an eventful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 9th. See you in four. I refuse to take Pittsburgh Steelers minus seven. I just can't do it. I will take the Bears plus seven as well. Wow. And a Steelers dub, though. So this is called a twofer. Oh, cool. That's a double dip. It's called a twofer. Here we go. Okay, I, I think Bears cover, Steelers win. That's Steelers football, no matter who they're playing. Kornacki map out. Yeah. Mm. Don't you worry about that, though, because the people, I mean, here, even, we can even do this. This particular shade here, a lot of this one, right here on this side, it's going to separate. Boop, let's move it over here. They're coming out. That son of a bitch! <laughs> right? Selfish prick asshole! And then this side here, okay, and not all, not all, but either side, not here. They're on this side. This guy, he's a hero! <laughs> this guy's our hero! This is the MVP of the NFL telling the NFL, ah, fuck you, and telling society and everybody, I ain't doing it because I have an allergy to two out of the three. The third I'm not comfortable with. I just hold, hey, this guy's our guy. This guy's our guy. But it's more complicated than that because there are some in both sides that are also against what the most of the party is. So then you got this, you got conflicting wars <laughs> going on, okay? That's what you have. You have some people that are on the left side. Well, so do I do the TV or mine? I don't know. I don't think it matters uh, in yeah. this case. Uh, you, do the, uh, you do the left side and you think to yourself, oh, it's left versus right. But then if you're a human in our society and you actually pay attention at all or have friends all across the spectrum. That is not the case. This is a torn, split thing, and Aaron Rodgers was the guy here that everybody came out to, and I'm so thankful he came on and talked, but I don't know if it's gonna change anybody. Yeah, yeah. This uh -uh. is still going down, and he's right here. He is right fucking here, and both of them. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Pang, pang, pang. We're back with every answer he gave. It was like that, I guess, on the internet as I was scrolling through the last eight minutes. AJ
Welcome back to the Pat Maxi. Oh, 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 oh. Unreal. Oh, yeah. Unreal. Foxy's added some new tools to the arsenal. Hell yeah. <laughs> A couple transitions. Some new shots to the bag. Wow. I assume we've had access to these for a long time. I've known about them forever. Yeah. <laughs> Why not today? I guess. I mean, you just found out about them, so let's go. Can we hit one more of those? Yeah, things? here we go. We'll go to the boys. Yeah. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Shit! Oh! You! Bring it! Oh! Oh! Hey! <laughs> How about this one? Whoa! Oh! Oh! What? Bring it back. I'm blue. I was green. I would die. I was green. I would die. That's my Foxy. Way to really up the Foxy. That boy Foxy. Hey, Foxy. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I mean, those are awesome. Awesome. Unbelievable. Yeah. Hey, one more. Hit one more. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come that one doesn't do anything. Oh, no. oh, Fox, is there no, a dissolve no. one? See, this is where pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. Oh, we got too many. Right. Right. That's right. We had That's a good right. run on three or four transitions. We tried to reach into five or six, and mm -hmm. we just didn't have them in the back. <laughs> Bucket ran dry. Bowl. Keep working over there. Yeah, the well ran dry. That is 100% case. Yeah. Put some more water. Yeah, we need to call them in. Maybe next week we'll find some new ones in there. But we appreciate you for joining us. It is this show, by the way, that we'll be talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the show that you just watched right there. We'll be chatting about. Let's go to the phone line, shall we? Hell yeah. Let's do it. I'm excited for this, because who knows what any of this could be about. Yeah, true. I mean, there's a lot happening in the world. Pete Carroll said, yeah, we might be in on OBJ. We'll find out today if uh, Odell Beckham Jr. cleared waivers or not. We all assume he did. Mm -hmm. But what if he didn't? That's kind of what Pete Carroll said. We're yeah. in, we're not in, we're not in, we're kind of in, we're not in. It's kind of a full conversation piece happening right now. Who will claim Odell Beckham Jr., who just got released from the Cleveland Browns? There's anonymous sources that are in AFC front offices that are saying, oh, Odell ain't this anymore, he ain't that anymore. I assume Odell's going to go somewhere that's a contender and make plays. Yeah. Let's just, that, that's probably what's going to happen. Just like Antonio Brown couldn't play anymore, Antonio Brown came in and became like number one wide receiver. Yeah. Scoring in the Super Bowl. On a route that wasn't actually the route that was called. Yeah, changed it. Kind of remixing the, the play mm -hmm. for himself, doing yeah. it, scoring touchdowns, but whatever the case. He's he coming back? Is he all right? Everything okay with Antonio Brown? Yeah. He How about Gronk? Have we heard anything now? from Gronk? Is Gronk okay? Gronk's okay. Is I read he? a tweet that yeah. AB is still in a boot. Okay. And is Gronk okay? He is. Yeah. Little Gronk's no, back? I, no, I was confirming Foxy. AB is still in a boot. Because AB and Gronk, rather significant part of that offense, you know? Great signings, by the way. Old, uh, Old uh, Mikey Greenberg. Mikey Greenberg. Then, well, that's a Jason C Light. Jason Light. There it is. Ah. With the C. Yeah, C H T. Yeah. Licked. Jason Licked. Yeah, but I think it is it Light. It is pronounced Light. Uh huh. C. English language is dumb, but is that even English? We don't know. I mean, the French language, too. We. Oui. Anyways, they bring in A.B. and Gronk. That's a massive upgrade to that team. Yeah. They have a bye week. I would have thought that they were both just going to be back on the other side of the bye week because there was no real conversation. Have we heard or seen any A.B. still in a boot? What does that mean? Is that protective reasons? Is he going to play? I've seen guys wear boots through the week and play on the weekend. Is this the tail end of an injury? What are they doing? Gronk, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. Have you heard anything about Gronk is a big fucking deal. Yeah. yeah. Gronk is a massive ordeal for Tom. Because he came back after the ribs and then he got hurt. Damn near immediately. Hurt his back, game. yeah. 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 So maybe not because he's had back surgery before. It's Hope Gronk is okay, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly where. Oh, yeah. OBJ is going to make plays. Hell yeah. Wherever the hell he goes, oh, OBJ yeah. is going to make mm -hmm. plays. Now, will he clear waivers? Everybody assumes yes because there's been like threats made now that it will get, it will get uncomfortable if you claim Odell and you stink. Huh. So here's looking at you, Detroit Lions. Oh. Here's looking at you. Jacksonville Jaguars, who just got a massive win over yeah, Buffalo Bills. They they might get be back. Hey, yeah. what if the Jacksonville Jaguars just win the next eight games? They Look out. <laughs> Colts. Colts are going to get hot. We need a player. We need a wide receiver. Jags mm -hmm. coming to town this week. That's right. Well, we did, we need more weapons then, I guess. Yeah. They're red <laughs> hot. Anyways, Odell Beckham Jr., who knows where he's going to go. Packers, uh, Aaron Rodgers, obviously, he's going to play this weekend. I don't think I've been told anything differently. Mm -hmm. No, and apparently, Pelissaro put a tweet out this morning that said even if he, do he doesn't need a negative test to play this week because Saturday will have been 10 days, so... And for instance, I wasn't able to test negative until like day 11 or 12 when I got it, but I didn't have any symptoms for like six, seven days at that point. Right. I guess we would have to ask what his, we will obviously ask how he's doing. That'll probably be, think about this, that'll be crazy. First question. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Spoiler. Yeah. 
I know, right? I hope I remember. <laughs> Hey, how are you doing? That doesn't get asked a lot. No, no. it doesn't. Uh, speaking of how you doing, Nick Chubb on the COVID oh. Oh. list. He, yeah. he is vaccinated. Correct. Oh, he still got it? Yes, he did get it. He, he is vaccinated and he got COVID. And he has to have two negative tests with 24 hours in between them to play this weekend against the New England Patriots. Man, I hope he's okay. Well, that's what you didn't say earlier whenever we yeah, found out. There wasn't a how you doing, we hope he survives, anything like that. Connor's immediate reaction was like, yes, get that fucking guy out. Yeah, I laughed actually too, but I'm just glad that he's safe. He's a hell of a player. Mac Jones and Matt Rule have addressed uh, the, the twisting of Brian Burns' ankle. Mac seemed genuine when he said, I got hit very hard and I thought he had the ball. Yeah. is what he said. And it makes sense if you're on the ground laying down after probably being a bit startled. Whatever the case, shouldn't have Ken Shamrock that guy's no, ankle. No, 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 no. That seemed to be doing it too much. I think the leg wrap around the leg <laughs> would have been enough, but the twisting of the ankle also added in there. I could see where he potentially thought that guy maybe had the ball and he didn't want him to run it back because strip sacks have happened where they end up with the ball. He tried to make a play, but it was obviously done in a very despicable fashion. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Burns is a big guy. You got to do everything you can to take him down. Yeah, break his ankle. How is the NFL? Mm -hmm. This ain't the fucking little kids league. This is the men's league. Don't try to take people's uh, food off our table. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. But, you know, great tackle by Mac at the end of the day. Hey, Matt Rule did come out and say, like, I'm not sure what's in Mac's brain. Uh, he seems like a good guy, but I'm also going to protect my guys. He's, he's getting his leg ripped yeah. off down there. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's a fascinating situation because I assume a lot of people could see where Mac was coming from. Like, I could see where that is potentially the case, but the way that looked optically uh -huh. with bad. his thoughts, with the thing, it's bad. It's uh -huh. bad, bad. He's going to, you know, it'll probably be a conversation. That, uh, we'll get fine. Yeah, I assume. Browns have extended Wyatt Teller. Hey, offensive line. Ooh, okay. Congrats, Wyatt. Congrats. Congrats. Wyatt Teller, by the way, is a country boy who came from Bam. Yeah. I do believe Whew. there is amazing photos of him <laughs> deadlifting gators and walking around with gators on his shoulder on the internet. He just signed a four-year $56.8 million extension with the Browns, making him one of the NFL's highest paid guards. I assume so. Hell yeah. Congrats to him. Quentin Nelson just did his deal, right, a little bit ago? Yeah. So Tooney. Quentin's probably up there high. Tooney's mm -hmm. up there high. Wyatt, who's on his second team, uh, in his third year, second team, gets a $57 million extension. Good for him. Let's go to the phone calls. Hell yeah. We covered everything, though, I think, that's mm -hmm. happening in the sports world right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, the basketball? You're yeah. talking about the, the big elbow mm -hmm. from old big Jokic? Hey, Joker, don't fuck around. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Seems like everything, he's the MVP, right? Yeah. Yeah. Every time I've seen him speak, he's super quiet, super humble, super... Something had to happen where he was not happy because that big old forearm oh. shivered to the back of old buddy was big. It's messed up. That was violent. Mm -hmm. That was aggressive. That was a what? That's what that was. Yeah. A wh whatever his language is. Mm -hmm. Of course. What? Hey, don't look now. Lakers without Bron Bron. Come to the team. All right. That's right. Oh. Is it going to be free LeBron? Hashtag free LeBron? Oh, oh, him and OBJ team up. Yeah, because Cleveland Browns got better when Odell Beckham Jr. got hurt. And that was not Odell Beckham Jr.'s fault. It was just like sans OBJ. The Browns last year kind of went on a run. This year, sans oh. OBJ seems like they're doing better. Not that that's Odell Beckham Jr.'s fault. No. But the team seems to really rally together whenever OBJ's not there for whatever reason. There's chemistry. Is that what's going on with LeBron right now? Because wow. he's going to be out for like... A bit, right? Yeah. One injury right into the next. Might be time. Uh, for don't Mets. start this. Oh, with me right hey, now. Right. Right. Last Met. night, Russell Westbrook played really well. Played well with AD off the pick and roll, and played well with Melo. But and LeBron's leadership on the bench coaching, right, or something? Coach. That's exactly what I was going to say. LeBron was on the bench. He was coaching the whole team. He was setting the whole thing up, and he's going to be back and better than ever. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Mitt does an incredible Sirianni impersonation without trying to do a Sirianni impersonation. Well, you know, some people say that what Sirianni does have a much deeper, you know, whenever he ties things together, maybe mm -hmm. Mitt isn't able to do that. But Mitt is – is that your phone? That is my fucking watch game. Will you tell that thing to chill out? I don't know what happens. Pipe Siri, the, hey, listen, if Siri's got something to say, let's fucking hear it, dude. Yeah. Tim Cook trying to chime in. Funny part is, I don't even know how to do it. Oh, so it just does it out of nowhere. Like, hey, Siri, set alarm. Oh, no, that's how you do it. Oh, that's because you said right, you Siri. Siri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Siri. Siri. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Coach Siri Ani's a problem now. It's not just uh, what he's saying. It's also his name fucking up a lot of people. Huh. Right. Shout out to Mitt. Fiercely defending LeBron and the Cowboys in one day. Yeah. We'll be back in six.
why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason. It is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. Right. If you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie. That seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted, and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the the love is not just about our sport; it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that. Uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed and that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy it's never easy and I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week it's never easy and your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is, is a deep uh, fear of failure. Uh, that You might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. I have a surprise, obviously. That's what this show is all about. Uh, we have Boots on the Ground in Cleveland, who I assume knew this was going to happen what? all along. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Cleveland, Mr. Jason Glazer. Your thoughts on Kyle Pitts to Atlanta, fine, sir? Oh, there's a delay. Well, uh, first and foremost, Pat, I'd like to say, hey, listen, thanks for having me. Cleveland is beautiful this time of year. Granted, it does smell like a mixture of poop and diarrhea and sewage. Jesus. Uh, it doesn't smell great down Jesus. here. Jesus. But I'll tell you what, 27 years in this thing, I fucking live for the draft. Love being down here. Love being in the Cleveland. Uh, but yeah, Kyle Pitts, listen, what do you want me to say? I knew this two weeks ago. Really? I mean, do we need to do this whole fucking song and dance? Okay. I'll give you guys one through 32 if you, if you want to know. You know, <laughs> do you want to have fun? That's nice. You want to not know who's going... Uh, but yeah, I had this two weeks ago. You know what I'm wondering is if the guy you had in your studio, Mad Mel Kuyper, I know that sorry son whoa, of a bitch whoa, didn't have this whoa. two weeks ago. Mike's not, did Mike's not plugged in. Whoa. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, I actually just explained no, it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, yes, I did. No, yes, I, did. No, I had this. I did. Yeah, no, I did. no, you didn't. I, did. you I had this. I, I had you it. Did. Trust me. Can you I did. talk for Christ's sake? Okay, fine. Fine, yeah. Can Go I ahead. talk? Okay, yeah. Like Jesus. I said, Kyle Pitts, unbelievable no, talent. No, you didn't. You didn't fucking yes, have I did. You just said that. Jason. Sack of shit, Jason. I know it. I looked at the mock draft. 
Jason, please relax. Oh my God. Jeez. I had no idea it was going to get like that. Sorry about that, Mad Mel. Obviously, there's a little bit of uh, content there. He's saying you don't know your ass for a fucking hole in the ground, though, Mad Mel. Oh. How do you feel about that from Ooh. Jason Glazer live in Cleveland? Well, classic move. You know, Glazer looks like he's getting ready to go to a goddamn titty bar or something like that. <laughs> I mean, dress up, pal. It's the NFL draft. Look at me. I'm dressed to the nines. You know, you look like an asshole. I mean, eh, just eh, eh, get him out of here, can we? I mean, is he, is he going to stick around? Or can we get him the hell out of here? I think his uh, microphone's still on Jay, can you hear us? Jay, is everything good back there? Listen, fuck you guys. I'm, I'm out of here. Though. I'm going over to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm going to hang out with D. Snyder and Twisted Sister. Are you serious? Okay, Jason, sorry. Okay. Thank you so much. And ladies Jeez. and gentlemen, Jason Glazer. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. Hour two on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 9th, 2021, begins right now. Yeah. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. Shout out to you for watching at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. Today is obviously a massive day because one hour from now, we'll get a chance to chat. With Aaron Rodgers. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'll be excited to see his thoughts on the fallout of everything that has taken place because I've gotten to see just probably a drop of it all in my mentions. It's been hot in the streets. Excited to hear his thoughts. Now there's anonymous sources releasing how he's feeling about things. And that's starting a whole new line of stories to start, by the way. And we have no idea if any of that is real or not on his feelings. We will find out one hour from now. Joining us is a man who has no feelings. A man from Ohio, a college football national champion, and a Super Bowl champion. All-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. How's it going, guys? Happy Tuesday. I don't have any feelings. I feel like I have a lot of feelings. I know. Like, that was just a shot at you. you know, that was, fine. I can yeah, handle it. Yeah, that was. Uh, I apologize for it. I was trying to figure out how I was going to transition to you and Chuck Berry, obviously, who had to make Jeez. an appearance on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Oh, did I wear that today? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I'm sure. I only have a few shirts, man. You know that. Hey, so I'm limited options. Hey, I have a question. Now, you're, I mean, I don't know Aaron well, like as well as people. Can't wait to see where this goes. That are around him. No, yeah, well, I mean, this could go <laughs> a lot of different ways, but I, I don't know. Literally, I met him in the Bahamas for the first time. Got yep. a chance, obviously, to do Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. I feel like I'm a, an active listener, so I've learned a lot about him through our conversations and everything like that. I don't really know him outside of that much. I mean, I'm very thankful for his time where he comes in here. These anonymous sources that are claiming he's feeling this way or that way, that would have to be you, right? You'd be one of the only people that could really do that. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Yep. Why are you doing that to him? Because now there's an entire set of stories coming about uh, about him being uh, surprised and not happy about the reaction. Like, who the fuck is re- is that you that's releasing that anonymous source, or is that just uh, potential a uh, bullshit? Well, it, you're going to think I'm joking, but I have no idea. I don't know what these reports are. When did they come out? Like today or last it night? It was People. People Magazine reported it, I yep, think, today. Yeah. He's getting coffee. That ele- well, oh, well, I saw had- the fake picture. Yeah, that's not him, of course. Oh. And I, by the way, I saw a lot of people dissect those pictures, uh, including our <laughs> office, immediately <laughs> yeah. upon those things showing up. I'm like, so wait a second. He flew from Green Bay to Los Angeles? in the middle of this entire thing and he's just casually walking around (laughs) doing nothing in that outfit looking like that and how'd he get so small all of a sudden but that's what's happening with Aaron Rodgers and I guess like you being a friend of his for a long time you've seen this it is wild the way this guy is talked about and covered for everything that he does and believes and how he acts now granted a lot of people will say he deserves it and it's all warranted but this motherfucker is a buzz storm huh like at everything he or somebody he isn't, like the Game of Thrones character, the Game of Thrones character that everybody thought was him, 
ended up getting murdered because he uh, was duck footed. He couldn't run that well, wasn't that athletic. But let's remember that that guy, whoever that was in Game of Thrones, he told his family, and that's the biggest moment in his entire life. Oh, yeah, yeah for but sure. But since it was potentially Aaron, then it was a conversation. Oh, no, and then, oh, this guy's incredibly unathletic. Now, this guy has a mask on in his car, driving to the coffee shop, walking down the street, went, trying to do everything that he's being told he should be doing to protect the world. And instead, what he's doing, he's getting buried by Shailene Woodley on her Instagram yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. He's getting buried by us and other... That guy has zero hair on his hands. He's got tiny feet and he just hopped into a fucking Prius. Let's assume <laughs> that Aaron is going to be driving something differently. That is not like this guy thought he was doing it right. But with the way Aaron is covered, you know, he this guy is now getting shots at it. It oh, is yeah. absurd. The life that Aaron lives. I'm being 100 percent serious just now that I've been baptized by the reaction of him just over the weekend. Yeah, well. All of this, like he has all of this attention on him, which started because he's such a good football player. That's why people want to pay attention, see what it is, and then his personality and how how he interacts uh, with the media and everybody else. And of course, this whole COVID situation just is a whole nother. I mean, I don't even know where to start, where to begin, on like how how crazy it's going to be. I don't know how long it's going to go on. Like this is something to where you always think, oh, you, the news cycle is going to turn over and everyone's going to forget about it. I don't see that happening with this. Oh, bad slate of games on yeah, Sunday. Right. Bad slate of games. And I guess last night, like, the ref decision, which we will ask you about, obviously, you've been there much more than us. You've made a sack and immediately flipped off the entire fans yep. and coaches and everything. You've had reactions. No fans. Never, I would never do that to the fans. Well, you looked at the camera. You said, where's my camera? And that you, Where's my camera? Yeah. You actually said that. And then you, oh, excuse me oh, here. You fuck you. Yeah, that's what you did after a sack. <laughs> we'll talk about that. But there was no real story other than the fact that Wait, Aaron didn't play. Why didn't he play? Well, he didn't play because of what he said on Friday. That is now carried into today. Jokic delivering that elbow to the guy's back, the MVP of the NBA, potentially bodying somebody, kind of garners a little bit of a conversation. But whatever he says one hour from now is boom. And then his game on Sunday is going to be judged. And then the next week his game is going to be judged. And everything like that, like it has always been. But I think at this point we can say confidently, and I hate to say this because it was awesome being a part of it, the ride last year, Aaron ain't never winning another MVP, no matter how he plays. I, no matter how he, no matter what he, he ain't winning. The MVP's voted on by the media, right? Yeah, I believe mm -hmm. so, yes. <laughs> there ain't no chance <laughs> no of another MVP coming. And, and this leads in perfectly to the regular season MVP odds that are currently sitting out there. Josh Allen is the favorite in the clubhouse, even after what just happened down in Duval where he wasn't able to score a touchdown against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's a plus 300. Tom Brady, who had the weekend off, plus 340. Kyler Murray, then Matthew Stafford, then Dak and Aaron. And as soon as I saw Aaron still on this graphic that Dirty made, I was like, well, there's no way he's going to fucking win. I mean, yeah. there's uh -huh. zero chance. he's No matter what he does, there's zero chance he's going to win. But him getting back, Lamar Jackson, by the way, plus 1,100. Let's go, dude. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's go. Tannehill leads the Titans. They're number one. I guess everybody just assumes they're going to fall off whenever, you know, no Derrick Henry is a little bit of a tough thing. He's all the way down there at plus 3,400. But it is – a wild life that your friend lives, dude. Hey, but going back to that MVP thing, which I think they mentioned, they mentioned last night. I saw on a show, there's like, oh, man, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is definitely the MVP now. They were saying, like, watching Jordan Love play with that team, how much better Aaron makes the team. And I instantly thought, like, not this year. He sure as hell is. No. I don't know if the time will, will tell. He could throw 600 touchdowns this year, and I think it would be tough for him to still win the MVP. But don't you think that these voters, the people that vote for MVP, don't you think they'll say, like, oh, no, I'm a professional. I can separate this. No. You don't think they'll even take that route? No. I, I think this COVID and, like, the vaccination stuff, I You're think right. that transcends everything no at this yeah, point. No way. Yeah, this is You're just right. like the baseball. Right. This yeah. is just like the Hall of Fame baseball writers, you know, because whenever I said yesterday on the show and I put a tweet out, like, if the Green Bay Packers realize that they're in a window right now with the way their roster is built – that they don't have a year or two for Jordan Love or three, however many years, to get comfortable and catch up with the way they're right. If you want to win a championship, it is going to be in the next couple years with the way the roster is assembled, with the players that you have, and you're going to have to pay air. Like, this is going to be something you're going to have to pay air. I had a lot of these media people telling me, how are those words even coming out of your mouth 
with how bad he lied and misled and potentially killed. Like I had actual people. So wait, so so are they saying that nobody that he's going to be blackballed from the league? Nobody's going to offer him a contract. I I have no idea what they thought. Whatever I said, like what they were getting at. But I think what they were saying is, it, nobody. This guy should not be benefiting because of the way he has handled himself and the way this whole thing's going. But if you look around the NFL. I think there's a lot of other people that have potentially gone through COVID on the other side of it. I think there's a lot. Of, but it's Aaron Rodgers. It's the MVP. So it obviously warrants conversation. And I will tell you this, AJ, if you want to text Aaron and let him know, give him a heads up. What? I read all the law books last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. That's good. Well, I would assume, Aaron, if he's feeling good, he's probably in his backyard running like a quarantine two-minute right now, right? No, you'd oh, have to. And I thought nope. about that because I had, um, once again, I was vaccinated. I got COVID. There was other people around me in a travel back from the place that I potentially had it or in a bed with me the day after I got it that did not get it and then got it from me spreading it. I mean, so it is, there's obviously a lot to, uh, to digest and take in in this entire story. And I never get loud about my situation because I have no idea if I'm an anomaly or if I'm normal. Right. Like I, I like when Aaron was talking, I said, hey, I'm vaccinated. I got covid, but I don't want to be the person that's out there saying, hey, I got vaccinated. And I had like 105 degree fever. I could have went to the hospital. Like, at what point are you supposed to go to the fucking hospital? I don't know. Isn't a hospital a decision that you make yourself? You turn, isn't it when you turn blue or something? They say now. Yeah, right. but Definitely. isn't that a personal decision? Like when you go to a hospital? And when yeah, you don't of course. Go, I mean, I, I of, there's there's what what sends one person to the hospital would not send another person a, sometimes. A lot of people with yours would have went to the hospital. Well, that's what I think. Yeah. yeah. Like I was, I was cooking in there, but I don't know if I'm an anomaly. If I, so I don't want to be the one out there projecting like, Hey, this nobody knows though. It affects everybody differently. I feel like, well, bingo. And that's why whenever you start labeling everything, the exact same, it starts becoming a problem, even though you will never, ever nah, be able there's to There's never any, like, there's no nuance or need for context in anything. <laughs> well, and that's another thing. A lot of our quotes were getting taken you know, like he sat here for what, 45 minutes, basically. Mm -hmm. And all the people that are telling me I didn't ask any questions like I did, actually, though, like at the end, I feel like I yeah. asked like a lot. I feel like I actually tried to get in there. Nobody listened to the entire because if you listen to the entire thing, unless you just have a feeling that all non vaccinated people are potentially killing the world, which there are people out there. And I hey, listen. You probably have your reasons for believing that, and I completely understand and appreciate I respect you feeling that way. Once again, I am a vaccinated person, so you do what you got to do. Those people don't want to hear anything from Aaron other than, like, hey, you're getting vaccinated so that everybody else. If you listen at 45 minutes, I thought he was pretty good at explaining why he was feeling the way he was feeling. But this is coming from somebody who I think I'm a naturally much more like... Oh, okay, yeah, and then move on as opposed to other people that don't want to operate that way. So I have no idea what's going to happen in less than an hour from now, but I know there's going to be people that hate him before it, during it, and after it, but this, there's no way he wins the MVP. No, no definitely not. Yeah, it'll be interesting, but, but you knew, like, that, and today, too, like people are going to take stuff out of context. I feel like the battle lines have already been drawn now at this point. It almost doesn't matter what he says, don't R you think? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. There's, there's people that are like ripping clips out of that thing and then piecing things together that are nowhere near each other. But are what? you surprised? Like, what are you surprised about? No, I'm not surprised. Okay. I'm not okay. surprised. I, mean, I feel bad. Yeah, you know? the, the, yeah, because I'm the pissing off somebody at all times. You know, somebody's I mean, well, in this conversation, no matter what, you know, people on one side are going to hate you, and the other side, you know, they'll either still like you or they'll just agree with you. Which and the majority aren't doesn't listening happen. either. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A lot of the people I think that were coming after me didn't even listen because the average duration of the video on YouTube, you know, we can see how long people watch. And there was a couple of people that tweeted at me like, after watching that, you should be embarrassed of yourself or whatever. And I was like, what's your uh, Google thing? So I can look and see if you actually watched it because <laughs> yeah. I can actually do that on the YouTube. I can look into mm -hmm. who watched it, who saw it, from where, how are you, and how long you watched. The average duration was like 19 minutes or 20 minutes, which is very long. That is a very long time, but I don't think we've gotten into the last 25 minutes, but that's going to happen in the world that we're in. I kind of expected it, but I also didn't expect like some people who are supposed to be very well researched, obviously not doing that entire thing in the way they're saying. It's just, it's that a all goes scene. out the window here with this situation. I feel like a lot of, I don't know. It's just so like battle lines. Here we go. Which side are you on? And then it is very difficult. If you feel really strong, like one way towards something, I'm not even talking COVID, just anything and somebody is doing something that contradicts that or they're saying something against your beliefs, 
it is tough to try to remove yourself enough to actually listen to everything they say. For instance, because you do go in like, oh, this guy's like, let's say the Island Boys are sitting there talking about the vaccine yeah. one way or the other. It's going to be tough for people to get over their initial shock of the Island Boys. Oh yeah, I got a tweet from a guy that was on Nickelodeon. It's in his. Uh, it's oh, in no, his, not, the, not, not guy, Lex right? Lumpkin. His bio. No, 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 an adult that used to be on uh, Nickelodeon. Okay, telling me Mark that Summers? he he hopes I Bell? hear. He hopes I hear Reggie from Nickelodeon. Who's Reggie from Nickelodeon? Oh, Reggie from. No, I screech. Screech. It's a guy who tweeted it. He's a, he's a comedian. He's uh, Reggie from Nickelodeon. It's not Screech. Screech, screech from is Saved by dead. the Bell. Rocket yeah. Power? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't screech know. is dead? I don't know. Screech is very dead. Yeah, and it, it is. I mean, he really burned bridges on his way out, too, by the way. Damn it. Know. Boy, did he. Get a Screech. Boy, did he. Oh, so you knew. Yeah. Oh, uh, so you knew. That's yeah. I was a yeah. dirt bag. Anyways, this guy tweeted me last night, and me and Aaron, uh, he was in his podcast. And I just so happened to see it. And he said, I, I hope or wish that Aaron hears this and listens to this and comes on for a good conversation. Oh. And he hopes that I hear this and listen to this and I would go on a conversation with him. And no offense, guy who has Reggie from Nickelodeon in his bio. Like, y'all, you don't fucking know. Either. Like, why is Reggie from Nickelodeon talking? Like, are you a fucking MD, dude? Uh, do you have a 500-page report? Like, that is, it, it, until... You like I don't know. You know that's what, I mean? what people will say about Aaron, though. They're saying you're not bingo. A Aaron. That's what I'm saying. Like that's but those same people that are attacking Aaron, this motherfucker's on Nickelodeon. Like, hey, bro, uh, no offense to you, I'm sure you're right. You've probably been well versed, but how is what you're saying any different than what's going on over here? And you're burying that like it's the same. It's the same situation. It's just on the other side of it's the never plane. ending. It, it's a never ending cycle. Yeah, it's like all these sports people that get on things. Yeah. It's like, okay. So you motherfuckers are good at sports. You know COVID. You know the entire situation. Now, listen, I understand that we, and once again, I cannot state this enough. I got the vaccine, okay, because, hey, here we go. All right, I did that whole thing. But I did it just strictly because I assumed, hey, this is good, this is good. There's people that don't believe that. There's people that have put, and let's assume people that are making, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars through their life are probably investing in a lot of things potentially as well, and they have their own feelings. And I think just at this point, the amount of anger over it is just, I think the energy is being wasted. Like, honestly. Yeah, it, absolutely, I, it is being wasted. Howard Stern wants him suspended the rest of the year, doesn't he? <laughs> I, I don't know football, but Aaron must be fucking good because they're putting up with all his bullshit. That was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was an incredible yeah. line from Howard Stern, and very accurate, by the way. Be who you can afford to be is something in all relationships probably relates to Howard for a lot of his life as well. But oh, yeah. like that is, that's how we started. And then obviously I didn't listen to the entire takeaway, but uh, there's a lot of that happening from a lot of people. And it's like, why we're wasting energy. Nobody's going to change their ideas at this point. Now that is a hopeless mindset, I guess. And I assume both sides, the loud people that I don't think Aaron wanted to be a part of, by the way, that's why he did do the I'm um, immunized. Cause I don't think he wanted to be one of the people you would have to ask him, and who knows what was in his, you know, his soul and everything like that. But I think both, one side, more people are vaccinated than non-vaccinated, okay? More people are uh, vaccinated than non-vaccinated. I understand that that is a much larger party. And it feels like there is more people with m bigger platforms that are on the pro-vaccine side. But the anti-vaxxers exist as well. And I'm not saying that they should, they shouldn't. I'm just telling you what reality is. And I'm sick of all the wasted energy that is going into this because I think it's time for us all to realize, hey, we just need to move on. This shit ain't going to change. Their stadium's filled right now. Is everybody getting their vaccination card, asked for it, all these things? When people go to restaurants, you're just assuming everybody's vaccinated. Is that what's happening? I guess everybody has the best security in the history of anything. I think what we need to realize is that there is people that are just going to be for and against everything forever. And there's no reason for the people to get so incredibly upset about it all. I don't, I don't understand it. I appreciate it, I guess, because you care so much about the world and humans and shit like that. But I feel like you're literally just running your head into a wall. And that wall ain't moving, ever. I think you were just doing that. And I guess saying just get over it is a little bit of a, um, like a white flag wave. But all, but legit, like just get fucking over it. Like we need to move on. There's a lot of shit yeah. that we got to figure out. Like there's a wasted lot of shit. There's a lot of wasted energy around. It. You're right. Like that. I I find myself like with a group of people, 
and all of a sudden, like, they start talking COVID and talking about what's going on or what's going to happen with kids in school and all this stuff. And I just zone out. And then I'm like, I'm going to blow my head off. Like, <laughs> is, this, is this all we talk about? I know we have to do it here. But I'm like, okay, like, I don't have any answers for you. Definitely don't ask me my opinion. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know either. Yeah. But now I'm not I'm, asking you either. Exactly. Nobody's fucking asked me except for the people that wanted me to be Mr. Johnny follow-ups, which I did ask <laughs> a couple Johnny follow-ups. And I wasn't Cronkite, okay? And uh, I've never seen Cronkite work, but I do understand that the Walter Cronkite era is, hey, this guy gets the fucking answers that so we Brian need. Williams? Ty would know. Yeah, he's a liar, yeah. though. The 11th hour. Yeah. Is he the guy, who made, who's the guy that made his like assistant look at his dumps in the toilet? I don't know if that was Brian Williams. He was the one who was taking RPG I think that was fire Mitch Kessler, the... dude. Jesus Christ. I thought you did that. I think it was, it was, it was bad M- Mitch Kessler right now. Yeah. Think. Not Brian Williams. I'm not saying Brian Williams did that. No, he's a fraud. You did just say that, and I don't think No, no, it's... I asked the question, but somebody, there's a, a prominent news person that this came out later on in their life. Mitch Kessler. Were... Is it Mitch Kessler? Uh, no, that's a TV show. This was a real human. <laughs> Yeah, but I think we all know that that particular show was based on some guy. Oh no, no, one person. Not a few. Not the. You're talking about the guy that went to Ohio University, the Bobcat. No, not. Oh, I didn't know that he was a Bobcat. Bobcat. It's not after him. No. (laughs) Listen, of course he's from Ohio. He's Mitch Kessler's from Ohio. Wow. Who are you talking about? Mitch Kessler, dude. Morning show. Okay, and you're saying he is. You guys are on the same page here. AJ Love, gotcha. Okay, no, no, broadcasters that that went to Ohio. You. His favorite broadcaster of all time went to Ohio. U, Brenneman. These are all Ohio guys. Marty, uh-huh. yeah. No, no, Matt no, Lauer Tom. did not do this. No, I don't I'm even know. Whoa, 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 whoa. Matt Lauer. I don't even know what to Google about? to look this up to fact check this. Uh, a guy who looked on Google site. dumped on. Ty knows yeah. it. Toilet dump specter. Dump. Poop news What's, reporter. Poop. What's, Poop, yeah. Yeah. Grumpy news report. What's wrong oh, with having yeah. someone look at his poop? Maybe you just no, want to I mean, make sure he didn't have hemorrhoids. Check it out, hole in one, he, right there. He had somebody work for him, and he and it's she a came thing. It disappeared. <laughs> one said, wipe. She said he would make him make her like flush his toilet for him at all times. All right, listen, I don't know anything about what you're stating. It's what terrible. That is, I'm just saying that's, terrible. Terrible. that's terrible. <laughs> it's I would quit that job. I hope that, I hope that person stood up and quit the I job. I hope that person's quit. okay. And whoever that happened to, I would like to send out all my T's and P's. I am sorry that that happened to them. But what I'm saying is, like, people are not going to get past it. It is very evident until the next thing comes. But I just hope as a society we can get to a point where it's like, all right. And then we're moving on. Yeah. You know, and that is just. But that's the thing, though. It's like I was thinking about this and all of the stuff that's happening. Like, what is the next thing that, like, I I can't think of anything. Like, you mentioned earlier in the week. Like, this is just everything kind of, like, falling on itself. Like, the NFL is bigger than it's ever been. Everyone is only talking about COVID or, like, the vaccine stuff. Like, we had all that, all the stuff with the owners meetings and like all the scandals going on with the Washington football team, the Gruden stuff, the Raiders stuff, Henry Ruggs, like all that stuff is just alien footage is put was put out. Exactly. When? Recently. I mean, alien, they didn't, they, you know, we've, we've got more information about UFOs and aliens than we ever have during this time. It was in March. Yeah, but this isn't in like the last week or two. Right? This guy spreads no, no. more misinformation than anyone. <laughs> no, I, know. I got excited. I'm not, listen, misinformation or not. I'm saying we move, we move past it. They, they, Put out this alien stuff out, and people are like, oh, "Okay, cool." And then yeah, it was those next. three videos. Mar- where I actually- didn't move past, by the way, but those videos had been on the internet for a long time. The Pentagon just confirmed yeah. that they were actual, real, yes. uh, unidentified. No, aerial phenomena. No, UAP, right? Yeah, yeah, unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah, it's not UFOs anymore. It's UAP. Have a little respect. Mm-hmm. That's what they should do. Wheel an alien out right now. Let us all look at it, talk to it, and then maybe we can move past everything and everybody being so opinionated. There's something going on infrastructure wise too. I think I. Our TR in front of words. Infrastructure. Really? Yeah, I think there's a trillion dollar situation going on there. Are we Whoa. talking supply chain? No, well, see, I don't think the supply chain's <laughs> even being talked about. about, by the way. That'll be when this whole thing changes, whenever all the uh, gifts and everything stop yeah. showing up. Oh, uh, Suez. Oh, when no one gets, everyone's getting coal for Christmas. Christmas is canceled. Well, not because Thanks of. Thanks a lot. Go ahead. Fox. No, 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 this isn't Fox. Fox is back. Talking to Mayor Pete? Huh? Christmas is back. Christmas is back. Okay, cool. You're Christmas- gumpy with the light on today. Yeah, we actually had to reset the uh, settings in the camera, and we had to do that because we lost all power in our office, but nobody else in the building lost any power. Fascinating. Well, that works. Interesting. Uh, fascinating how that happens. Yeah. 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 The new like Aaron was today, coming on. Huh? Yeah, today, on this like day, today. and then obviously on... Uh, Halloween, feel good Friday, all systems down. Yeah, huh. There's a Comcast outage oh, yeah. right now across the country. Serious one. 
But anyways, we had to reset all the shit, and then Zito saw that that camera potentially had another setting whenever he was resetting it, and we opened it up, and guess who's back? Fucking Gumpy from Hell the yeah. Shadows. Yeah. 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 That's actually the best camera yeah. we have. That looks it's incredible. It's unbelievable. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, it's not just the camera. I guess it's Gumpy. Oh, yeah. He looks great. Yeah. Gumpy no, looks great. Not. Yeah. yeah, he looks nah. good. Nah. All right, let's get some football. But it has, somebody's disappeared, so that's maybe why everyone's getting so worried and asking all these questions. <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do with what we were just talking about. You want to darken his camera again? Uh, yeah, let's put him back <laughs> into the cave. Gumpy, I would like to know more about this. Oh, of course you would, You AJ. already know, AJ. I honestly don't. Gump? Fauci is gone. Oh, I thought you oh, were going to say Warren Sharp yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Warren I Sharp say Warren is Sharp. I am worried. Warren Sharp has not tweeted since Thursday Night Football. Uh-oh. See, that is who Gumpy is in a constant potential. No, I unfollowed. I did, last week, I unfollowed. I oh, hey, yeah. this, hey, hey, this is what people need to do yeah. with the, 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 the vax for non -vax. Just yeah. unfollow them. Yeah. Just move on. That's what Gumpy did with one. Is that why he hasn't tweeted since Thursday? Yeah. You start, unfollowed him? To worry. No, you unfollowed him. Have you not seen his tweets or he actually hasn't tweeted? So usually even if, since I unfollowed him, someone will show up. Like I didn't block him or mute him. So I went back and looked and he is, since Thursday night, it's been radio silence. Okay, my well, I want to let Warren Sharp know that I do miss his presence on the internet. His stats and things are mm. awesome. There are people like Gumpy, though, that are about fed up with him acting like he created football. Though. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the one. I mean, Gump has a new public enemy number one on the top yeah. of his list, too. So I think he's up there on all of ours. Yeah, that's, that's for the team. Who's that's this? for the team, that one. Oh. Yeah. Old Parmesan. I'm not being selfish with this one. What? This what, one's Tony? for everybody. I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah. Why'd you say this, AJ? You I, said who's that to start this entire I'm, conversation. I'm sorry. I'm curious. I would like to know who Gump is talking about right now. Me too. Who is it? Who do we hate? Moz. Yeah, oh, Maziano. Yeah, Maziano. He yeah. got on his high horse. <laughs> yeah, we've Super hated Maziano. What happened? Horse. Yeah, Maziano stinks. Stinks, stinks. That guy, Maziano stinks. That hey, guy stinks. I, I stayed up Friday night, and I watched every damn clip that talked about this show. So if you said something, I know. <laughs> That's right. All right. What Maz, did he say? Maz's question, I, I think he was one of the ones that thought that I yeah. didn't do enough cronkiting and things like that. you know. But Maz also, we have history with Maz over here. Uh -huh. Hashtag abolish replay. Yeah, and then he attacked replay and everything yeah. like that. I mean, Moz is... That guy fucking stinks. Yeah. AJ, he called you a dipshit. Did he really? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I'm coming around on yeah, Moz. What, if what Moz, network is he on? Uh, he's on ESPN. Okay, I think... Okay, is he on Get Up? Yeah. Okay, I saw a little bit of him today. Okay. Yeah, so back... What happened between us and Moz is... Um, so, during the CBA negotiations, if you do recall... During the CBA negotiations, the NFL was releasing information on the deal that they are trying to get done. And the way it was being presented, the players look like idiots for not accepting this deal. The amount of money, what it's potentially going to be. And all that information is getting leaked to reporters that go on TV and say, this is what the NFL is offering. And it's painting a narrative that the players are a bunch of idiots, basically. And it's like, well, there has to be something in there that the players don't like, that they're not reporting. So my entire take was... The NFLPA needs to start releasing more information about why they're saying no to people so that it isn't just Maziano on GitHub basically sounding like an NFL propaganda machine whenever he speaks, which is what it was every single morning. Yeah. He would go in there and just say this whole thing. And I, it was clipped out of context, and then he saw it, and then it basically he said that I should never question his journalistic integrity, and he, he like won on this entire thing. I got texts from people behind the scenes at ESPN saying, hey, we like, I like you more than anybody over here, okay? And I know there's problems. But what you said about Maziano is wrong. It was like, what, what? So I actually did. I actually took the high road and said, hey, Maz, I apologize for potentially making your journalism look not whatever. You know, like, uh, because the way it was said. But I was talking about something much bigger than fucking Maziano, okay? I was talking about the narrative that was being painted about the deals that are being in place and not being agreed to by the players. It wasn't even, Maz just so happened to be, by the way, the most recent one I saw before coming in. So there was more than Maz. It wasn't just Maziano. It was a lot of other people. So that was my entire thing. And I could understand how they get upset, but he obviously, you know, sent texts around ESPN for people to send me messages and, you know, ask for my apology and all that shit. So he's been Moz since then.
Right, his name is actually Graziano. He has been Moz <laughs> since then. Okay, like, okay. okay. <laughs> this is yeah. So I'm I getting, actually I'm getting Dan Zeus in, involved too in my head. I'm thinking Dan. <laughs> so Zeus. Dan yes. Han Zeus, I just learned yesterday, his name is not Dan Zeus. I no. had Mandela effect there. That so is, what is this? Okay, Moz's real name is what? Graziano. Dan Graziano. Graziano, yeah. And you call him Moz. Moz, yeah. Yeah, now, yeah. Just because. Sure, for Maziano. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. We're getting a sports Emmy soon, man. So, yeah, yes. we should. By the way, because, you know, so I didn't like the fact that. Hey, we, hey, you know, we never, ever even think about mentioning sports Emmys again. You know that. Yeah, fuck them. But the, 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 the whole, they, give Dan Patrick one and then we'll get one. But I didn't like that. You know, instead of watching the entire clip potentially to like hear, you know, what I was saying, he automatically got offended, upset, and then he started sending texts to people behind the scenes at ESPN to reach out to me and like almost I don't want, I don't know if he thought people were gonna punish me or something. Like, hey Moz, hate to break to you. That don't fucking happen. Uh, I work for me, dude. That it is a fascinating scene there. But since then I was like, I can understand why you get upset from that one thing if you didn't listen to the entire thing and thought it was about you and nothing else. So I apologize for that. We've never met, whatever, move on. So then I stewed on it, obviously, for a few days. I was actually trying to get back on GitHub a couple weeks later, and uh, I didn't love, I didn't love it, you know, the way it was all handled. With the, the more texts I got from people asking me to, you know, hey, what you said about Ma is not, you know, not good. I was like, get the fuck out. Like, are we serious right now? Like, that wasn't even about him. So I was going to go on GitHub and hope that Moz was going to be on the same day. And uh, in the pre-show thing, I was going to be real nice, real nice, real nice. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? And then as soon as that thing gets on air, I was going to say, yeah, but uh, Maz, you're a bitch. So yeah. nobody cares. And I was excited to see like Greeny's reaction. Like, you know, like, so that was going to happen. You know, that was going to happen. But That's a huge missed opportunity by them. They could have got yeah. great ratings, some oh, great yeah. viral clips. Yeah, yeah. I think they potentially knew I was maybe up to something, though. You know, I think they potentially yeah, knew I, I was maybe I up think, to something. I think they potentially know that you – Aren't scared to hold a grudge to the grave. Yeah. Well, it, by the way, I did get past it because Ma, yeah. I, I got that past it. big of you. It's big of you to apologize at first. And then I. You did, but we have been stoking the fires ever since. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. The more I started like thinking about the whole situation, I'm like, I wasn't wrong actually. With the shit they say about people, the shit that they say about people on there every single day, like yeah. what I said, no way. So I like thought about it, and then I, but since then I've gotten past it. Like I've got, because he's yeah. added great insight and information That's into the sports media world. But then obviously he did not get past everything that happened from way back then. He said that we didn't handle it properly, blah, blah, blah. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck Old him. Old Moss. Moss slash Graziano. I, yeah, man. I, I don't know. You guys need to, to add me in on all these beefs you have. I don't know about them. That's really the only one. That's what, that, for me, that's really the only one. Uh, just because... Well, Gump, maybe Gump needs to tell me. I know he has a new guy every day. Now, Gump hates everybody. Yeah. So Mom, that yeah. is... He, he's uh, very no. un-Canadian of him. No, no, no. Now, well, he's the least Canadian Canadian that of all true. time. I think we've yeah. all decided uh -huh. that. But the opinions and thoughts of Gump do not reflect that of his employer or his peers. Yeah. Because his thoughts and opinions run deep on who he hates. That yeah. is true. I am loyal, though. I yeah. love who I love. Yeah. And if I don't like you, I don't like you. I ain't going to fake it. Yeah. Well, you did like Sharp Bear for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Not really, no. Yeah, you guys had his Bible. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. He didn't send me one. Oh, oh there it is. Where it started. So, yep. we just I like Warren Sharp. Me too, by the way. Because I feel like he does some of the shit that we would never do. I'd never even think about doing, but it is, it is useful. At times. But yeah, it sure. adds to the sports media conversation. I, I think those who follow him very closely, though, you know, we, you and I just see him in bursts, I think. You know, uh -huh. we just see his stats in bursts. I think, just like me, by the way, me and Burst is good. Too much of me, not great. But Gumpy and Diggs and the gamblers who do all their algorithms and research, like his stats are very important. But then once he starts, in Gumpy's eyes and words, acting as if he created football, that becomes a little bit of an issue for Gumpy because the game is much bigger than Warren Sharp's stats. He's got a great mustache, though. Great mustache. He came on the show, gave us great stats. Mm -hmm. I appreciate him. Gumpy, not so much. Moz is the only one where I've had a... Oh, I fucking hate this guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he has Gump has an issue with uh, with he, and he also has an issue with is it uh, Jet passing right? Isn't it he and Jet who go <laughs> oh, back and forth? No, 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 no. What? No, we. What? Uh, what? What? Me and, what? Uh, what? Me and Jet had a very nice uh, text message conversation. Oh! Wow! Oh, wow. Very Set our swords that? aside. Yeah. Wow. He's a good man, that Jet. He's a good man. Congrats. He's a good man. What'd you guys say to each other? Said enough is enough.
put our swords away. Did you wow. threaten to kill him if he ever said anything? <laughs> <laughs> you guys disagree, right? You guys disagree on some things. No big deal, but we'll move along. Yeah, we both love baseball. That's all that matters. Yeah, not a lot of people do. Oh. There you go. Two of ten. <laughs> you guys are in a small community. All right, let's get some phone calls. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, what are your thoughts on the game last night? <laughs> 35 minutes in here. AJ, what are your thoughts on the uh, on the game last night? His all-time leading tackler about Cassius Marsh. Like, what do you think about Cassius Marsh's entire – his spin kick is awesome. Amazing. His, in um, full pads, by the way. Amazing. Would be good enough to do all by itself. But then you also have to remember he was cut by the Steelers, fourth quarter, third down, big-time game, prime time. You can see how his emotions maybe get the best of him. Tony Carrente hip checks him, then makes a call. It's just all this shit is so absurd to even think about. We should be talking about, you know, all the massive plays that were made by – both teams, including Chris Boswell, who had the best fourth quarter performance I've ever seen out of any football player with a fumble recovery, a 54-yard field goal, a 52-yard field goal, and a game winner from 40 in the same damn quarter. Damn. That's unbelievable. Your thoughts on it all, AJ, last night, Monday Night Football in the Steel City? I mean, yeah, it's tough to, to think about anything else other than the Cassius uh, Marsh situation, like hearing people talk about it. Yeah, whatever. The taunting rule, we know. Stupid. Stupid. If they even continue to talk about it, just dumb. Why don't we just sit here and talk about COVID for another four hours? Like, we were not going to get anywhere with it. But Similar. the Corinti taking that little step back when more Cassius, you saw, was trying to get around him is such a childish move. Like, that's just like like what some – I don't – I cannot imagine doing it. He had to be frustrated to do it. But, man, like, you, if you're the official, you cannot do that. So He can say whatever he wants. He absolutely moved into him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He sees him do the posture, he says. The posture. And Tony Carante goes, on my fucking field, on Monday Night Football, you're going to posture like that? I don't mm -hmm. think so. If he even comes close to me, I'm fucking throwing it. I'm fucking throwing it. I'm throwing it. Then he comes out. He's like, boom, fucking hit me. <laughs> boom. That's, that, that is how it is. It's over. I'm calling it. And then in the post game, he was interviewed by pool reporter Adam Hogg. Hodge. Hoagie. Hoagie. Thank you, Hoagie. Hodge. Shout out to him, poor reporter. And he said that it wasn't the contact at all. And I think the reason why he said it wasn't the contact at all is because somebody came into his ear and was like, hey, you clearly backing into him is in slow motion on the internet fucking everywhere right now. So just act like that didn't happen. So in the interview, he says, no, 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 I, I, not at all. The, the bumping into each other had nothing to do with it. Is that Carrente taunting Cassius Marsh then? If he's Look at his answer. Can you pop that back up? Yeah, we read that, this. That's an answer you say when you, you're not telling the truth. When they asked if, the, uh, if that contributed to the penalty. No, not at all. I didn't judge that as anything that I dealt with. Like, what does that even mean, that I dealt with? Yeah, it's all bullshit. This is a guy who um, is a little bit eager. It did appear as if he had a couple scuffs. We don't know what he's like in real life. I'm just judging him on the field. Yes. Mm -hmm. On the field, uh, seems to be a bit ego-driven. Seems to be somebody that wants it to be about himself. Egotistical and you're going to have to have, maybe off the field, I'm not hearing so sure, on the field, definitely that first one. But I'm not, a, you would have to have that type of shield, though, built up around you to be an NFL ref. I understand there has to be some sort of ego and cockiness and confidence to take on whatever when you're going to be hated by everybody. But him potentially taunting Cassius Marsh to remind Cassius Marsh that this is his fucking thing. And then I'll. Doing the ref equivalent of dunking on somebody by throwing the flag up on top of him. And watching it and staring him down as you throw it up super high, too. Did Carrente just taunt Cassius Marsh? Mm, sounds like it. Let's suspend him the rest of the season. Wow. Man. Fine with let's me. Let's suspend Carrente the rest of the season for that. Yeah. And let's, you know, just put him in more power like you do to other refs that have ego problems. Let's put them into the head of the officiating thing. That will be great. I mean, he did, like, he, he, he was thinking, like, okay, this is a way that I can actually affect the outcome of this game. So I'm just going <laughs> to stick my pooper out as far as I can while this guy walks by, and then I'm going to throw the flag. Anyone who watched that, it was plain as day. <laughs> How about yeah. Paisan Corrente? Is he? Sticking the pooper. He doesn't pooper. deserve that title. Uh, is he? Tiny Corrente? Scumbag town, probably. I'm not a, I don't know what he is in real life. We are strictly talking about all I hate field. him. I, what about Diggs and Nick? Do they they like him? Well, no. Diggs said that for the first time ever, Steelers are on the receiving end of bad calls, as opposed to the other end, which is what it's been since the beginning of the Steelers. They I really thought the low block call that took away the Jimmy Graham touchdown was much worse than the taunting call. Yes. Yeah, but that's third down. That's a drive extender. Mm -hmm. You know, like that is, for instance, Jets, Colts, Thursday Night Football. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yes. Okay. 
Pittman needed six more yards. If Pittman would have got seven more yards, the risk-free same-game parlay, Thursday night football, Thursday situation would not be a dead one. Nope. On the field, watching it in Indianapolis, there was a third down in which they were going to have to punt the ball back to Indianapolis, and it was close enough and the Jets were doing well enough that Carson would have still been on the field. Mm -hmm. And if Carson's on the field, the starters are still on the field. Let's assume Michael Pittman potentially picks up seven fucking yards. Instead, on a third down, face mask, extend the drive. Josh Johnson goes on the longest drive in the history of the fucking NFL time-wise. Mm -hmm. Carson, and then no, don't even get back out there. That, those third down penalties are game changers. That is a turnover. That's bigger than, that is a turnover that happens on that play. And Corinthi just created it with his pooper. Yeah, pretty Cost. evident. Pretty <laughs> evident. Points on the board too. That's, hey, you know what it reminded me of, Pat? It reminded me of what my kids do sometimes. Like if my daughter and son, they fight all the time. She's 10, he's eight. She'll like, if she's standing in the way, we're trying to get out the door to, to go to school or something, it's all this chaos. She'll be like, she'll, they'll be fighting. Like guys, come on now, give it a sec. Like, can you guys just stop fighting for a half a second so we can get in the car? And my, my son tries to walk out the door, and she just throws her shoulder or throws her ass into him and blasts him in the hip or something. And then they get in a full-blown fight. I'm like, that's what kids do. And that's what I saw on the field last night. Tiny Correnti. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. oh. Not doing anything. What are you talking about? You're in my way. He's like, this is my fucking field. <laughs> he needs to be suspended <laughs> for the rest sideways. of the season. You, you yeah. said it. <laughs> Kick him, please, boss. Kick him off the fucking this tour, fucking Pat. Field, dude. <laughs> Kick him off a toilet. Him also holding that thing. Oh, yeah. Dirt bag. I fucking love Scumbag. him. Scumbag. Just, just holding him. Pow. <laughs> gotcha. Bang. And then up over his head so dramatically and then just dropping it behind. That's what frustrates me the most is how they throw it in like such, like such vitriol in the throw. Like throw it, Smug. stare at the guy and be like, I got you, bud. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's what he looked like. He taunted Cassius Marsh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Take his fly. Should have been boy. offsetting. Sure, I mean, he might. He he probably will get suspended, won't he? Correnti? No, no, he made contact yeah, right? with a player. He was gonna. Who's gonna suspend him? He's doing the Walt Super Bowl Anderson? now. Walt Anderson. Yeah, he might do the Super Bowl. Is how Bears fans probably view this entire thing because Bears fans, I guess, have gotten screwed a lot by the refs. Yeah. Every team has, but I understand on Monday Night Football, the Bears definitely Scumbag. did. The guy in charge made games about himself too. Like, let's not. You know what I mean? Walt is a pretty similar type ref. And Can I'm Rod like, step in? Does Rod have control over this? If he wants to go babyface, you know, he's, he's yeah, staring he down heel. He's staring down a heel he persona. He should step Magic in. Magic Roger came out and said, what Tang Carrente did was disgusting. We're going to restart the game Ooh. at the exact spot. Yeah. Let's see who wins this thing. <laughs> what if Roger has him go Wednesday afternoon football again in Pittsburgh? Some oh, yeah. good ratings. Yeah, he would. He makes some money. <laughs> He'd crush. Same that's, result. That's Hey, that fourth quarter was wild last night, mm -hmm. AJ. How about I'm Chris? Glad, how I'm about glad it turned into it turned into a good game. He has a little bit of snooze, or some people might have fell asleep before the yeah. end of it. You know, maybe had to watch it this morning. <laughs> but like, hey, uh, not me, obviously. No, wouldn't do that. No clue. I, <laughs> I woke up early this morning, excited about what had happened last oh, night. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Because I I gained two points on the record because you know had a seven. I basically picked what was going to happen. Not that I was the only one, but in our potential record. I did, and I had to. How about Boswell? Yeah, I'm six and eight. You won four and nine. That's a shit. Wait, why'd you get two points for that? Well, because I said oh. Bears cover Steelers to win. I yep. actually made two picks. I said that's get a two. Get out of here. You don't get two for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What are you talking about? about? The new scoring system. Well, there's an asterisk up there. Yeah. I, I mean, I clearly said. Get that out of here. That's a joke. No, no not, what are you talking about? about? No. How did AJ go from four and ten to four and nine? Don't be a baby. Uh, that's unbelievable. I think he's. <laughs> That is interesting. Change that, Z. Change uh, Gertie, 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 Gertie. We're both for it. Oh. We're both for it. Dirty, you did the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Dirty, you did the right thing. Stop well, crying, we'll look, the, we'll look the week Pressure time. from the boss, of course. It's like you probably, yeah, never mind. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Oh, <laughs> oh go ahead. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, listen, go Dirty, ahead. you can drop that down to five and eight, I guess. Okay. okay. Send AJ oh, some okay. tissues. Okay, since AJ's so upset, even though, you know, I clearly said, this is what's going to be happening. Uh -huh. Wait, when did you tell him to do that, for real? When do you act like you really get two points for that? This morning, yeah. This morning, he showed the thing. I'm like, don't I kind of get two, I think? Let's put an asterisk. You thought, was slide. You thought that slide right by? Yeah, yeah, I did. I Because I, I assume you just don't look at any of these graphics. I assume you're just, your rocks and your brains just about kind of monster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know I mean? <laughs> All right, I want five and eight. You want four or nine. That's a shame. Still mm, beat you. Loser. But, um, I mean, I still, weren't we tied? 
Yeah, we were until I won last night. You lost. And I won last night, too, though. No. No. no, 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 no. I had the Bears at the, the, the spread. No, no, you didn't. But you didn't say Steelers were going to win. Bears are going to come. Yeah. <laughs> Wait that, a second. No, no. You messed my score. You gave me a loss. No. I won. Whoa. <laughs> what are you <laughs> talking all right, about? All right, cool. Nothing's real then. Nothing's no. Real. Nothing's well, real. well, hey, that dives okay. us into a much deeper conversation. Yeah. yeah. And do we have I mean, time? For real, though. When, and like, time. When, when did uh, when's the first year? What year did everything start? Well, is it when Jesus was born, or was it when Father Time and Mother Nature did their thing to create Adam and Eve? I don't think any of us will ever know. Yeah. Big Bang. And that's the question. We gotta get to a break. Forty six minutes. In. It's a shame you lost this weekend, dude. Yeah, maybe Gertie, you know what to do. Change my put my score back. How do you give me a loss too? <laughs> well, that might have been a part of the entire conversation. You know, just so we can cook that thing a little bit more. Yeah. Good eye. Hey. Good, good, eye. Eye. good eye. Good eye. Hey, Lucy. Good eye. hey you asked the okay. follow up whenever we said immunized. You know? Look you, at us. Look at us. Those numbers that mean nothing to you normally, you whoa, 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 whoa. Minute, hold on. Minute, not minute. only not only did you give yourself two points, which is not possible in one game in what we're doing, you gave me the loss when I actually won. <laughs> hey, Dirty's good. Dirty! Hey, baby, Dirty! Dirty. Okay, you, came in, you, came, you came in and you like mandated this when you walked in this morning to, hey, you gotta do this? No, it was actually when the graphic was shown. And I said, wait a minute. Can we uh I, I think I deserve a little something here, don't I? Yeah, let's make it a little different. So it wasn't a mandate, it was certainly a conversation though. And we I'm going to get my own slip. graphic person. He ain't going to be able to touch with Dirty. <laughs> That's right. Dirty is unbelievable. Look, at, Put the rushing leaders graphic up, please. Look at this graphic from Dirty, dude. Oh, wait. Oh, there it is. Look at this graphic, Jeez. dude. Are Jeez. you kidding me? Derrick Henry still in the lead, by the way, rushing. Missing a game already. Jonathan Taylor. Look at Lamar Jackson. Jeez. Top five right now. Damn. Wow. That's unbelievable. This graphic, though, beautiful. Dirty, we appreciate you. Dirty. We would like to let everybody know that we don't fuck with the stats of other people, but definitely when it's me and AJ head-to-head -head and we potentially tie, even though I gave one more pick than he did. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. I need to go I need to go back and check all the games. I need an audit on all my picks now because I don't think I've been paying attention. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, you can do that. Hey, Good luck. Also took the I may hire somebody on the internet to do that. Oh, Java would have crap. Warren Sharp, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe Moz. Think he'll do it? Have Axel do Moz it. Moz is not on the internet. Moz hates the internet, actually. I think that's why he was so upset about it. Moz. Axel do it with a sense What is Moz's deal? What, what is Moz's deal, Gump, you think? <laughs> what is his deal? What's that? Moz. Moz? Yeah. I don't know. The, when he was start going off about the replay, like it is in 1975, dude. There's going to be replay in football. Yeah, like, yeah. How did hashtag abolish replay not get trending when he tweeted it? Well, Moz isn't a guy of the internet. You know, he's a TV guy, but he hates the internet, I think. Anyways, Moz and I will get over it because he'll break some news and yeah. we'll be yeah. appreciative of him. Sure. Mm -hmm. He's a big Fouch guy. And that's not his name, so yeah. I'm sure that might be part of it. Maybe. Moz it is. We're back in four nice, minutes. Though. Give him a nickname. It's like you, you like him, you give him a nickname. Well, that wasn't the reason why. We wanted to give him zero credit for anything for a long time. That is why that happened. But then we got over it, and then it did become like a, oh, Moz. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we like Moz. We like Moz. You're, it's, it, that nickname has rode both sides of the fence, just like Stats has, just like, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people, the refs normally do. Mm -hmm. I got a nickname for Moz. We'll be back in four minutes with that and more. one 833 4 We'll talk to you then. I refuse to take Pittsburgh Steelers minus seven. I just can't do it. I will take the Bears plus seven as well. Wow. And a Steelers dub, though. So this is called a twofer. Oh, Ooh. That's a double dip. It's called a twofer. Here we go. Okay, I, I think Bears cover, Steelers win. That's Steelers football, no matter who they're playing. I think we have potentially introduced people to the people of Pittsburgh, and I think a lot of people have potentially taken liking to more things out of Pittsburgh because of it, and for that, incredibly honored to be a part of. With that being said, when a video hits the internet like one did yesterday, oh, and a Yinzer is showing off what a Yinzer is like at home, behind closed doors, when being caught on a candid camera, a lot of people immediately tweet us and go, oh, we thought you were lying, Donner, about what Pittsburgh's like. It's like, no, no, Yinzers are electric factory. Uh, Yinzers are hilarious. Yinzers are passionate. And this one particular Yinzer <laughs> took the world by storm yesterday. Go ahead and run this thing. A direct staff to nod. That's my call. 
Spread them on to a direct snap to nausea. Nausea. Yeah, copper, sure copper fit knee braces. Works hard. What they want to do. They're going to run it right up the middle for zero yards. <laughs> What they're going. Why Zero. They, why don't they bring in what the fullback? Yeah, they don't need that. They need blocking. He's gonna pass. No, oh, he's not. What do you back your? He's gonna pass. No, he's not. He it off to that guy with no momentum. That's why. That's why. He did it. He did. He did a slant touchdown. Go! You better pick him up and put him down, motherfucker. <laughs> Slow, motherfucker. <laughs> so mad. Why did he pick him up with a thumb? I don't know what that means. Yeah, he's a receiver. That's a touchdown. Stop. That's bullshit, Dad. <laughs> Look at where the guy comes to catch him. How old is this guy? Who knows? 50? He could be 70, could be 30. See, that's what you do with the slant all the time. It's always <laughs> there. there. <laughs> all right, so this guy obviously captivated the internet. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, epitome of Yinzer at E Yinzer is the Twitter account. And a lot of people immediately asked us, do you know who this guy is? And I think a lot of people are potentially saying that in jest. We do. <laughs> yeah. That guy's from Plum. Yeah, we, we, we have seen those videos before they went on the internet. He is a beauty. I went to one of his shows. He forced me into doing, he's wearing football pants. <laughs> I think Marco he had actual knee pads. Does he have a fake <laughs> face on? Yeah, he has a fake face on. That is not Chris oh, Angel. Man. That or he's been eating McDonald's with Mark Davis for the last five years. I just want everybody know straight to his face. I just want oh, everybody God. know this is NFL related. Okay, uh -huh. yeah. we have yeah, to talk have to about this. Yes. We have to cover it. Why is his penis a different color? He's wearing oh, football pants. Oh, oh, Tony. That's a. Tim Raj had to walk in there and do a full. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, curtsy. Hey, I'm, we're coming. We're bringing a, a big sports stooge thing over here. Is that okay? Yep, deal. Perfect. Let's get some tea. Let's get the fuck out of here. How do you think that went between Raj and the Queen? You think she liked them? Yeah. yeah. I bet she liked them. She probably knows a lot. Like, what if she's sitting there and then all of a sudden she's like, so what about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? That was a spot on accent. <laughs> Is that one out of the park? Like, what if she's dude? really dialed in to the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show. Oh, wow. <laughs> Foxy right. with these transitions. Unbelievable. They look like paper oh, falling. Whoa, oh, that whoa. was sick. Today's show is presented by whoa. Arby's. If you missed it last week, this. the latest and greatest addition to the Arby's menu is the Arby's Boneless Wings. Oh, yeah. So good. They Delicious. delivered 2,000 of them here. Yeah, so good. They were incredible. Legit. Top five wings I've had a while. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, granted, we understand that Boneless Wings are just chicken nuggets that are coated with uh, wing sauce. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do not classify us as those who are pitching that these are actual wings, although they are described as boneless wings in the bucket of what they are, which is boneless wings. Correct. Yeah. These particular boneless wings, if all of them are like the ones that got sent to this office, fucking best boneless wings go. Oh yeah, I can Chef's eat them 365. Uh, we love them in the office and it might be the best boneless wings going period. We're talking about six pieces of not fake, not fake. No, no, no. no. Six pieces of all white meat, chicken, and crispy seasoned breading tossed in either classic buffalo or hot honey sauce. Served with their new crinkle cut French fries, which might be even better than their curly fries. Listen, that sounds bananas because the curly fries are so good. These crinkle fries with the same cheese sauce. Woo! Come on now. Delicious. All that is just five bucks. Five dollars for everything bucks? we just talked wow. about. Yeah. Get out and try yours today. Shout out to Arby's. Welcome Shout back out. to the show. Got about a minute and a half before hour two wraps up on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. AJ, we're about we're about nine minutes away from talking to Aaron Rodgers, man. Are you getting ready for this? Are you excited? Have you read enough books? Do you know what you're talking about? Are you gonna put his feet to the fire? What are we gonna do? Well, what is, what is there to talk about now? That we he already had his whole, you know, 46 minutes the other day. What are we gonna ask about? Tell me about the fallout to what you said for 46 <laughs> minutes on Friday. 
I think I, I can't. The pause, your dramatic pause. Well, I've been watching other interviewers that are much more serious, and I think it is all in the delivery. The way I say things, I think, potentially takes any credibility out of my voice. So what I've learned from the books that I read last night, yep. from the bar exam that I took, is yes, delivery matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Rogers, which is how I introduced him last time. Uh -huh. To my credit, might have been delivered a little bit. Will you please elaborate on the response that you gave to the entire world burying you on Friday for 46 minutes and the reaction that has followed, uh, had followed? I will let you answer your question or answer the question. I think that's how I got to do it. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, what would fucking Cronkite do? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Walter still? I believe he's dead. No. Yeah. Unfortunately, I believe he's dead. Damn it. Take a moment. Thank you, Walter. We're back in hour three with Aaron Rodgers. We'll see you then. We regret to inform you that in the real world, the one that we're living in right now, this is an actual news clip about what's potentially going on amongst the fans in Kansas City. As the Chiefs seem to refine their identity, it seems like the fans are crumbling into pieces. This is, once again, an actual news piece on Fox 4 in Kansas City. Well, if you spend any time around here on game day, you're likely to be aware of at least one of these men. The man known as the X Factor has been around for decades. He's the one seen in the video getting knocked down by another man who the people of Section 129 may know as Red Extreme. There's X Factor. Here it is. This Jeez. about six years ago, meeting and whooping it up with young Chiefs fans. And this is X Factor today. Oh no. What? Only recognizable oh, by no. his foam hat. What? The Bronco colors from the hospital. They kicked me out of Arrowhead. First time ever X Factor's been kicked out. Third person. We don't have permission to show the video of the X Factor falling after an apparent punch, but it has nearly a million views on Twitter. The X Factor explains what happened from his perspective and who is involved. He's my old apprentice. I actually <laughs> made him famous. <laughs> Uh, you know, gave him the name Red Extreme. I saw him come run up the stairs at me, and he was had that look, I'm going to kill you. And so I, like, tried to grab his jersey to stop him Smart. and talk to him. And he, like the movie Friday, he deboed me one punch, <laughs> and I saw stars. They took me to triage at Arrowhead, checked me out. I felt all right at the time, but then... I didn't know I'd broke my ribs. Oh, Red Extreme oh, posted no. a 17-minute like uh, video yeah. message to his Facebook page following the incident. He says, a cup of water was thrown and hit my wife in the back and splashed onto me. Oh, Can't do that. He continues, That's I have never in my life felt so bad about feeling so good because knocking that low-life son of a expletive out was the greatest feeling I've had in a long time. This is actual my problem news. is it happened inside the stadium. And I never imagined in my life I would behave in that manner in the stadium. He also accuses the X Factor of being inebriated. It says that I'm a meth addict, what? which I, I'm a cocaine addict and alcoholic. <laughs> okay. I've been clean for four years. Okay. He much said different. I threw a water Congrats, bottle at him, which much I did. And I flipped my car a yeah. week ago Tuesday. So it's been a wild week. What? Jeez, wait. No. Maybe it's this makes me stronger. Jesus, you know, Jesus was persecuted. Of course. I'll come back fighting. He is looking to press charges at this point, but throughout <laughs> the day, we did try to connect directly with Red Extreme, but were turned down. However, immediately before our broadcast, we spoke by phone, and he stressed that anything that the X Factor says should be taken with a big dose of skepticism, no. and that okay. he himself actually <laughs> stepped away from the super fan community because no. of his distrust and distaste of X Factor's behavior. Oh, so, wow. All right, Jacob Kittles. Thank you, Jacob oh, Kittles. Thank, Thank you, Jacob. You, Jacob. <laughs> Let me get the, the Kornacki map out. <laughs> mm. Don't you worry about that, though, because the people, I mean, here, even, we can even do this. This particular shade here, 
A lot of this one right here on this side. Let's go and separate. Boop, let's move it over here. They're coming out. That son of a bitch. <laughs> right? Selfish prick asshole. And then this side here. Okay, and not all, not all, but either side, not here. They're on the other side. This guy, he's a hero! <laughs> this guy's our hero! This is the MVP of the NFL, telling the NFL, ah, fuck you, and telling society and everybody, I ain't doing it because I have an allergy to two out of the three, the third I'm not comfortable with, I just hold, hey, this guy's our guy! This guy's our guy, but it's more complicated than that because there are some in both sides that are also against what the most other party is. So then you got this, you got conflicting wars <laughs> going on. Okay? That's what you have. You have some people that are on the left side. Well, so do I do the TV or mine? I don't know. I don't think it matters oh, in yeah. this case. All right, you do the uh, you do the left side and you think to yourself, oh, it's left versus right. But then if you're a human in our society and you actually pay attention at all or have friends all across the spectrum. That is not the case. This is a torn, split thing, and Aaron Rodgers was the guy here that everybody came out to, and I'm so thankful he came on and talked, but I don't know if it's going to change anybody. Yeah, yeah. This uh -uh. is still going down, and he's right here. He is right fucking here, and both of them. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pai, pai, pai. We're back. With every answer he gave, it was like that, I guess, on the internet as I was scrolling through the last eight minutes. AJ. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Ladies and gentlemen, hour three of that show on this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 9th, 2021 begins right now. Yeah. That beat drop always comes on time, always sounds so beautiful. And on this particular day, that beat drop indicates that a conversation is about to take place with a man who is the current reigning, defending, undisputed MVP of the National Football League. A man who has come on this show for two years now, every single Tuesday, and chit-chatted about everything happening in his life and in football. The first year of doing Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays, he went on to win the MVP and they lose in the NFC Championship game. This year's Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays were supposed to lead to a back-to-back -back MVP candidacy and also a Super Bowl run. Let's have the time of our lives while chatting with a guy who is known as the best ball thrower to ever play football. Hell yeah. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday became Aaron Rodgers Friday last week because the world was a buzz on the state of his vaccin vaccination status and COVID in general. Here we are four days later from that conversation, a lot of reaction, a lot of words said about it. Joining us, hopefully feeling good, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! Hey, man. Hey, man, how you doing? How are you? You okay? You sound good. You look good. Everything good? I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better. How was it? How was the entire run? Do you feel like uh, in the house, the boredom, the loneliness, the potential reading of the reaction of Friday is, is, is the part you're dealing with now? Or how's the body? You think any lasting terms or lasting effects you feel as of right now? Well, I, I hope not. I, I'm feeling really good. Uh, you know, I'm definitely fortunate to uh, have the type of care that I've been, uh, uh, I've been able to have is, I know it's, uh, special and, and it's helped me get through this, uh, better. 
um, also know that it hasn't been like that for everybody. I know this isn't, uh, you know, a difficult time for so many people um, dealing with COVID. And it's been a tough two years for uh, a lot of people. Um, this uh, has definitely been a time of a lot of reflection. You know, I've had time to think about a lot of things in my in my silence here, in my quarantine inside. Of, you know, obviously in Green Bay, not in uh, L.A. as was reported. <laughs> I have been at my house for my quarantine. But um, look, jokes aside, I understand that people are suffering, and this has been a really difficult time uh, for the last uh, two years on so many people. Um, I think we all know uh, individuals who've lost their lives personally, uh, people who've lost their businesses, uh, their livelihoods, their way of life has been altered completely. And I empathize with those things. And I also know how sports can be such a, uh, a connector and bring people together in times of adversity. And I do realize that I am a role model to a lot of people. And so I just want to start off the show by acknowledging that, you know, I made some comments that, that people might have uh, felt were misleading. And, uh, you know, to anybody who felt misled by those comments, I take full responsibility for those comments. And I'm excited about feeling better. I'm excited about moving forward and hopefully getting back with my team and getting back to doing what I do best, and that's playing ball. It's been tough to be away from it. Um, I've been, you know, obviously dealing with uh, the COVID, and I feel like I'm, uh, I'm on, the, on the other side of it, thankfully, and thankful uh, to still be able to uh, have something to look forward to this weekend, hopefully. Well, I appreciate you opening with that and stating that. And you talked about the reflection that you've had here all by yourself in your COVID cave over there in Green Bay, not in L.A. Um, that was wild. That's your life, though, I guess. Game of Thrones, that guy turns the corner. Oh, is that Aaron Rodgers? No, that guy's not an athlete. He's terrible. That guy's <laughs> life gets ruined. This guy's getting coffee in L.A. His entire life is getting ruined. Oh, that guy's got tiny little feet, got no hair on his hands, and he's getting into a shitty car. Let's have a little bit of res This guy thought he was doing the right thing. Is getting buried publicly by everybody, but that's life as Aaron Rodgers. And I, we all know from listening and chatting with you that you're very much a reflective person. You spent all offseason, I think, uh, doing a lot of self reflection, a lot of finding yourself, a lot of figuring yourself out. And you've done that in the offseason. I think that is something that is about you that everybody who knows you understands about that. The last four days or whatever, since you came on on Friday, where you spoke for 46 minutes or whatever about your feelings and why you chose to do what you do, the reaction afterwards, is that why you chose to lead off with that? Did you feel as if people thought you were maybe tone deaf to the entire situation of uh, COVID? Is the response from Friday what you expected, what you didn't expect? And uh, at this point on a Tuesday, are you excited that football is potentially the conversation going forward? I'm definitely excited that football is in, in the conversation. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, just going to gloss over the last few days. I also, and, and people that know me know this is true, I'm not spending time reading things that are out there. I know that there's a lot of stuff out there. I know there's been a lot of comments said. Um, I, I understand that th this... Uh, issue in general is very charging to a lot of people because we're talking about public health and I totally respect that. Um, I made a decision that was in the best interest based on consulting with my doctors and I understand that, that not everybody's going to understand uh, that necessarily but I respect everybody's opinion. Uh, go ahead, you got a question? Yeah, the doctors that you consulted with. Dr. Joe Rogan and which other doctors? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, uh, I have a lot I have a lot of admiration for, for Joe. I, I definitely talked with about uh, a dozen friends of mine who dealt with COVID, and they all were very helpful in different ways, Joe being one of them. Uh, but, uh, but again, that's, that's a society we're in. Again, I have no judgment. This is, you know, hate is not going to uh, bring us out of this uh, pandemic. It's going to be connecting and, and, and love. And, I'm not going to hate on anybody that uh, has said said things about me. Um, I, you know, I believe everybody is entitled to their opinion, um, and I always will believe that. I think that it's a time to move forward for me and, and talk about football. I'm thankful again to be on the other side of this and to be healthy and coming out of this because not many people. There, there's been a, a number of people who haven't been able to. 
to overcome COVID. So uh, I empathize with anybody in those situations. I've tried to help out in ways, um, you know, where where it made sense, uh, not just in Green Bay, but in Northern California. And, and you know, it's been a tough time on a lot of people and, and been uh, a good time for reflection for me personally. Have you talked to anybody since you came on Friday and, and made all your comments and and tried to clarify things a little bit. Have you talked to people since then, like on both sides? Are people trying to reach out to you and try to educate you? Or like, have you had to, have you jumped on a call with anybody to, to clarify anything at least or try to explain yourself even more? No, you know, I stand by what I said uh, uh, and the reasons why I made the decision. Um, but but not really. I've, I've been actually doing a lot of reading. <laughs> You're surprised to hear that. But I've been doing a lot of reading and uh watched some ball on Saturday and obviously on Sunday watched, uh, you know, watched our guys. So, um, I've been, you know, really, uh, insulated, uh, to a lot of things and, and, and on my own choosing to just, uh, you know, go inward and, and be reflective and meditative and, and read. And then also, you know, I love football. So Saturday and Sunday, I watched some ball. Okay. So last question about this whole thing before we move on to, how it was for you to watch the Packers play against that Chiefs team and what you look forward to going this week and everything like that. Um, whenever you say you have been, what was inundated? Is that what you, was that the word you used? Draconian last week. Now, I, I think Insulated? Insulate, whatever the case is. You've been in your own little world here, obviously. When you see reports come out that say you're upset about the reaction and then that garners, and you might not even know this, now there's an entire news cycle happening about you being upset about the reaction to what you said on Saturday because people had an anonymous source that told them uh, how you felt about this. You, do you just, is this why you said like you just try to stay out of everything because there's just so much shit that comes out about you and everything you do? Anonymous sources now with how you reacted to the reaction of your reaction to the COVID situation is now starting an entire news cycle and a judgment on you as a human. Do, do you just try to stay out of that or do you want to maybe try to address those things? What, like, how do you handle that, you think? I don't really feel like there's a need to address that, Pat. I mean, uh, I've talked to a small number of people um, you know, people in my inner circle who wouldn't go on the record to be an anonymous source. Um, look, it's been a reflective time for me. I've, I've had some great conversations with people, um, you know, people who are vaccinated people and people who are not vaccinated people for various reasons. You know, I don't, I respect everybody's opinion and I don't, I don't only talk to yes people or people who you know, allow me to, you know, to live in an echo chamber of my own uh, thoughts and beliefs. I, that's, I, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong student. I love learning and, and acquiring information and talking to people with different point of views than I have so that I can understand situations and, and, and their feelings better. That's how you grow. That's how you learn. That's how you become either stronger in the points you believe in or how you adjust your your own uh, belief system? It's only through question and 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 study and conversation. So, um, so again, there's there's obviously going to be stories, but I, I'm not going to chase these stories down. I'm just going to get back to doing what I do best, and that's playing ball. Okay, so it sounds like with the way you're talking about getting back into football and the excitement of getting back out there and doing your thing and watching the games all weekend. In one of your quotes, you said on Friday, the right's going to champion me, the left's going to cancel me, but I don't give a shit about either of them. Politics is a sham. In a roundabout, I don't know if that was your exact quote, but it was a roundabout. That has happened, by the way, and I don't have the ability to read or meditate, so I have been in the streets of the Twitter mentions of you for a while because obviously I'm getting tagged in a lot of them. That has happened, and it sounds like you have zero desire to continue to be a poster boy for anything like this. Is, is that an accurate assessment on the entire situation? That is, Pat. I'm a... I'm an athlete. I'm not an activist. So I'm going to get back to doing what I do best. And that's, and that's playing ball. Like I shared my opinion. It wasn't one that was, that, that was come to, uh, frivolously. It involved a lot of study and what I felt like was in my best interest for my body. But I'm, you know, further comments, you know, I'm going to keep between myself and my doctors and, um, you know, I don't have any further comments about 
about any of those things after this interview. All right, dope. There's going to be investigations into the protocols and everything like that. The NFL will have its say. It'll continue to go because you're Aaron Rodgers, but we can't wait to watch you fucking sling the pigskin again, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's go, man. There was a, who was the golfer that got COVID and then became a better golfer afterwards? What was his name? Big guy. Big guy. Spanish guy. John Rom. John oh, yeah. Rom. John Rom. He does that. There's been stories of, you know, people getting COVID and coming out on the other side somehow better, whether it's because they are forced into an isolation reflection period and mentally you can adjust some things whenever you're being forced to sit out of what you do. How do you feel mentally going into next week? Did you learn anything from watching the game at home? Is there a new perspective? Just where are you post COVID getting back into football, Aaron? Well, I've watched three games on TV now in my career. I watched a game in 2006 after my foot surgery uh, against the Seahawks. I watched uh, a game against the Saints after I got my show, uh, my collarbone surgery in 17. And this one now is my third one. It's not fun. Uh, it's hard to be away from the team. I'd rather be on the sidelines not playing than watching from home. Um, you definitely it is a different perspective uh, with the camera views and, and some of those things. But, um, look, it's hard to be away from the guys. I missed being there. I'm proud of my guys. I'm proud of the way they battled, um, all the guys. I thought the defense played really well. I'm proud of Jordan, the way he battled. Um, you know, I thought he hung in there and played tough um, and made some really good throws. Uh, obviously, special teams was, uh, was not special in the game. And, and you know, with – couple things uh, cleaned up. You know, that game is uh, looks a little different, I think. So we got to be better in those phases. But, yeah, I don't want to miss any more games. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to watch. Hey, so as far as you know, what is your situation going back? You're allowed to go back to the facility Saturday, and do you have to test negative or not? And have you given any thought to what it's going to be like? Are you nervous? Like it's a weird first day to go back to now. Not nervous. No, I'm excited. I mean, I've heard from so many of the guys. I've uh, kept in touch with them. I mean, every single day I'm hearing from a bunch of guys and, and the coaching staff. So, uh, uh, I mean, the whole organization has been really supportive and, and great through this time. So, uh, I'm excited to get back with them. I was just texting with a teammate actually right before this. Um, you know, it's, it's the hardest part of being away from those guys. But as far as I know, you know, it's 10 days is up uh, and Saturday I can go in the facility. Um, and then I'll be able to uh, to play after that. Okay, so you'll be in Zoom meetings all week. Will you be through the walkthroughs as well? Because there were some coaches. I mean, I, I think you being there is just as important as some of these coaches that allegedly get voice of Godded, iPaded into the walkthroughs and practices. Is that going to happen? Has there been conversation about that? Um, yeah, I'm going to be a part of as many of those conversations as I can. Uh, so I'm sure there'll be Zoom links. Uh, coming shortly to my email um, for uh, for Wednesday. Is there any thought you're not going to play on Sunday at all? No. Uh, I mean, I think there's a possibility, but uh, a small possibility. Was that because of you health-wise, body-wise, or preparation-wise? I just did believe that there's, a, you know, a health hurdle that I have to, you know, as far as, like, uh, movement and sweating and getting into it, making sure that my body is, uh, you know, especially your heart is, is, uh, you know, is fine with the uh, physical exertion. Have you tried any of that yet? Have you, have you gotten your backyard and maybe ran a solo two minute or something? Have you <laughs> tested yourself physically? <laughs> I haven't done that. No. Why are you, lying? you know I what have... you should do? You know, you need to break the huddle too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, you gotta worry about potentially breaking the huddle. Have it a ha, have it a ha, have it a ha, ready. I think you need to do all of that. You know, just like Russell was coming back was doing yeah. before the game. How are you going to, Adjust that. How are you going to mock a practice while you're locked in your house all by yourself? I don't know. I don't know. I'll figure something out, man. What the how fuck? do you know if you're ready physically, though? Yeah, what are you how do you, do? How, you know how, how do you know? Like, that's real. Yeah, how do you get over that hurdle? Well, I'm going to start working out. Um, I've been doing some walking and some uh, yoga, uh, and I'll just amp it up this week and, and do some uh, some higher physical exertion throughout the week. and and conditioning and hopefully uh you know feel feel great on saturday go through the walkthrough and then be ready to roll you said that you did a lot of reading was it was also like do you just start studying for the seahawks last wednesday when this all starts happening so you almost come off a bye week mentally against the seahawks or is that starting like this week normal standard game preparation i mean fairly normal i would say maybe a little bit of jumping ahead but fairly normal other than that 
Can I ask you about Jordan Love's performance and your thoughts on what it could have been like for him or what it had to have been like for him, especially, you know, with his mom and girlfriend sitting in the top of the top row up there, which, by the way, that is something that does happen in the NFL, especially for younger guys, whenever the ticket allotments at away games. I don't know if I've ever seen a starting quarterback's mom on the last row up there, but that is a, an entire gamesmanship that happens sometimes between teams about where the tickets are at. But your thoughts on Jordan's performance, especially with the situation he was thrown into? Tough situation, definitely. Um, I'm really proud of him, uh, the way he went about his business. It is true, like the ticket stuff, they will put you know, home team uh, family in some of the worst uh, you know spots probably in the state in the top row. I mean, I always think about Chicago. Uh, where they put those those you know those seats um, up in the top top uh, you know right cold area where the wind just you know hammers them at that point but um, but I'm proud I'm proud of Jordan I thought he hung in there you know and uh, the only thing I told him during the week was just to trust his feet because he is a very athletic guy and I thought he did a nice job avoiding sacks getting out of the pocket making you know, positive plays out of, uh, you know, potential sacks. And, you know, I might have got sacked <laughs> in certain situations. He was able to lucidly get out of the pocket there and, and have positive gains. Um, you know, there were nerves going for sure. I mean, how could there not be um, in a tough environment to play in? You know, one of the loudest outdoor stadiums in the entire NFL against, you know, the reigning two-time Super Bowl representatives from the AFC. So, um, I'm, I'm proud of the way that he battled a big touchdown to keep us uh, to keep us in it there uh, in the fourth, and then you know obviously just couldn't get the ball back at that point. But um, but I think there's a lot of really good things to build on, and, and I think that should give him confidence moving forward. 24.5 million people watch that game, I think, which yeah. is up over something like that. Everybody's assuming that if you do clear the medical hurdles, that you will have to clear with that on Saturday. Then they'll have to put you through those tests. Uh, I think the, the, I mean, there, there'll be some sort of clearance test to happen on Saturday. Yeah. So I assume the next Packers Seahawks with Russ coming back yeah, with the yeah. pin with you coming back, that number is going to be even larger. And Jordan, knowing all of that, by the way, Jordan has to know all of that. When you're watching that game from home, are you standing up in your uh, shotgun thing? Are you mm -hmm. dissecting what you would do? Are you doing game checks? Are you doing mental reps? Or are you just watching as a fan pulling for Jordan like, ah! Uh -huh. Is that how you watch that game? Uh, I'm mostly laying down watching, but oh, you know, I, obviously, I understand what our offense is and what we're trying to do. So I'm, I'm trying to guess the plays as as we're breaking the huddle based on formation and motion, and, and if there's any you know checks that uh, that Jay was doing at the line of scrimmage. Um, but yeah, you're pull, those are your boys, you know. So I'm pulling for for all those guys, and it's weird because you know on TV there's the angles are so tight, you know, you don't, you know, Jay threw a ball up there and you're just like, who's that going to? And then Cobby comes down with it. And, you know, you know, on a, one of our a big uh, scramble plays that, uh, that kind of got us going there. Um, so yeah. And then, you know, when Alan scores his touchdown, Alan's a good friend of mine. So super pumped for him. But yeah, it was good to see Marquez come back and run around a little bit. And I thought, you know, some of the stuff we did with some of the four receiver packages was, was good, especially not having Bobby. I thought Mercedes played really well. I thought the line did a nice job. Um, and then defensively, man, those guys played outstanding. Just really, really proud of those guys. How about A.J. Dillon seems to be coming into his own? I don't know if that's just, like, more mature experience or the offense he's starting to either grasp it or you guys are starting to take advantage more of what A.J. Dillon is. How do you see him growing, especially with Aaron Jones back there? That is quite a tag team to go into the playoffs with. Well, his catching of the football, I think, has really improved. And every game it seems like he's making a play in the pass game. You know, he's making a catch and making a guy miss. Um, the running is kind of the standard now. He's, you know, he's averaging four plus yards of carry and he's making guys miss and he's bouncing, you know, bouncing off guys, running behind his pads. Uh, it's been great. He's been a great one-two punch for us uh, with uh, with Jonesy, but his, his catching of the football has been uh, really, really solid. I mean, he's he's been making things happen consistently with it, so I'm really proud of him. He's a great kid, though. I mean, he really is. He, he he works his tail off, and he's just a really good teammate, good locker room guy. And, and it's fun to see his role expand and him make the most of those opportunities. Could you imagine being a guy 
that would talk shit on A.J. Dillon yeah. from a hit that you made in high school as a 19-year-old and A.J. was a 13-year-old, and then you would still talk shit to this day about that thing? Would you, could you imagine that, Aaron? Is that Connor or what? Yeah. No, no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was, a, it was a big-time shot in high school, though. I mean, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. won I the mean, game. It was... That one hit one it sent the message that ended up carrying through the game. <laughs> All right, anyways, you still it's a thirty yard gain. Yeah, well <laughs> Yeah, but the message. But, but the, the message, message lasted Hawk. from from the nineteen year old with scratch offs literally in his pads to the thirteen year old that just got dropped yes. off. Yep. Thank you. I mean that is okay. unbelievable yeah. that that actually happened, but you guys have an Oklahoma drill that needs to be settled. Go yeah, ahead, we'll Todd. See. Aaron, fingers crossed you can play Sunday. When you don't get like practice reps during the week, I don't think with like a guy like Devontae it really matters because you guys just pick up and you'll be on the same page. But like with MVS who's been out for a couple weeks now, like does that worry you at all? Or like how long will it take how long does it take to get back into rhythm with some of those guys you haven't played with in a couple weeks? Yeah, I mean it might it might be a little difficult, but we have a lot of bank reps, we have a lot of uh, bank conversations about things. I'm not worried about the continuity between, you know, Randall and myself and Devontae and Allen and, and MVS. We have so many reps that we've had over the years. Like, th there might be, you know, opportunities for, miss, uh, you know, for just being a, t a tad bit off for miscommunication. But, you know, we're going to be talking all week about the, about the plan. And, um, you know, we, then we just got to go out and execute. That's what we're paid to do is, is to be able to perform those moments. And, you know, hopefully we'll be, uh, we'll be lockstep when we get out there on the field. Hey, I hope your heart's good. I hope your body's good. I hope we get a chance to see you perform on Sunday against Russell Wilson, who just had a pin removed from his finger, working harder than any human in the history of injuries to get mm -hmm. back. It should be an absolutely electric affair. And before we get to the book club, I have one final question. And I hate to go back to the last four days. It feels like we have been moving forward here. I hate a lot of people for the way that they acted after that Friday thing. Do you? Is, there's no way you're isolated enough that you don't hear any. You, you had to have heard. There's some massive names, politicians. I mean, your name has been spoke by a lot of people. There, are you just because you're like, a, hey, love will cure this thing. How are you not going to hold a grudge, everybody? And do you know that you're probably never going to win an MVP again? That's probably never going to happen, right? I think that's, that's a legitimate, <laughs> legitimate statement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Legit, though. Like that, there's a lot of people that vote for that that I think are not faint. Like, do you, how do you isolate that? How do you stay away from that? Because you're talking about everybody on earth talking about you. That's not getting you down at all. I don't know. That's incredible mental toughness, if that's the case. Well, you know what? I think first, if you find your identi identity, identity, in yourself and you don't find your identity in the opinions of others mm. uh, you don't need that validation and that love from other people you can get it from yourself and that's not being selfish that's just learning how to uh, in a healthy way love yourself and respect yourself um, and believe in yourself and it definitely was tested you know by some of the comments that I, that I heard and so I'm human I mean you know stuff can can definitely hurt your feelings but uh, Look, I shared an opinion that is polarizing. I get it. And I misled some people about my status, which I take full responsibility of, those comments. But in the end, I have to stay true to who I am and what I'm about. And I stand behind the things that I said. And I you know, have a ton of empathy for people who have been going through the worst part of this pandemic, which has affected all of us in different ways. But so many people, um, you know, like I said, with lives that were lost, lives that were forever changed. Um, and I have a ton of compassion and empathy for those people. Um, and I have tried to help out, you know, as much as I can. Yeah. Um, the, the other stuff is so out of my control. And there's going to be people that don't like you and they don't, don't and, and, and hate you for things you said or might not even understand what you said or know what you said and might just seen a, a headline and that's fine um, i i believe that people are entitled to their opinion and even if it's the opinion that's unfavorable of me but i'm going to continue to try and be the best version of me uh moving forward and i'm excited about uh getting back on the field as soon as possible hey do you Hell know yeah. uh if offense or defense is 
getting introduced this week uh, in your game? And have you thought about it all, like what the reaction may be if offense is introduced and you're the last guy out? Have you thought about that? I think it is offense, and I'm excited. There's nothing like running out of that tunnel last, especially. You think it'll be different one way anyway than your normal, uh, you know, how they normally respond? I'm not, I don't know. I'm, uh, I hope not. Hope they show that on, on, on the network. Oh, that'll, that clip will make its way. Oh, yeah. That clip will make its way around. Can't wait to see you jog out because that means you'd be healthy enough to play, which is what it's all about. And sticking true to yourself, let's stick true to this segment. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to wrap this thing up with, you know, the most intellectually impressive thing this show has ever been a part of. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for week 10 of the Aaron Rodgers Book Club. Graphic, please. First, it was the alchemist. Then, where men win glory. The giver. Basically identical. Be here now. <laughs> All right, let's stop. Did you see this? <laughs> I had to do it. Had to do it. Shout out, Dirty. Good work, yeah, Dirty. Good work, Dirty. This was also a part of that decision-making process earlier about the graphics, AJ. Uh, Aaron, you led off Saturday Night Live, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, no response. Let's get back to the book club. The uh, four agreements. You are the universe. The art of war. The power and now. And the outliers was the last book. Which was so fantastic. Uh -huh. Hey, why are these people so successful with the things that they're doing? Well, maybe because they come from situations in which it is conducive to do the things that they become successful at. Maybe the research should say, oh, this person has not, for instance, the computer nurse. This person was one of 50 people on earth that had access to computers as like a freshman in high school and knew more about uh, computers than anybody else on the earth because of where he was from. He went on to be fucking Bill Gates. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Outlier is a great book. Outlier is a great book about success. I can't wait for week 10. The book for Aaron Rodgers Book Club week 10 is... Rick, I thought it was perfect this week to, to, to put this book up. It's one that I look at every single day. It's called The Daily Stoic. Oh, the daily stuff. Ooh, Ryan Holiday. Yeah. And it's Meditations on Wisdom, Perseverance, and the Art of Living. Uh, it's, you know, it's short little uh, passages uh, associated with each day of the, uh, of the year, actually. And it's just things to think about that can uh, elicit some thought or meditation. But uh, this book was recommended by a friend of mine uh, a while ago, and uh it's fun to, to look at each day for a little bit of wisdom and something maybe to meditate on uh, during the day. So Yeah, it also helps potentially if the whole world's attacking you. You know, open you up the right page there. open up the page Wednesday, Thursday of the Daily Stoic and let's figure it out. We appreciate I thought it was potentially gonna be the five hundred page report. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. Maybe one day we'll get that. I can't wait to read the Daily Stoic. I hope you get healthy. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you feel better. And uh, good luck on those internet streets. I'm not sure it's ever going to slow down out there. Not that you care. No, uh, thanks for all the support uh, and all the people that reached out over the last week. It's uh, really helped me uh, during a difficult time. So thank you guys and can't wait to be back on the field this week. We can't wait to see you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! Open it back up. Is he there? He's gone. I want to call him back. Call him back. This son of a bitch. He's Damn gone. It. Maybe next week. Yeah. Next week's the week. I think we get a song next week. When he yeah. comes back, he jogs out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he jogs. <laughs> Let's get to a break. Got to get to a break. We'll be back on the other side. People are going to be pissed. Uh -huh. Ariel Hawani, right? Is Ariel coming on to back him up again? No, no, but I did get enshrined on his studio wall. Yeah, all that, man. I, Congrats. Well, I'm enshrined, and I think I'm entrenched in a war, potentially, with a double champion of the UFC, which I do not want to be a part of. Mm. Yikes. Hey, Daniel Cormier, I hope you and Ariel make it right, man. You just, you're you awesome. Yeah. Love you, DC. Love you, DC. Don't you listen to what Ariel says. No. No. He's a clown. Although I am, well, I, he is. He is. But I'm on his studio wall, whatever the case. We're back in four minutes. I'm going to go check the internet to see what happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a couple moments in there I thought, you know, there's some shit that could potentially pop off. For all the football talk, the whole time he was talking football, I'm like, nobody's listening to No one cares yeah. about football right now. <laughs> not a single person. Unfortunately. But yeah. I would not be speaking about that after this interview. Mm -hmm. No. 
I couldn't imagine what his life is like right now. People Magazine, he's allegedly, anonymous source says, not happy. Here's him getting coffee in Los Angeles. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Politicians tweeting about it. He doesn't even know, I guess. He's just in there with the Daily Stoic, dude. Awesome. I wish I could do that. That'd hey, be cool. Good point about John Rom too. Who knows? Yeah. Might throw for 500. On John Rom game. came back post-COVID better than John Rom has ever played. Golf. Yeah. One. And he what? was playing pretty damn good yeah. when he got COVID. And what happens if Aaron comes back and lights it up? The MVP feathers are going to be like, hmm. not this year, pal. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in four minutes. This is the Pat McAfee Show. better than you mm -hmm. no 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 no, 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 no. i am i'm a better person than you are no yeah no no yeah. no i fed the birds this morning so i'm a better person than you are yeah but you don't care about uh you know the ozone as much as i do so do you even like to breathe that means you don't even like the birds you don't want the birds to be able to breathe or fly because you want the ozone to be ruined because you're a fucking asshole is that right then how come i rollerblade to the supermarket every saturday and sunday oh did that make you feel good rollerblading flattening the earth a little bit closer to the center so it can get hotter so then the heat comes from the ozone because you're pressing down the earth with your little rollerblades oh well, yeah but i'm okay. a better person than you are no because on wednesdays i'm planting trees and i'm trying to bring the earth back to what it was oh yeah i'm sure you're cutting up other trees roots though what a That's fucking right. asshole well, you no, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. why can't you just let earth be the way it's going. You got to take your shovel and dig into it. Wow. You're, no, I'm, no. I'm a better you're person horrible. than you are. I know. Dude. I make my own manure. I make my own soil. I'm not chopping up any other Oh, roots. so you don't like cows. You don't like cows pooping. Oh, no, yeah. I love cows. Hey, farmers. You, don't you, you hate farmers. Oh, don't like a head of cows. Yeah. Oh, 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 you don't like burgers? Then how come I'm in the Farmers Association of America and I'm going it's to help you? Oh, you're a lifetime member of the FFA. Hey. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's what right. I make. I'm a better person than you are. No, you're not. I'm a better person than you are. Dude, that's politics, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we just did right there. Let's get to the phones. <laughs> Once again, I think we batted a thousand. Boom. Yeah. In politics with what we just did right there. How about that? I do believe after that argument, though, people would say I was a better person than fucking you are, dude. No, 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 because everyone I just read on Twitter was like, oh my God, this guy rolled a blitz. I need to start doing that. Thing. No, that's because you mute all the other people that are actually on my side. They're telling you you're not the right person. No, I refuse to mute anybody because I love everybody. Oh, you like freedom of speech. How come then you're, you're uh, not going to uh, wow. I do love freedom of speech. That's wow. why I'm not muting anybody. I'm better than you, you are. I'm no, better I'm better than you are. are. Everybody saying it. No. Oh, yeah. yeah, everybody say I'm better no. than you are. I heard it. We just did, by the way, still batting a thousand on politics. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. I feel so good about it. We even got into the reaction to the punditry. Yes. yes. We're batting a fucking thousand out there. Mm -hmm. Every side. The people say we're not well rounded. We don't have depth. Did you hear what we just fucking did? Come on. Wow. Let's go to the phones, man. What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, I never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? <laughs> So when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make every single night. I would assume you're pretty fucked up, yeah. When did and, uh, you start you know, self-cheersing? When did you start self-cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting that, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember, and it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, and people always get us confused. I say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. Oh, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show. Oh, good transition. I can't get Unbelievable. enough of that. 
That was like when you cut a sandwich diagonal. Yeah. 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 He's he's like been, in the middle. He's been holding this from us for what, years? We've oh, had this whoa. for two, three years. We've whoa. had these. Foxy oh, added a, a trick to his arsenal. Hell yeah. <laughs> Shot to his bag. Yeah, yeah. New club. Yeah. We are in the midst of 23 straight days of football. Oh, hell Let's yeah. Go. Hold on, that's not the right one. Although we are. Yeah, that we are. leads to this point. SeatGeek has come up clutch for us all season long. Yes, they have. As we get back out there into public. But maybe the best thing they've ever done is make all football tickets 15% off to all users. This is by far the best promo that Ticket Stooge and SeatGeek have ever run. Hell yeah. yeah. No code, just click the link in the description of this video and 15% off will be auto applied to your account. Doesn't matter if you've purchased on SeatGeek before, all football tickets, 15% off at the link in the bio right now. It'll be auto applied. Great gifts to give or tickets. Go experience a game, have a good time, lose your mind, whatever the case. Speaking of lose your mind, seems like the internet is a little bit more docile on an Aaron Rodgers that recognized the situation a little bit more of the grand scheme of COVID in the way he gave the answer. It feels like it's a little bit of a different reaction, although people who hate him are always going to hate him for what he did. I didn't get a chance to, to check what the reaction may be, but I have a feeling it's going to be very similar to last time. Like, I don't think people... No. You think it's changing people's minds? No, I think there maybe people aren't paying as close attention yet. Uh, maybe. I don't know. We got up to like 68 last week. It was like 78 or whatever the case is. It was first time speaking for a Friday. That's absurd because the internet dies on Friday because everybody's kind of looking for the weekend, especially at this particular time. Friday's a fascinating time on the internet. He got on there. That thing obviously took off, exploded. Carried through the weekend because nothing really happened through the weekend football-wise. Mm -hmm. A couple upsets, things that people, everybody, everybody would just kind of forget and move along. And then now he gets a chance to answer it all. I, I do believe that self-reflection is a real thing, though. That's a very real thing. And I told, um, I had a couple friends that had gotten COVID. I think I told Aaron this as well. When I got COVID, the isolation away from everybody is a wild, that's a really wild, for me, that never happens. Like I'm never, ever all by myself. It had, for a long time, I haven't been. So at the beginning, you kind of enjoy, like I kind of enjoyed it. I was like, all right, I'm kind of by myself. I'm not allowed to work right now. I'm not allowed to do anything. I kind of just got to take it. And then about, I don't know. A day and a half into it, I'm like, all right, I'm getting a little antsy here. It's too much of me thinking about me and with me and how, how I'm doing. That could also help you, though. You know, that could change a lot of things. It seems like he is coming out of multiple days of reflection and probably a lot of reaction conversation with friends about how everything rolled out on Friday. Yeah, I don't think it'll be nearly the firestorm it was on Friday, but also to both you guys' points. Like, peop I don't think he was changing anyone anyone's mind who made up a decision about him on Friday today with anything he said. I don't think so either, but hey. Hopefully he plays on Sunday. Yeah, what's that all about? We asked him, like, how are you going to find out? How is he going to – what do you think he's going to do? He's going to have to run in the backyard. He's going to have to. Yeah. Yeah, luckily he has – he's got some decent space in his backyard there where he could probably, you know, open it up a bit. So, he got a basketball court outside. Maybe he's playing some hoops. Oh. oh he lives well. One-on-one. Okay. On one. Well, out there in Green Bay, he's got a nice little One-on-one. On one. Who's he playing against, Connor? Himself, duh. Well, also maybe play ping pong against the other side of the table like your four scum. Oh, yeah. 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 Smart. That'll get the – That'll get the and heart rate up a little bit. Maybe sure, get a huh? tennis machine, a tennis ball machine to shoot balls at. Oh, well, I actually have that for ping pong. I, you could actually do oh, that. Could. Yeah. Does he have a tennis court as well? Yeah. I, there's a basketball court. I imagine you could put a net up. Oh. Well, well, well I, I mean, do. Well, disrespectful to the sport of tennis. Yeah. Jesus. Why would it be disrespectful court? to tennis? Well, is it hard? It's like a sport court. You know what a sport court is? Uh, is it one of those ones that uh, if you fall on it, hurts terribly? No, actually, his is like, re it looks like a tennis court. Oh, so it's a tennis court with a basketball hoop on it. Still, still it's a basketball court, but it's not that like plastic stuff they piece together. Whatever the, like, the plastic one is, what I was talking about. Yeah. Those were terrible. Those were I absolutely. Was, yeah. Oh my god! I remember I went to somebody's house who had a bunch of money. And they had this new sport. Oh, I'll go check this thing out. This thing is awesome. I want a little bit too hard in the paint. I go down. My entire body just gets. <laughs> oh. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm never doing this again. I'm happy they evolved in this whole thing. But that him saying maybe playing. I didn't expect that. No. I didn't expect that at all. And as soon as he, I got to pass some medical hurdles, I was like, oh, how are they going to – because once – how I didn't find I don't out? know. I didn't get a chance to ask him, but I was going to ask, are those hurdles – is that something that he told the team, like, hey, I want to make sure physically I can do it, or is that something the team – do they have, like, a protocol when you're coming back? Ah, oh, the plot thickens. <laughs> the plot thickens. You know what I mean? The plot thickens. I feel like we asked him some real questions, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
follow up stuff. Sure, whatever. Either way, you're not going to make people happy. It doesn't matter. You're right, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. You're right, Chuck. That's a good point. All right, let's move around the NFL. We'll let everybody else react to what happened. Let's, uh, let's talk about some other stuff. OBJ allegedly has come out and said that playing alongside Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers <laughs> is his number one destination. <laughs> Shall he clear waivers per sources? Now, this would be very fascinating if this happens two times where Stephon Gilmore was potentially going to the Packers. Yeah. He ended up going to the Panthers. Then now Odell Beckham Jr., if he clears waivers, will get paid some money from the Cleveland Browns. will be able to double dip, both get paid by the Cleveland Browns and whatever his new team is, maybe be able to create a very team-friendly deal, get him on the other side of Devontae Adams. Big Bob Tunyon's out. You still got the big dog, though. Other wide receivers, Lazard, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, Aaron Rodgers. The defense played uh, great against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, but what are they? Who are they? We don't know. If OBJ goes to your team, you are immediately excited, right? Oh, yeah. Feed me, OBJ. Even though everybody in Cleveland... Everybody in New York, a lot of media people are spinning the narrative, OBJ ain't it, get him out of here. Did you, as soon as that report from Schultz, who's that yeah, from Schultz? Schultz. Yeah, Schultz. This is that report. Schultz report, Jordan Schultz, uh, uh, Schultz breaking the news here on the Schultz report. And Schultz report reports a lot of stuff. The Schultz report doesn't just you know show up and fly by the seat of their pants. The Schultz no, report no. knows what they're talking about. As soon as this came up, Packers fans said, fucking right, let's go. Yeah. If they would have tweeted, if Schultz Report here would have tweeted about seven other teams, all the fans would have been like, fuck yeah, let's go. That's why that whole narrative that is being perpetuated by people about Odell Beckham not being a guy you want on your team is all bullshit. And even the people that practice in that, and I'm not saying Ty ever did, but I'm saying on the internet, people have said, I want him on my team, I don't want him on my team. As soon as a tweet is said that he's potentially coming to your team, you'd be like, hey, he'd make our team better. He, he would fucking make our team better. It's all so fascinating. And he and Aaron, by the way, might be able to come together in that culture, that locker room, and be like, hey, listen, Everybody scrutinizes everything I do as well, pal. We're kind of on the same page. Let's fucking go get this Lombardi. And maybe that'll be everything and all that Odell Beckham Jr. needs, but we have no idea if this is going to happen. Well, uh, what was that? Uh, that report from an AFC GM came out and said, like, people don't view him as number one anymore. Like, that's part of it. Like, he, Devontae Adams is there. So, like, he knows going in. I don't think he's thinking, like, he's, he needs to be the top dog and, and all this kind of stuff. And... Like, I mean, you've talked about Peyton when guys would come in. Like, I don't think Odell's coming into that locker room and, like, becoming a cancer. Like, no disrespect to Baker, but, like, the way that's like a, you know, there are a lot of veterans on that team. I don't think he's coming into the locker room and bringing the whole thing down. That doesn't like, happen with a veteran quarterback like Aaron. Right. When you have a veteran quarterback like Aaron that is so good and so well respected from every player in the league and what he can do on the field. That doesn't happen. Like, guys can't really come in and be a cancer. And guess what? In that receiver room, he has Devontae Adams as well. Great guy, high character dude, positive guy for the team, great leader. So, Swag like, yeah, too. he would fit in great. Hey, Devontae, by the way, is super confident, uber confident, very good. He's a wide receiver that is great, knows that he's great, which is great news for everybody in that room. Odell coming in, buying in, seems to be a pretty easy thing if he was to go to the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Or a couple other teams. A couple other teams. This is like you go to a time. Can they make it work with the cap space? Can they make it work? He would have to do it. I think they got six million bucks or something like that. They cleared it somehow. Well, and what they say, if he does clear waivers and doesn't get picked up, like, a, I mean, they could pick him up for like 575000 yeah, yeah, well, yeah. 800 and some is the vet men. Just right. Half Deshaun, a season, five. Yeah. yeah. Deshaun just got a million for the rest of the season from the Raiders. So. They could do something like that. Yeah, especially because you're getting paid in your... Um, <clears throat> yeah, double dipping. Double dipping, which you can only do one time, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, termination pay. There it is. Did you ever get that? Yeah. You double Very dipped? End. You double dipped? No, I didn't double dip. I was done, so I got termination pay. Man, when people double dipped, I remember thinking, oh, you're so fucking smart, dude. Yeah, like, I, I remember thinking that when people were getting paid from two teams. I was like, ah, oh, good for you. We had a couple of uh, those guys come through our team. And I was always so happy for him. I'm like, you fucking did it, dude. You got two NFL teams paying you. Think about that. That's awesome. It's like I had a teacher, in my like homeroom teacher in high school. He taught in high school for 30 years, got his pension, which was like 88% of his mm-hmm. highest salary. And then he went and got a gig at another school district. So he really doubled it. Well, that's like Vinatieri. Vinatieri was kicking long enough. He could have started collecting his uh, pension. You know what I mean? He could have been double dipping from his previous contracts right now with his current contract, which is more than anything. Mm -hmm. Then he retired. You know, he didn't get a chance to do that. Retired on this show, by the way. This show stinks, dude. Yeah. Yeah. 
This show's the fucking worst. Fournette double dip last year and won a Super Bowl. I'll Love that. It. I got out of Jacksonville, wins a Super Bowl, <laughs> yeah. gets paid by Jacksonville and by Tampa Bay. And Fournette, by the way, Antonio Brown, you mm-hmm. go down the list, Tom Brady's there. As soon as you go in, hey, this guy has won before. This guy is a standard. I will do whatever he says because my actual mission right now is to just win a Super Bowl. This is just like when coaches go to a new place and they try to institute a whole new culture. And that can happen. That can work. You can do that. But if if you don't win or have success, that shit's going to be tough to sell to grown men whenever you continue to fail and you try to set the culture. It's like when you go into a coach or go into the Patriots, hey, this has worked. They have won here. I'm going to buy in and do whatever the fuck they say. Whenever you go to a place that has an established quarterback that is your guy, it's the same type of thing. This guy is great. He has won before. I'm going to buy in. I'm going to go. And I think that's what Odell Beckham Jr.'s people were alluding to. Like, hey, at this point, at the state that Odell is, he would like to and we would also like for him to go to a place with a peer as a quarterback as opposed to maybe a new place that he has to go to. That's a good point. Are, has Shefty or Rappaport or even uh, Josina, are any of them reporting on Odell at all right now? So the thing about Schultze, reporty, Schultze, George mm-hmm. Schultz, yep. Ian dunked on him last week. Yeah, he did. Ian dunked on him last week when Schultz right. made a report. You remember Ian go, ah, I haven't heard ah. that. No. That's what he said. So maybe Schultz is here in the batter's box. And he just hit a bomb before all the big networks. Or maybe this is potentially something that's floating around out there. And you got to get two confirmed sources. Uh Uh-huh. That's right. Solid morning show. You got to need two sources. Solid hack, though. I mean, or it could easily be. Big time hack. Big time hack. Home run hack. Odell Beckham. Yeah. Packers. Rodgers. COVID. Come on. Vaccine. I mean, that that is. Perfect recipe. Playing Russell Wilson on Sunday. Russ is going to be pissed, man. How bad is Russ, though? Like, Russ, this is Russ's comeback game. We well, saw and when also, he came through. Seattle was allegedly interested uh-huh. as well. Yeah. Carroll, yeah. So that that that's a big time uh, hack. Oh, Schultz. Hey, Schultz, he takes a big time swing there. No one's gonna Man. go after him though, and be like, "Well, that's not a place that OBJ would want to go." Like that, that lines up. Like it all checks out. Odell might see that though and be like, "Oh shit, maybe I do want to go to Green Bay." Well, <laughs> like if he did this with Jacksonville, that'd be smart. a smart story. Yes, it does all add up. But also on a side note, like. I guess Odell going to Cleveland, not to Cleveland. Hey, listen, I love Cleveland. Hey, that great Jack's Casino downtown. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. All right, sure. it's right there on the lake. It's yeah. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Downtown. It's windy. Trash it's windy. in the streets. Well, there was some trash, in, but right. that's every city. Yeah, sure. I mean, License yeah. plates, rats. On fire. Yeah. Cleveland, uh, that has happened to a lot of rivers, okay? But the Cleveland, uh, beautiful city. Beautiful Bombs. city. Grew up in Pittsburgh Stinky being told, li- literally, yep, right there. Grew up in Pittsburgh being told that statement my entire life by every human I talked to, not just my parents talking about Cleveland, every human I encountered from Pittsburgh talking about the city of Cleveland because the Brown Steelers rivalry used to be real before the Browns left Cleveland. It was like a big deal. Literally, Cleveland painted as the worst city to ever exist. And I think in Cleveland, they do the same thing to Pittsburgh, okay? Yeah, I have a lot of respect. Then I go to Cleveland. I'm like, oh, this place, this place is awesome. It's so a fucking pretty nice city, actually. This is not bad at all. I was mind blown. I remember, I think I either FaceTimed somebody from Pittsburgh and I was like, look at this. Look at this city. Like, it's an actual city. This place is pretty nice. But in comparison to, and I would say it's about Indianapolis, Pittsburgh, comparison to, you know, like Tampa Bay, L.A., where he hangs out in the offseason, all these other teams where it feels like all these veteran players are trying to get to because it's not only a vacation city, it's retirement city, and the team's built, ready to go. Green Bay is not one of those, but neither was Cleveland, and OBJ had no problem being in Cleveland for however his time is. So maybe Green Bay with Aaron, OBJ's thinking it would be an awesome place, but we'll have no idea until at least 4 o'clock. Well, and I don't think there's any XP. Like, he knows, like, okay, I mean, I'm— I'm, they're probably not going to re-sign me after this year. So, like, and there's not a whole lot to do in Green Bay outside. If you're a football player, outside of paying attention and trying to win. So, I mean, nah, the Oneida Casino. Well, yeah, That's but true. You know. hey, the Oneida Casino hands out winners, by the way. Mm-hmm. I haven't been to a lot of casinos where it looks like everybody's smiling on the way out. The Oneida Casino is one of those. They do it right. Most casinos you walk into, you're in a good mood. Everybody coming out miserable. You go to Pittsburgh, you go down to Rivers, everybody walking out of there, not because it's Pittsburgh, which is naturally a, uh, a fuck-off city, but because Rivers will take every dollar you have. Yep. Yes. That casino outside of Green Bay, I walked in, everybody was smiling on the way out, and I know why, because I walked out there a couple hours later with the same face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
So he'll help you go check that place out. Yeah, mm-hmm. he could. It's plenty to do. But like, this does make perfect sense. I mean, if they can get him for, you know, 575000 why wouldn't you? Well, I think that's how everybody's thinking. And it's not just 575000 by the way. It's primetime games. Right. It's a playoff run. Right. It's a potential up in, uh, hey, I still got it because you got a quarterback that can literally paint your back shoulder with a ball if he has to. Not that Baker can't. Baker has the ability to make those throws. But I think the thing about Aaron is uh, the sustained ability. He's been to, doing it for 17 years, I feel like. Yeah, just putting the football wherever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Which yeah. is a wide receiver's best friend. And I think that is why the Devontae Adams situation happened with Green Bay, where there was no extension agreed to because Aaron Rodgers' future was up in jeopardy. Because I think Devontae has a pretty similar mindset as Odell has right now as, hey, if I get Aaron as my quarterback, things are going to happen that are going to be good. Yeah. And I think all Packers fans agree with that, especially with Odell Beckham Jr. What if he comes and just crushes, dude? I think if he does go to Green Bay, he will have a hell of a second half of this season. I think so, too. And Aaron post-COVID now got another weapon named OBJ. <laughs> what, dude? I hope he can play this week and hope his heart's okay. I have no idea how that tests that. Uh, this show's wrapping up here. AJ, what do you think about today's Aaron Rodgers Tuesday as a whole? I thought overall it was good. We, we talked what's going on and football. Hell yeah. Look at us. Nice job. Look at us. Boys, thanks for your effort today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hammer Don, live at youtube.com forward slash Hammer Don will happen today, 15 minutes after this show ends. Have a good one. We'll see you, Mignogna. Oh, transition. Transition into this. I didn't even see the transition. It's like a good power play. Swipe up. Little car sounds. Cool. Let's hit some phone calls and then we'll get out of here. I can't thank Inns enough for watching. Big thanks to Aaron for joining us. People thought he wasn't going to come on. What? Mm, come on. on. Come on. I, know, I saw all, I mean, the amount of opinions that I've seen you about can't him. can't say he wasn't at home. They said that last year, too, after uh, that Vikings game. Oh, after it? a no. loss. Yeah, yeah. 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 Could come on. And Buccaneers. off the uh, NFC Championship as well. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think the narrative about Aaron that was painted for a long time about him being this self-righteous prick is one that people can't get over, I think, because I feel like him being open with it, literally like 45 minutes every single Tuesday in the middle of an MVP season, that's a lot of time just to spend. And I don't think we caught him in any moments ever, you know, where he wasn't just like pretty, he might be a little bit of a hippie, all right? Let's, (laughs) there might be a little bit of a, hey, okay, how's it going? But that narrative is tough for a lot of people, I think, to get over. Even when he's playing on Thursdays, too. Like when they're really in the middle of a game week, he still comes on. I just that's just yeah. one of those things that people yeah, like, won't come off. Yeah, of. we're very thankful for. Yes. I mean this weekend's mentions that were It's hot. It was hot. Yeah. Score. Is it a, is it a four twenty five game? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I believe uh Nance and Romo have the call. Oh, oh no. Geez. Close all the bars in Green really? Bay. Really? Well, I just assume they're CB. No, they're usually AFC, aren't they? It's a yeah. CBS game. There's, oh, there was yeah, like a, it's absolutely them. For some reason, <laughs> this year, some <laughs> CBS, some Fox have switched conference just for like big games. Ah. What are stinking and mean doing? Huh? Probably doing the fucking New York Football Giants like they do every week. Those There's guys not get enough stiffed. beer in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. No, there is. I've been there. AJ's been yeah. there a lot more. There's yeah. like a. There's like a uh, take a lot of pride in that. It's dangerous. Was it Home Depot or Lowe's Ace Hardware? Ace what? Hardware. Oh, There's great. an Ace Hardware parking lot that you have to turn to get to the stadium, and that place is upside down before the sun even comes up on Packers days. Uh-oh. I, I don't know. They, they don't have a lot of people out there in Green Bay that are popular. They got enough beer to hold old, old Corona tone. Yeah. If you wait till he comes through with the beer bong and he's got cheese heads being tossed around he's funneling beers you just wait listen corona town can open a gullet to a lot of booze oh, yeah. i understand that okay we've all experienced it i think now on the internet that have seen that yeah. but green bay has been prepared for four winners with booze <laughs> they are ready for winter to come they the north <laughs> has been breathing in booze in green bay for a long time if my two stops <laughs> there are an accurate indication is that an accurate is that uh, that is very accurate. Yes, they're very, uh, and they like to share. Like when my parents would be there, they would bring them, I forget what they call it. You know, they soak cherries in vodka mm-hmm. for four days and then give it to them. You can eat it. Like my, my parents okay. would always have stuff like that in mason jars. Yeah, nicest people on the planet. And as the winter comes, they like to ice fish up there. And all that means is 
drill a hole in the ice, set a tent up, and drink 48 beers in six hours. Hi. Wow. Hi. And that's, that's what they do. So I do believe out of all the places that Corona Tone might be scared that there isn't enough booze for him, uh, I, don't I don't think Green Bay, Wisconsin is a place, although the population is not a large one. You think he's already said that in the ants? Uh, Green Bay, Jim? I'm going to get so fucked up, Jim. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jim, I'm going to get so fucked up. <laughs> How long have you been working on that? I mean, he's just very nasally and gra gravelly. A couple weeks now. A couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching some film. How'd that go again? No, no, we heard it. We all heard it's it. It's pretty uh -huh. easy because he does a thousand times. He had you, wow, Jim, I don't, well, I don't know, Jim. <laughs> I thought it used to be a lot more high-pitched. <laughs> well, he's, he'll slip into that, but... The other three and a half hours is, oh, Jim, I, well, I, 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 I don't know, Jim, you know. <laughs> a lot of that. Tony doesn't deserve this. He's making 17 M's, so he can figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, there's okay. there's going to be 20 some million people watching him on Sunday. I'm sure he won't say anything that people go, what, dude? But I do that every day, so I guess. Yeah. Much different fashions. Yeah, that should be clear. The criticism for Tony comes out of pure jealousy because I do wish I could drink 17 beers and then step into the booth and call it. <laughs> call 20 plus million viewer game. Yeah. Yep. Good for him, man. Man. Yeah. The tide did turn on Tony, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Quick. Like, has it really, though? Like, for. Yes. I think the internet. Okay. I don't know about real life. I right? think a lot of people still really enjoy watching him. I don't mind. Hey, listen, I don't mind. There's just some moments that pop up, and it's like, well, how did we get here? How how did we get here? But he's. He's tiny around, man. Yeah, sure. Give a shit. The guy's the best life ever. He gets boozed up, calls games on Sundays, plays yeah. golf the next five days, and then does it again. And he's it's getting paid life. a king's ransom to I, do it. I, I do love when he shows up with the golf hat tan. Oh, yeah. They didn't have enough makeup in the city to cover up that he just got off a course this morning. I guess when you're... Sounds like he figured it out, huh? He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah he did. Could be jaundice. I feel bad for his kids, but <laughs> I don't know what that is. When that his skin little kid. turns, turns yellow from no, being that a booze is, bag. That isn't the case. That isn't the case. Let's go to. Uh, you know those old. Uh, you have any like old like great grandpas or people from that were like in World War II and their nose has all their blood vessels broken because yeah. they've been drinking oh, for yeah. sixty years. Yeah, I've run into a lot of Why does it do that? Why does booze do that? Can't wait. I don't know. Purple I, nose. Comfy nose all it's all purple nose. Yeah. You get cold at right. the ship. Oh, yeah, there's no. a purple nose is popping up. Oh, no. <laughs> and then, and He's then got you, an entire then, list for this, too. And then if you screw something up, they call you a wet brain. Oh, of course. Old purple nose wet brain. Yeah. Can't have <laughs> that back to back to Paul. <laughs> Listen, he's, hey, he's got a purple nose list, too. That we yeah. can get in. Gumpy's mm -hmm. got one of those as well. Gumpy, Gumpy can you send me a link, please? <laughs> He has an Excel spreadsheet with all of his lists. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just made the list. People getting added and subtracted. Congrats to Jet getting out of the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, right right Jet. What a fly out. Jet passing can get his ass right back in the hot seat, though. Yeah. Easy. He was a, he was a strong foe. He, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he put me in a body bag a couple times. I ain't going to lie. For I ain't going to lie. Man. I'm getting good battle. It's a good here. battle we're seeing. He, he didn't say wet brain. No. 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 But he no. thought it. Yeah. <laughs> he thought it. Let's get out of the fence. Hey, who was the guy that passed out at his kids' game? Tom Pelissero. Is he, is he all right? Like, have we checked on him? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. He's tweeting. Yeah. Pass out. He pulled his back, dude. Pulled his back Threw out. Threw his back out, bending I mean, over. He had, okay, he is had that who you were talking issue. about? Let's go, yeah, dude. He had an issue at the game where he fell down. Yeah, yeah blew his back out. Uh, <laughs> 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 all right, let's get to the fence. I thought he was talking about all slot. Let's get to the fence. Oh, oh, well. Don't. There's no reason for that. Pelissera, though, uh, he was actually getting a Kleenex for his daughter's nose. He yeah. was running. Uh -huh. in, nose. in doing so, he... And then Don goes the arrow. Oh, my God! That's rough. Let's go to the fence. Not as rough as that sweater photo. Oh, come on. What? Come on. It was, it was, a, holiday. Holiday. It was, it was a Christmas, holiday. dude. It was, yeah. it was on Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, and Jimmy Fallon what? cooked them. No, yeah. No, no. Well, that guy. Huh? Pelissero was on Jimmy Fallon? Kind of. His photo with his wife, yeah. For in there for holiday photos. It was actually a great photo. Great Christmas photo. The um, Jimmy Fallon loves booze. Those shows stink. Jimmy huh? Fallon does loves have a, a lot time. of things. We're not getting into that. I mean, that is an entire another conversation <laughs> to be had. That is also assumed by a lot of people, but we do not know if that's accurate or not. Wow. Hey, did, did, there seems did to be a, a lot of cleanup. Did Lane's trial happen? Did it end all right? So, hey, oh, actually, actually, I mean, something just came out like that. I mean, get line. Get line. 
the, the, the judge isn't sure they can use all the evidence they have against you. Oh, uh, of course. Who knows if that's real, too? We are not the source for that information. Okay, although I legit got... was curious. Like, yeah, why like are you happens, asking us? Why starts, starts, nobody should be asking us. It starts yeah. very soon. Oh, okay, but, so it hasn't started yet? Yeah, but assume there AJ, might be a... Uh, good luck there, everybody. This is literally on the tablet on your fucking... It's a tab on your computer right <laughs> now that really you're staring not. at. There's a list of things, and it's like Alex Jones screaming, Jizz line! Yeah. And then there's it's like, like uh, everything else that you would like to ask about, just staring right in front of you. And I understand that, and I'd like to let everybody know that we are not the authority on any of this particular yeah. information. No. Why don't you head up the cul-de-sac to Waxman's house and ask him, oh, AJ? Yeah. That is true. Yeah. It, is, it does seem like your Can't neighbor... Get to it. That place is fortified. You can't get anywhere near Waxman's house. Are you talking about old Epstein's key. bestie, dude, that yeah. lives in your neighborhood? Is that what you're My talking about? You guys have a close. tunnel connecting your basements oh. together. What are you That'd talking about? Awesome. Is there an That'd earthquake sweet, in Ohio? Like, 50-mile tunnel. Let's go the fence. The El Chapo's guys dig it? Well, listen. Where Chapo got out of that jail so quick. Yeah. yeah. How about him just fucking walking around in his jail cell? Yeah. Ah, da, da. I'm not. Ah, da, da. Ah, da, da. And then somebody like... Peeked their head through the hole, and there was air conditioning behind it with perfect lighting and everything, uh, with two dirt bikes for them, right? Yeah. And goes, uh, we're ready, boss. And he goes, all right, I'm going to get out of here. And he just walks and just literally walks right out of the frame of the uh, of the jail cell camera. God, see you later. On a, on a motorcycle, Hell on a yeah. dirt bike underground. Yeah. That was well lit with air conditioning. On a track, too. It was, it, they like modified it to where the dirt bike top, but they took the wheels off and it's on a track like a train. So he doesn't even have to stir. He just has to literally just hammer that thing. Yeah. Don't talk about how like, like his contractors are so good. So good. And think about how quick that was quick made. Around, yeah. The best engineers there are, probably, it sounds like. So how many of them are there now, you got to think, right? Because isn't there... Uh, Tons. Tons, dude. There has to be so many houses that just have pfft, right oh, into yeah. it. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. incredible. Yeah. New season of Narcos came out. I'm pretty sure it's a little bit about him. Yeah, really? Can I do? Can I do that in my house? Can I just get a bunch of tunnels in my yeah, house? You I'll could. call him. You want to call him? I don't know if El Chapo is going to be able to do. It. Is he? Is he? Is well, Chapo dead? I don't think but so. His no, guys aren't really probably doing, doing anything right now. I don't want to spread any misinformation. We had a moment of silence for Walter Cronkite earlier. Yeah. yeah. I believe Chapo is also on his way to prison again. What? Well, he already. Oh, is. Oh, I think yeah. he's, he's been in prison. Yeah. Dude, they had him. They had him like this. I think. While they walked him, mm -hmm. they're oh, walking yeah. him around, and they're like showing his face to everybody. They're like, oh, yeah. "Hey, hey, hold your head." Th that he yeah. has a better disappearing act than uh, Chris Angel. All right, I don't know if that's the case. I seen Chris Angel disappear in the middle of a theater right in front of me. <laughs> Boom! Does like Chapa do the rubber face act as well? All right. Come on! All right, let's get to the phones. Let's wrap what this thing. What is that? A wax? Stump you know what it is. Shut up. Rubber face? What's a rubber face at? Chris Angel does not deserve this. Yeah, no, he horrible. doesn't. Chris Angel wanted to... Look at his face at the halftime of the Raiders game. It was melting off. Well, yeah. it's hard to look at his face. It's probably because all the blood was rushing to him. His entire body, he was dangling 50 yards in the air yeah. from Allegiant Stadium. Yeah, and with the dry heat in Vegas, give him a fucking break. Yeah, and how about his knee pads and football pants? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the phone. You think he was wearing a cup? For sure. It looked like it. Well, maybe. Uh, we don't know Chris Angel. Yeah. Right, sure. He must be packing heat. How old is he? Well, that's what Diggs is referring to. Which one, the fake one or the real one? Who's the fake one? The one that the one that we saw at the Raiders game. Football no. Chris is the real Chris. Yeah, okay? football pants Chris Angel is Chris Angel. Right. You guys got to remember, he was mind freaking thirty years ago on A and E. That's a rubber face. Yep. Oh, he's morphing his face to look like. Mark Davis's. Hey, his hair is legit, though. Legit, dude. And he, he got out of two straight jackets. Yeah. He doesn't dye that, does he? No. No. All natural. No, it's a wig. People, have, I, hey, by the way, a lot of people, <laughs> shots, I'm a Chris Angel fan. Yeah. Now. Hey, shots. Me, Me too. Thank Thank you, man. Man. Not what you guys said. We all are. No, you're not. No. You clearly aren't. Uh, Gumpy, people are asking if you're dyeing your beard, by the way. That's oh. not happening, right? No. Yeah, I never did that. You can see the uh, watch when I moved the microphone. That's literally. Oh, yeah. I got that gray stripe. I yeah. know it. We all know it. Oh, natural. Yeah. Wait until I get my fake hair, then you can say whatever you want. <laughs> it's tough though. Once you start dyeing it, you got to continue. You got to like commit to it. Yeah, especially with that type of beard because it's just going to move down. Mm -hmm. It gets on your cheeks, like mid's hair. Yeah, I mean, I've done the dye job of the hair. That thing grows out. It's very obvious when you did it, how you did it. You got to get your roots done. Nah, I'm just going to go ahead and let this go. I don't think you can do that with the beard. Mm -mm. But there are people saying that about how good your beard is, that you got to be painting that thing. That's all. That's not true. Yeah, no way. I mean, 
when you got a bald head, you got to have something nice. Well, speak. Let's go back to that because you just alluded to something. Face tattoo. Are you doing the fake uh, or a head tattoo as well? Those are in. I think That'd people doing their entire. Jason thing. Ellis, yeah. Travis Barker. I don't think Jason Ellis is the only one. There's a bunch of people that do. A shout out to Ellis. He had a big time show there for a while. I remember we had some friends that were like die hard in his group there. I didn't fully understand what it was. I didn't know he what it was. Got booted from Sirius. Did he really? Or they didn't like re up him. Yeah, so he's doing his own thing. I don't know enough. I do know that we had some friends that were all in. Gumpy, you just said you're getting the the rug. You're gonna get a. Uh, you're gonna get hair. It's called uh, S and P. It's like you have like a hair. You, you see Doc Rivers. Yeah. You see how good his hairline is. Wait, the paint? No. Did no. the NFL change its protocols? Is that what you're saying, Zito? Like Carlos Boozer? No, it's a tattoo. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Now listen. Cool. Can't yeah. wait to see your hair. Yeah. S and P is awesome. To, back to sports. Okay. No, no, no. This is a big deal. But in my ear, Zito just told me that Tom Pelissero put out a tweet. The NFL is updating its protocols, okay? Tom Pellicero tweets, the NFL today distributed updated COVID protocols to clubs. Perhaps the biggest news, question mark, to address hydration needs on game day, we have amended the protocols to allow clubs to hydrate multiple players using the same water bottle to squirt water in the player's mouths. It's not just shared water bottles that are back, so are shared chalk buckets. Honorary captains return to the, it must be fully vaccinated. NFL also reiterates the Rogers rule. Here we go. Individuals who aren't fully vaccinated must wear a mask at all times indoors. This includes while giving media interviews or participating in media briefings conducted indoors, either at the club facility or at the stadium on game day. So this is not rolling back protocols because of Aaron. Nah, nah, nah. This is, we're going harder because of the Aaron Rodgers situation. Uh, now listen. Bottles can be squirted in multiple mouths, okay? Mm -hmm. right, yeah. The athletic trainers uh, have an already difficult enough job whenever people who are adults refuse to grab a bottle by themselves and squirt water into their own mouths. And in doing so, the athletic trainers have to squirt into people's mouths because they don't want their gloves to get, but you're trying to get your gloves a little bit wet. Mm -hmm. So the more, so whatever the case, it has become a full generation of NFL with water getting squirted into the mouths, but the trainers had to squirt one bottle and then put that thing back down, another bottle for somebody else, same person, by the way, going to all of them, another bottle, another bottle. Now they can just run one dry, yep. toss that some bitch out, another COVID shot for all audience right here. Oh, That's yeah. right. Not only that, now honorary captains can come back. Yeah. You can go oh. on the field, but you must showcase your vaccination and I, might know something about this because old Robert Mathis is going into the Colts Ring of Honor. I was potentially invited in the invite. It says to get on field, you will, because of the NFL, have to provide blah, blah, blah. So that protocol, I don't, I don't know if that's new. I don't know if that has been around because I got that email like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. I don't know if it's just updated or they knew this was potentially coming or whatever the case, but that whole must wear masks indoors, no matter where you are at all times, here we go. Now things are about to start picking up. Zito says there's two more tweets. The updated NFL, NFLPA COVID protocols also now require fully vaccinated players and staff to undergo bi-week re-entry testing anytime the club has three or more days off. Lastly, the protocols for fully vaccinated individuals to test out and return early after a positive test were tweaked. But basics are the same. Asymptomatic for 48 hours, two negative tests, 24 hours apart, return approved by club physician, otherwise back after 10 days. So this would be Nick Chubb's situation is currently mm -hmm. happening here. Yeah. He would have to be asymptomatic for 48 hours and have a negative between both of them. And Nick Chubb is not going to be the last one. This is going to happen a lot as the year continues to go. And now that the mask uh, protocol has been tweaked, and now I think they're doing that because maybe in their research they found out that Aaron actually didn't break any of the protocols. And they're like, well, that can't be. That fucking can't be the case. So they said, hey, bang, we're going to go ahead and tweak the protocols here to get it aligned. Now we got a new world. And allegedly, the NFLPA also had to agree to this. So here we go. Let's keep this thing rolling. I guess COVID will never, ever die. It will always be a conversation. And it seems like the NFL is making sure that is the case. So I, I assume now through the, this, we're going to, if Aaron's talking to the press after the game on Sunday, he's going to be wearing a mask at the podium. Or I know they've said if you, if people are unvaccinated, they would just do all their media through Zoom. If he's in the, let's say he's doing a Zoom from the facility, is he going to be masked in the Zoom in that room tucked away in the back corner of Lambeau? Well, he's indoors, right? On NFL yeah. things. So you would think that he would have to. So if he goes outside, 
Can he do a Zoom call outside from the back of a pickup truck? Oh, yeah. With no mask. Ooh. The same or his one, golf cart. Or yeah. his golf cart. Or this, yeah. Or his golf cart that the draft Bakhtiari got for him as a gift whenever he came back this offseason. Hey, is he back this week? I don't know. I was going to ask. I Actually, in my head, I just said, how did I not ask about fucking Bakhtiari? That is bad journalism. That's on me. Go ahead, Dix. But Aaron, now on a unicorn. Does he get treated as a vaccinated player? No, I think testing wise, yeah, testing wise, he doesn't have to test. I don't think for oh. ninety days. But I think all the other protocols. Well, that's bullshit. Still follow. He has to be treated. Yeah. It's a wild time to be alive. Seems like we're right in the middle of it, which is good news. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're the right people, aren't we, AJ? We're the people we that are. should be. We oh, are yeah. fair and balanced, as you say. What's that lube Stern, bucket they were but talking fair, about? You clown. Huh? What's the lube bucket they were talking about? That's exactly what they mean. That's, that's lifting. For ben. Lifting, I think. The chalk, no, chalk bucket is for the weight room. Oh, I thought I saw lube bucket. Lube, it did say lube. Like, probably in the training room, you know, they have, like, the big jars of balm, like, icy hot, that maybe multiple people can scoop their hand in and use. It's not just shared water bottles that are back. So are shared chalk buckets, oh. balms, lotions, gels. So this is trainers. This is all to make the trainers' lives much easier. Oh. Yeah. Because if the trainers have to use different whatever, you know, because there's... um. I don't know if that was the Roethlisberger rule. All right. The big thing. <laughs> he just buried your own quarterback. You wouldn't expect that, but that's what this show is. It's turned by fair. Script strength is what fun. is that thing that <laughs> um, you get if you're uh, – he does need to maybe get back on it. But what – the um, like ultrasound? Gun? No, no, ultrasound. Oh. Yeah, ultrasound. You're right. People get ultrasound. Ultrasound. Is that, that's for the jelly? pregnancy, but that yeah. gel. Yeah, yeah, yeah that gel that – The then. amount that is used in training rooms is – a, a lot. It is that is used a lot in training rooms a lot of tubes. for rehab and everything like that. But they would have to use individual tubes, I guess, for each individual player because the COVID protocols. I'd assume some athletic trainer said, "Hey, listen, we are trying, okay, but you are requiring that I can't use insert name of player one's tube, even though this guy's tube is out. We this one we can't. Use. Is there yeah. any way we could potentially change this? How we? Well, at this point, we don't know. I wonder how long they've been pitching these changes, and then now here we are going into week ten where they're like, "All right, you got it. We'll change it." You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Like the people that are trying to, like, follow these protocols and the rules, the trainers and doctors and everybody, they're dealing it with it day to day. And you know, those guys, they get in there four thirty in the morning because people come in need treatment before meetings, before practice, so they are still dealing with all the normal stuff and then all this on top of it, they're trying to make sure they're doing the right thing. Yeah, everybody needs to remember that whenever you see a, a meme or a gif about the water girls or water boys of the NFL getting paid a certain amount of money and they go, I could do that shit. It's like, all right, well, you will have to do that. Then you're also just gonna have to eat shit for about 13, 14 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Put that on repeat for six months. Everybody's mad at you. You have to get everything right. And then by the way, on Sundays, maybe you'll get a chance to Squirt a bottle of water. Yeah, Maybe nice. that'll happen. They, they, those hours are insane. And they, you have to have great, obviously your work ethic has to be amazing to be both equipment manager and athletic trainer in the NFL because this is the NFL. It's not, you have to have a great personality though. The personalities on athletic trainers because of the amount of hours you're dealing with, some of the biggest names in the world with the amount of money that's being dealt with, with ownership and players and coaches and your relationship, you have to have a great personality. That's why I think these trainers, if they're anything like what I think they potentially are, they've been bitching about these tubes since protocol was put into place. We ain't, fu we can't fucking do it. Are you kidding me? So I'm surprised that it is week 10 that these changes are being made because I assume this has been a rather, what are we doing situation from the medical field about something medical in a world that is revolving around science. I, I just assume that this has been something long time coming out, uh, I guess. Can you imagine like the stress levels of a lot of the trainers and doctors? So Flea, the main trainer there in Green Bay, Flea and Nate, the guys there I talk to a lot. Flea, his little dude, he runs, he runs hot. I always send him texts and jokes of like, hey man, don't die because his heart beats at 7,000 beats a minute. And because he cares, like he's a, he's a soldier for the cause, as I would tell him, because he loves Green Bay, he loves the Packers, he loves the players so much. Hopefully these things will ease their tension a little bit and maybe add a few years onto his life, you know, because Flea, these guys are people I worry about. Well, it's, it's, if Flea was the one that found Aaron Jones's. Mm -hmm. Yep. Flea was, yeah, Flea searched that whole field. Flea's a <laughs> little guy, too. He, he's not a big dude. Well, Flea. He's searching everywhere. His nickname is Flea. So I, I we. Big Eminem fan. Hell yeah. Really? I got him. I got him a. I went on Amazon, Fantastic. bought an Eminem picture one time. Oh. Went on Amazon, Eminem picture, signed it, Flea. 
I said something. Love your passion. Keep up the good work. Go pack. Signed it Eminem. <laughs> Gave it to him. He put it. I think it's still on his. It's still on his in his office. And I text him randomly to ask him how many guys really think it's real. Like guys will go, okay, Flea, all right, I see. You. <laughs> <laughs> how long did he ten think? Years, ten years ago, probably. How long did he think up. it was real for before you told him, or was it immediately? Oh, he knows me well. He knew it wasn't real. <laughs> That's hilarious. Let's get to the Five Energy phone line and wrap up this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Those <laughs> trainers, thinking of them telling them that we could... What the fuck? What just happened? I don't know. It sounds like... Oh, it sounds like something fell. Yeah, Mitt check it out. fell from the vents up there. <laughs> yeah. Mitt came down from... Yeah, his body crashed from the mezzanine. <laughs> his, <laughs> his parachute didn't open. <laughs> Yikes. Came in this morning, no power in the building. Yeah. I mean, there's been a lot that's been going on. I cannot wait to move to our new home. Yeah. I hey, is the church, you can have a big backup Coliseum. generator at the church? Well, I don't know if it's going to be called Coliseum either. I heard Coliseum was just death all the time. I didn't know that. I thought oh, it was yeah. like battles. Oh, gladiators, yeah. Oh, wow. Battles. Well, the fans, else, the, the crowd decides. Coliseum's awesome. Yeah, Coliseum, Coliseum is death, though. Yeah. Yeah, but that's fine. I don't know. It kind of looks like the old igloo. You know? Like, oh. Uh, kind of looks like the old igloo as Sun I was looking death. at As I've been going through, you know, uh, the blueprints and the potential builder's drawings and oh, everything yeah. like that. I was looking at it. It looks like the igloo, the old igloo. And I'm like... Maybe we call it the igloo. Is that where the pens played? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they imploded it from within, and it was uh, it was there where we all got off school, you know, in Pittsburgh. To go watch them implode the. That was on TV. TV. It was on every single every single TV in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I'd like to watch one of those in person. Well, not that one, because that one brought so much happiness to all of us. But you can watch that Orange Bowl. Dirty right? flipped the table because <laughs> what you said about him earlier. Excuse me, what? <laughs> Dirty sorry, flipped sorry, the table. Right. Yeah, he tripped and fell and he dropped the table. Uh, you know why? What? Hey, Dirty was, <laughs> Dirty was traveling around, <laughs> piling around with Mitch. Yeah, yeah. You know okay. floating in the clouds. He dropped the table. Hey, Dirty, fucking yeah. keep an eye on the road. The bills, pal. The bills have gone that. up since he showed up Jeez to the office. Jeez Louise! Huh? He's still carrying tables around. He doesn't, doesn't have matter. a desk right now. Hey, he makes great fucking graphics though. It's not. Yeah. Oh, those tables those are heavy. Oh, yeah. when you got when you got twenty pipes in your pockets too, it's hard to lift things. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> Dirty's almost made the list. It seems like from. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, when you had Dirty, I love you, man. Just, I mean, while you're floating around, fucking yeah. keep your eyes. What are we doing? Hey, good hey when news, you got Pat. that kid in, Pat, that uh, that nice the podcaster kid, it was awesome what you did. Gio. Did you guys clean up the office at all? No, no. Okay. Why? I, just, I was just one just. Wondering if, like, he and his nice, innocent family walked in, and I just don't wonder if you cleaned it up at all. What? What are you talking what could about? Possibly? Yeah, what? Talking about? Well, we no, had I mean, to get. It's usually pretty clean around. when you're not in here pissing all over the floor in the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to. Hey, the first time I saw that, <laughs> we hit posted, this, and yeah, you're the first right. Time I saw it. I didn't notice the hands till like ten minutes later. Oh, it's because they're the same. This is the most <laughs> disgusting thing in the office, by the way. This accurate depiction of oh, your yeah. well, your hands without gloves. Whose hands are those? Yours. Yours. All right. You're Russell Wilson's now. <laughs> oh. All right. Beast from X Men. Yeah, Russell's homecoming back to Wisconsin is going to get overshadowed by possibly o OBJ and Aaron. <laughs> Odell Beckham Jr. getting announced, maybe? Oh, Ooh, awesome. Can you imagine that? I'll say going to the Colts game and listening to the intros was cool live. You know, that was cool. You get a good read on who's what, you know? Quentin Nelson, big pop. Mm hmm. Taylor, obviously. Jonathan Taylor was introduced last. Okay. Jonathan Taylor was introduced last. Biggest pop. Biggest pop. What about for Carson? Top four or five. Top four or five pop. <laughs> yeah. Top That's four or five. Pretty good yeah. for, That's not a good sign. Good for your quarterback. Hey, he was not introduced last either. Jonathan Taylor was introduced last, and it was very much like a – and if T.Y. was there, which he wasn't, if T.Y. was there, I mean – Top it, ten. Yeah, I mean – Hines had a massive pop. It was fat. We were the only people that were paying attention to that, but that's yeah. like a real thing. We were the only yeah. people in there like, oh, how bad they're. Quentin Nelson, okay, fucking it. Big Jack pop. Doyle got a pretty good pop. He's he been around a long time. Jack Doyle got a pretty good pop. Naeem Hines, pretty good pop. And then Carson Wentz got introed. And I was like, oh, that has to be it or whatever. And then I was like, what? Well, where's. And then all of a sudden it was like, pff, pff, Jonathan Taylor. That's a big deal going last. That yeah. is a. That is a massive honor. He just got named AFC Offensive uh, Player of the Month or whatever on a team with a losing record. 11 of 16 AFC teams have a 500 record or better. The Colts are one of five teams that don't have that. Jonathan Taylor still wins Offensive Player of the Month in the AFC. Gets introduced last, and the place went fucking apeshit for yeah. it. It was awesome. It was really, 
really cool. Good for him. He he deserves it, man. Everything I've seen and listened to him talk when you had him on, what a what a solid guy he seems like. I wonder if Carson even hears that. No, Carson no, doesn't know. Locked in. He just cares about the pop from heaven. Because uh-huh. <laughs> only God can pop uh-huh. for Carson. That's right. That's right. Hey, man. I, I thought it was pretty – I thought it was pretty loud, though. The sound difference between Carson and Jonathan Taylor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was crazy to me. Between Carson and Quentin. Not to Carson, by the way. By the way, Carson has played great. Hey, he just got there, too, I guess. He's brand new. Obviously, the team does not have a winning record. Everybody in Indy knows that this team is an incredible you know, team on paper, roster-wise. This team just went to the playoffs with Phillip Rivers last year. You know, like, there is a, there's a hey, you got to earn it, but overwhelmingly positive for Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. yeah. The Colts yeah. motorcycle got more pop than Carson. Well, that halftime show, though, they need, <laughs> they need to yeah. – I am not – listen, I'm no expert on anything, but I do know that if you get if you have everybody in the stadium – Yeah. Hey, take your phones out. All right. <laughs> and uh, turn on your flashlight here. You're going to be a part of this halftime show or whatever, Okay. So they had everybody in the stadium take out their phones and turn on a flashlight, and they took the lights off. It was, it was a very cool atmosphere. But immediately upon that happening, I think to myself, oh, nobody's going to be able to record this. Okay, nobody's going to be able to take a picture of this. Everybody's going to just kind of be a part of it, and who knows if this is on TV or not. But this is still cool to be a part of. Then the show itself, I mean, was an incredible display of talent, an incredible oh, yeah. display of talent. But we see things that are much grander and bigger than – I mean, every single two swipes on the internet. So a lot of those lights yeah, just goodness. immediately, like yeah, uh, like I'm 35 seconds this. in, a lot of the lights are not nah, not doing that. Right to <laughs> literally, literally, it was it was an interesting thing. I looked around and just saw lights just go from lit up to uh, no, nah, nah, we're not, I'm, I'm gonna check my hair. What are the stats too? I don't know what stats are. They, that is kind of what happened, but I think the drum line did kill it. Yeah, yeah. they they oh, did well. Yeah. They gotta give out free uh, corn dogs to everybody next time. Jackie, it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the five energy phone line. It was it was a fun experience of going to the game, but I feel like I pay attention to things much differently than everybody else. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. just- is it possible uh, because of Carson's vax status that he may get less of a cheer? Nah, I there think may be some people, people in the stadium that are like, a oh, bobcat guy, and not a deer guy, and they're it's fucking sick and tired. It of might it. be the John Deere yeah. situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people definitely know he's not a John Deere guy. Oh, oh here in Indy, here in Indy, dude, you kidding me? Big masses. <laughs> Don't stop doing the glasses, <laughs> bro. Is that a green tractor? He? No, it's not. Is that fucking John? What's he like, Kubota? No, no he's a fucking bobcat, bobcat guy. Is that a bobcat. Listen, maybe in the animal hierarchy, uh, Bobcat can take down a deer, but ain't nothing run like a fucking deer on the farm, oh, yeah. pal. Bingo. That's right. Yeah. No, I do not know if that's true because I have never run either of the equipment on farm. Well, deer's in some hot water right now, too. Apparently, there's some yeah. greedy corporate fat cats up there. So, oh, yeah. Is it about the seeds? Because really? I'll tell you what, I've been learning about these seeds that no. they've been doing. Nah, the think, seeds uh, they've been creating. I think some of the, the workers want a little bit more of a Inflation. pay increase. Yeah, and they basically just said, hey, fuck you guys. Your grunts get back on the line. And they said, okay, we're going to go on strike then. Oh, oh, they go on strike and say I that? thought they gave in. Who, John Deere? I thought John Deere at least gave them a little bit of what they wanted. Well, if it runs like a deer, then her eyes light up. They might have. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I just Shut know up. nothing runs like a fucking deer. She thinks my tractor sexy. sexy. Yeah. He, he really, really turns her on. Still on strike. Two days ago. Oh, sorry, they haven't given stairs. And that me. Supply chain. Well, I'm chugging along. So is that why we can't get any fucking John Deere's for Christmas? Yeah. Why don't John Deere pay their people a little bit more money so those fucking Deere's can continue to take the tractor another round, another round, another round. round. How come, huh? Let's go ahead. I know. I've been asking the same question. Come on, John. Bobcat ain't doing that. Oh, Bobcat don't have to make any because ain't nobody buying them. They ain't worried about any of the work over there. John Deere, save Christmas. Save the farmers. John Deere, Pay your employees. Come on, dear. Come on, dear. Come on. Come on, dear. dear. Come on, John. A lot of people ask about my knowledge about country, you know, mm. growing up in... Uh, yeah, do you listen to much country? Seems yeah. like it. I went to school at West Virginia. I've lived in Indiana. Hell yeah. I think I've been around uh, some situations that could potentially educate me on the finer things of farm life. 
but I myself could have never fucking done it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I feel like I know it now, but I, I know a little bit about it. I could have never accomplished it. I have no idea how they do it. The amount of grit, the competitive stamina that you consistency have. Consistency you have to have, too. They, the, the stamina of just every day, hey, this shit ain't going to do itself. Yeah. Every single day. And then the it, you don't get paid off right now. You no. get paid off. You're yeah. such a forward. I have no idea how they do it. It's no, a peaceful job, though. I don't think so. No. I guess there's peaceful moments. Oh, I guess yeah, when you right. get to see the, yeah. the field and everything like that, and you're by yourself, and I assume a lot of the people that are forming right now that listen or watch this show will say, like, this is my call, and this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But there is all chaos that breaks loose yeah. whenever with the fucking shit, whether it's John Deere or any of the other stuff. When you're dealing with animals, oh, right? yeah. I mean, there is something that's going to go on. And relying on weather. That's the biggest part. What? Cause rain makes corn, corn, corn makes whiskey, whiskey makes my baby, get a little frisky. Yeah, you're waiting on Mother Nature to do her thing, and Father Time only has so much time because it needs to be knee high by the 4th of July. That's right. Mm -hmm. And Bill Gates is buying up all your land. Yep. Not just Bill, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Nope. I think it's a lot oh, of people. Jeff. There's others? I think there's a lot of people investing in a lot of land, yeah. They ain't making more of it. Well, and also, there's a potential Dubai, generation. Dubai is. Well, they are just creating a country over there. It's, it's incredible. If you have all the oil money in the world, what you can do, I guess, that is very Im impressive. But the, the land, the generation of me, like I'm actually talking about me, but also the generation of me and other, I think a lot of people are realizing that maybe the uh, generational farmers aren't as many as they once were. You know, so I think a lot of people that are potentially investment people or banking people or have a lot of money know that they can go into farmers that they maybe were never able to convince to get rid of the farmland and say, hey, how about this? You don't have to do any of this work. You're rich forever. And we just get your, I don't know, 10,000 acres or whatever. And they're like, deal, fucking take it. And then all of a sudden, two million square foot Amazon fucking thing has popped up in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Indiana. And just like, okay, here we go. This is how it goes. That seems to be happening, I think, across a lot of, a lot of farmland. But we need those farmers out there. And we need our fucking John Deere. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That's right. We do. Thank you, farmers. Thank you, farmers. Thank you, farmers. Thank you, farmers. We hey, also John May. need a place to store the billionaire's robot drone army. Oh, True. come on. What? Those Amazon what? warehouses will eventually house wow. drone armies. Well, they're very close to us, so let's hope that they don't they don't want to piss near they sleep. They're just gonna chop off the packages, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. that's, what that's all they're gonna do. do. Yeah. What about the dogs? Why? What about With the dogs? They're gonna sniff out COVID. Shh. No. Oh, you're talking about the cannon dogs? Yeah. yeah. We don't need to talk about it. they aren't in Indiana. Uh, I don't know. Let's I'm go sure there somewhere. What? what? Huh? What's your what's your mayor's name again? Hogshead. Where's he been? Is he all right? <laughs> Checking. Deep in the there. weeds, probably. Is he with Fouch? I don't know. Things have turned around, though, down here. I mean, potholes are worse than they've ever been. Oh, Construction yeah. is Seems terrible. like the city is opening up. Construction yeah, is because of the pothole. It doesn't seem like... I don't know if the mayor handles the construction, by the way. I don't think so. But whoever is handling it city is a terrible, yeah. terrible forward thinker. Figure is it out. normal for like when they're redoing highways to just like blow them up with dynamite and just leave it there and say we'll get around <laughs> to it eventually? Because that seems to be going on around us. <laughs> on a very heavily used highway? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was it, at the Colts game. It does seem to be the new trend is this road is used by everybody in the city. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and detonate it. Yeah. And then guess what? We'll give them an alternative over here and just have them stare at the detonation for, I don't know, 8, 9, 10, 11 months with no work being done. Yeah, and it'll be perfect because this is going to turn into a bottleneck. There's going to be a lot of accidents around here. It's going to take you a long time to get home. At no matter what time you leave, everyone's going to love it. I don't think that's the mayor. Okay. But somebody did do that. Mm -hmm. That was somebody's I decision. I want answers. It's an infrastructure you were talking about earlier. No, I think it's a different bill. This was do this has been done for the last ten months. I don't know what this trillion dollars is gonna yeah. be used, but hopefully it will be for the, the road that everybody uses in Indiana being detonated and maybe getting fixed again. That'd be nice. How about the road? We're using like shoulders now of roads because they're blowing things up and fixing other roads, very important roads. They could have done this during the quarantine. Instead they decided to start it immediately upon the world going back to work almost here in Indiana. Yep. They the roads are so bad with potholes. Okay, naturally. Let alone whenever you bottleneck everybody into one lane or whatever. These roads are the moon. 
And these are highways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, it is, boom, 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 boom. You're for, there's not even anywhere that you could potentially miss it at. It is a problem. So it is state and local government. So I'm guessing that's Hawks set. No, I don't think the mayor is in charge of that. But he probably put whoever's in charge, he put them there. Yeah. No, like Indiana Department of Transportation is probably who that is, right? Wouldn't that run through the state if it's a highway? I would assume so. Hawks set, I think. Anything on the highway. It all comes back to Hawks (laughs) set. But the stuff in the city, I think, is in. Man, I don't know anything about anything. I don't know shit about fuck, but I'll continue to ask questions and ask. Thank you, Hawks. That's right. Let's go to five. Just get. Can we just open a road? Yeah. Open it up. Please. Just open a road. Let us drive. Make it easy. Or maybe, I mean, I hate to do it, but semis can't go on a highway anymore. (laughs) Because <laughs> they're slowing everybody we down. Need the the they're slowing we everybody need down. I hate to do it. You know, <laughs> take the back roads, bro. They got these oh, semis. They're driving through the back roads to get to these fucking oh, yeah. two million square foot. They the semis. God in bless them, by the way, for yeah. those tight turns. It's not oh, just there. Our highways too are one lane yeah. with literally these trucks. All 18 wheels on these highways are just going, brr, 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 yeah. and they have to go slow because they're almost getting rattled into the barriers. Tipping over. And then as they go slow, everybody's behind them. Like, get the fuck on here. And then they have to exit that road. And then they have to go on some country roads that have never been used oh. by anything other than maybe a John Deere or two yeah. for 45 years. Now it's like, no, 18 wheeler after 18 wheeler. These drivers have to fucking hate yeah. Indianapolis. Oh, Indiana. yeah. Big I feel time. bad for them. I do too. Don't. Because one of these days, one of those semis is going to open up and 15 robotic dogs with 50 cows mounted on the back are going to jump out and run wild. Ah, it's possible. True. It's very animated. Everybody wants me on these primetime political shows. Oh, Hawks. Who is that, Wolf Blitzer? That'd be yeah. awesome. Don Lemon? <laughs> we got Tony Carrenti this weekend. Oh, yeah. Good luck. Fucking fire him, dude. He's, he's hip checking players. Done dude. with it. Are players allowed to hit him back? Mm. He's like the ref and Mr. Uh, what's that, Billy Mass? The fuck? Might help. Mr. Deeds? Might help Carson. Though. People have asked me to go on these political shows, though. What are they thinking? They, they know nothing. Situation room? Nah, Wolf Blitzer did not ask me. Maddow? Oh. I'm not going to get into who asked me and who oh, didn't ask okay. me. Okay. Come on. Tucker? It was not Rachel nor Tucker, though. Damn. Good morning, Indiana. <laughs> they haven't asked me to come on. That would be a yes. Okay. But the um, the, the political... Kimmel is a late-night show host. <laughs> He's not a political... Because it seems like when I saw... Not- hey, they're having me come on there to dunk on me, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're coming no. on. No. Tra- AJ, Tra- shut Tra- up, Tra- dude. Setting you up. You don't know. It's a setup. It does, to, to dunk on like you, what do you mean? Hey, you have to worry knows. about. What well, do you they're, 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 they're going to ask me a question about something they know immensely more about and then i'm gonna give an answer and then it's gonna be like a well see i can understand how you thought that but boom 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 boom, boom. and then i'm i'm the i'm on the side of the screen that makes it to the internet going okay cool dog Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know what i mean like i I don't know if i'm the guy that should be going in there but i've been getting a lot of requests i don't know what aura i have given off get the tank top guy we're gonna dunk on him exactly (laughs) aj goes on all these other shows maybe he's the guy well aj maybe you should go i'll forward these emails Nah, yes. I've, I've been shutting down. I'm not. People don't ask me to come on political shows, but other sports stuff. It was crazy. Like, Would you like I've to come quiet. on? Blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh, let me Google who this person is. Oh <laughs> shit, this is a real. <laughs> Tubin, you should go on with Tubin if he asks you. <laughs> Tubin's the guy that did the thing on yeah. the Zoom, smacking his balloon. Yeah. Come on. Not to be confused with Zubin, who is that? Eviscerating. Yeah, not Zubin. Not Zubin, but Zubin. <laughs> Where is Zubin? Is he back? He's, He's back. back. He's all Good the way him. back. Oh, dude. Lubin He's Tubin, though. Yeah. <laughs> it was not Lubin Tubin. Hey, if Tubin did ask you to go on, you have to do his show. Bro, I don't want to do any of those shows. As soon as you get into that, it just becomes... Well, he can't dunk on you because you yeah, have something you got to the... continue to fall back on. Are you the guy that's beating your shit on a Zoom? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, now we're going to commercial break. All right, all right, we don't need me back. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. That's been happening. It's been a wild existence these last four or five days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Literally. A lot of people are learning about my existence that had never known me, and it's the same process for everybody that gets introduced to me. <laughs> everybody hates it early. Some people stick around, don't mind it later. They inevitably leave. But, boy, I'm in that stage with a lot of people of them not liking it. And here I am just having a good time, trying my best, drinking a green tea. Hell yeah. Talking about the ball. What? Got two proper bets in last night. Yeah. yeah. 
took a lead over AJ on our weekly stand. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, I mean, here I am having a good old time. What? I'm serious. I'm getting that audit done for sure. Don't. On the picks this uh, you don't need the audit. Shut anything. up, trust AJ. us. Just trust us. Dude. Yeah, let me trust you. You try to sneak. <laughs> you try to say you got two two points, and I got minus one when I. Clearly won, and we tied last night. Okay, I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you're stats, lucky. That's, that's all that happened. Stats say a lot of things, AJ. What, what else could have happened, Nick? We could have kicked your ass. Well, I could have <laughs> drove over to Wexton's house. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Get him. Walked over to your house and beat you up. You guys would have showed up at my door. What it, with a bat? <laughs> you know what time it is. I'm taking two tonight. Get out of here. <laughs> taking two tonight. Get out of the way, Axel. We'll get your dad. <laughs> Axel, fucking, where's your dad? Let the boy watch. <laughs> Tell your dad I'm taking two tonight, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> Imagine AJ opening the door, seeing me like this, laughing, and then grabbing the bat. Oh, no. And then it would be, all right, I'm out of here. We need more people. I'm going down to Wexstein's house. <laughs> you live right next to him, though. You do, actually. Yeah, Wexstein. Who is Wexstein? You know. Who you know who I'm talking yeah. about. Dan Zeus, The hybrid child they have. <laughs> Let's get to the five-hour energy phone line. <laughs> Been trying to do this for two hours. <laughs> Anybody else got anything else we should chat about before uh, we get there? I mean, we did a John Deere strike. Mm, yeah, had to. Pay him, John May. Hey, what's that seed? There's a seed. Uh, Monsanto? Yes. You think of them? Yes. Bayer bought them, but yeah. Okay. The aspirin company? No, no. Seed. It's, it's a actually seed. smart to take a baby aspirin a day, by the way. I just want everyone to know that. Really? Oh, and also a glass of wine, right? I don't know about that. Antioxidants. Hell yeah, good for the heart. Both are good for the heart. Speaking of heart, also good for you. What do you mean? Eating heart. What? 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 Is that what you were saying? <laughs> what the fuck? I've oh. seen a lot of stuff okay. about <laughs> get out of Army Hammer over hey, get here. Out of <laughs> That's what you were talking yeah, about. Army Hammer, I would like to rip your heart. <laughs> Out of your it. chest and watch it beat in my hands. Oh, no. I love you though. Is that what you were talking about? I've seen this ripped up yolk guy who's eating like bull uh, testicles and raw meat. Oh, uh, those are uh, Blue Mountain oysters. Yeah, that's sure. right. People eat heart. Them. People eat the hearts of animals all it's the time. Liver. Yeah, like horses. What? I don't know about that. Horse heart. <laughs> Mr. Hands, yeah. you're trying. It's a rare steak. It's like flaming yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. Max in California. What's going on, Max? Hey, Pat and boys. How we doing? Keep it moving. Yes, I am. Keep moving. <laughs> so I saw Ocho Cinco on the Full Sin podcast, and he was doing his norm- normal bullshit about eating McDonald's every day, which it looks like Zion Williamson's maybe took him on. All right. But, That's uh, true. Too. He also Kenny said the that did say. popped Viagra before games just to get him going back when he was in the league. What do you think about that? There's no way he's serious, and that guy's wild if that's true. Fascinating question, Max, and we are all Ocho Cinco fans over here. I, I thought you can't run with a heart on. Well, so you, would know. you could run with a heart on. I think a lot of people that's have. That's always been said, though. No, I think you could just strap it down. I'm not 100% sure how We're people up. would do that, but gotcha. Viagra, and now there is obviously alternatives. Roman has one because Viagra's patent was up, and everybody could just basically make the generic versions of, which has happened. So Viagra was banned by the cycling thing because it helps with blood flow. Yeah. So somehow it was viewed as a performance-enhancing drug in the cycling world, and this was happening while the entire pumping and, and dumping of blood and getting more oxygen and all that shit that was happening in the blood world. But I remember watching something where Viagra was chatted about and banned in the cycling world because of its ability to expedite blood flow and maybe get more oxygen into your thing. So maybe that's what Ocho was doing. I'm not 100% sure he was looking around to fuck anybody. I, I think he was Wasn't just, it originally supposed to be a heart medication? And then they were like, oh, yes. this is... That is this oh, did they stumble on beans. it? Yes, yeah. that is true. It's one of those? Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. maybe Aaron. Well, if you're eating McDonald's yeah. every day to clog your heart, you have to take Viagra every day to open up the valves. So that makes sense. Smart, actually. It's a vasodilator, right? So yes. like when you get a pump, like it feels good, like, right? You know what Viagra is? Good word. A no. vasodilator, right there. Simply put. It's like what NO Explode was back Were in the you day. reading oh. the people who ask section of Google right there? Simply put, <laughs> Viagra is a vasodilator, meaning it helps relax blood vessels to allow for increased blood flow. In presence of sexual stimulation, this increased blood flow is the means of counterattack against ED. Such increased blood flow is not as helpful during competitive sports. Oh. 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 Whoa. Because hmm. the cycling community did not Because say it that. says, in parentheses, you can't run with a hard on. <laughs> doesn't say that. No, it doesn't. Because you can. 
Uh, small print. No. Oh, oh, is there an asterisk? Why is ESPN? That's a, can you? Yeah, can you That's search? That's 2008, though. Come on now. That's a long time. Who knows how many bodies have changed or how much Viagra has changed True. or maybe the research has been done. Look up this cycling community with Viagra. I yep. think... I think that's a real thing, not hundred percent. Hey, young Jamie. <laughs> so Good luck. Like we're gonna tuck that thing on your bike. Well, they Should tape it. They have to be uncomfortable to begin with on bikes, right? Aren't you just kind of? I mean, yeah. You know, add that to in it in your waistband, dude. You tape it to the seat, maybe. Classic. Classic. Just pour it right up underneath the belt. Dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I think of those shorts. You just kind of do that whole thing, and I, don't, I think. It, Viagra for a different kind of performance enhancement. Can popping the little blue pill make you ride better? Ayo. As I was training, there's it just yeah. I need to know if that's did they ban it? This guy's whole story. Dude. Um, I, I'm not getting into this. Nah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, it has been talked about as being a performance. How about us just choosing not to read the answer? <laughs> <laughs> that's what this show. That's what this show. Hey, but has. Chad Johnson felt like it helped him, so therefore it helped him. So therefore, and it's not on the banned list from the NFL, so oh. he could do whatever he wants. Let's go to Casey in California on the Five Hour Energy phone line. Go to FiveHourEnergy.com. Use promo code McAfee to receive 10 percent off your order. We're in the midst of 23 straight days of football. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Grab some Five Hour Energy to. Stay alert through all the action. Go to 5 Hour Energy's website to find over 15 flavors to choose from with flavors like watermelon, what? tropical burst, what? cherry, what? peach mango, what? and more. There is literally a flavor for everyone. Use promo code MACFEE to receive 10% off your order. Let's go. Here we go. I love those little shots, man. Love fire. fire. So, so quick. <laughs> and then I, you know what I mean, AJ? I like to sip on it. I'll, I'll, it takes me five hours to drink one of those little ones. That's oh, smart. Save up all the minutes. Save yeah. up all the minutes. Smart. I used to drink like uh, like half of it and be like, I'm going to need these last two and a half Yep. at some point here. You know, oh, I feel like I drank four of these hours. You want an hour? Well, that's backwash. No, nah, no, nah, I, I, I drank it. Fuck you. I'll take you there. <laughs> There's a lot of that, yeah. Are you guys that sips your uh, shots? You sip your shots too? No. I mean, if it's a shot, you're going to take a shot. So you, when you get down in uh, the chop house... Oh, yeah. Sent you a picture. I know. That was awesome. You went to first, Dave. My first time. I was like, there it is. I've never seen it before. It was downtown. Did you guys go in there after the Dave Matthews concert, or did you stay away right. from it? Is it we, locked down? Is it a scene of a crime? I, I don't know. I honestly, it, no, I'm sure it's open. I'm sure it's doing well. The there's no, God, there's no crime. What if you right? walked in there and you were like, hey, listen, I need two of Urban's fingers of Scott. <laughs> All right. All right enough. I'm sure there's plenty of jokes going around that place. Is it open still? That has to be. Has to Why be. would they close it? It's probably as packed as ever. They roped off the bar, I heard, where that happened. Yeah, I would hope there. Urban's maybe a celebrity sure. bartender. They should build a statue sleeping. there. Just have a bronze a statue stool. of Urban sitting there. With, on a, on so the, others on can come in and get a photo. Yeah. yeah. With his fingers, how they were, and you can. With a, maybe it's. <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a, <laughs> you can even have, like, Urban season, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, when, when the holidays come around, Christmas comes around. There's always like a Santa in the mall. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. And the Easter Bunny. He's going to sit on his lap. Yeah. He's stopped by the Chop House. <laughs> Urban statue will be at the Chop House it's in the a... same exact seat that he was in <laughs> when the video was at for the next three weeks. Yeah. Be 21 bucks a family. They'd make a killing. Like a wishing well. I'd go over there. I'd drive right over there right now. Yeah. They'd make it to a trademark and never take the building down. Historical landmark, yeah. Yeah, not, make not trademark. Landmark? Yeah. yeah. Make it a trademark. <laughs> trademark it too. Hey, they can historically trademark that landmark if they needed to. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would be historic if they trademarked that landmark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Casey in California. What's going on, Casey? Hello. Hey, Casey, were you finally. the... Hey, Casey. Finally. I, listen. All right. Uh, all right. Listen, I've been here the whole time, too. Listen, I, 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 I've had a tough time as well, if it means anything. Casey, were you in a mask getting coffee this morning in California and Los Angeles? And do you potentially have brown hair? Hell no. Okay. okay. All right. I have four items I want to I want to uh, review with you guys. Sure it's not eight. You can, Get rid of them. You can take my comments and after I hang up, so you don't have to respond right away. Okay, hold on, but Casey. I, One second here. Mitt wrote. Normally, Mitt, you know the the sentences that are underneath people's names. Yeah. Yeah. A little concise, so quick. Sure. Mm -hmm. This one says he calls into ESPN shows and gets hung up on all the time when saying anything positive. So yes. Mitt, Mitt was trying to let me know, hey, this guy gets hung up on all the time, I think. Which, by the way, Mitt, good work. Yeah, that's right. Mitt. Mitt. 
Casey, I'm not going to hang on uh, or hang up on you, though, because you've been waiting around a long time. I can't wait to hear what you guys say. Four things. Here we go. <laughs> uh, one hour and 58 minutes, to be exact. Okay. Thank you. My first Please. All right, I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew that, I knew that was All right, let's go to David in Kentucky. What's going on, yeah. David? You got to know. What could the four things have been? Hey, right. hey, guys, great show. Hey, look, uh, oh, you're not you, supposed David. to be Kron Kite or uh, Connie Chung. You guys are doing a good job. The more uh, uh, that uh, you guys ask questions, the less we get to hear Aaron Rodgers uh, say his piece. I would like to ask AJ, uh, what about this uh, Cleveland uh, Green Bay game, uh, Christmas Day, and uh, <laughs> uh, if, uh, I, I think uh, I think Cleveland's going to go up there and hit him in the mouth. In the mouth, oh, boy, David. Good call. All right, good call. Christmas yeah, good Day. call. Dude, Casey had so much, dude. <laughs> Casey, call back tomorrow, bro. I've been here for an hour and 58 minutes, too. If it means anything, Casey, I'm fucking miserable, dude. Let's just get to it. I, I actually want to you to make the show better, Casey. Let's get let's get to it. Can't wait to hear Casey call back in California. David in Kentucky, he had a lot on his mind. He said, hey, listen, we need to talk about this. The more questions you ask, the less we hear of Aaron. You did great. And now let's talk about Christmas Day two months from now. Now, that's going to be the Odell Beckham Jr. fucking revenge game, potentially, if he goes to the Green Bay Packers, if Jordan Schultz of Schultz Report is accurate. Don't you think, A.J.? Yeah, it's possible that would definitely add something to that game. But just I didn't know they I didn't know Cleveland's traveling there on Christmas Day and playing. But no, nobody did. That would be I feel like if Green Bay's defense continues to roll, it's going to be a tough day for the Browns. Oh, but they're yeah. getting pressure. Like they look good. There's a chance at this Green Bay defense if they get hot. Now we don't know anything about the Chiefs, but if that Green Bay defense gets hot, and the special teams can figure it the fuck out, there's a couple things that have yeah. to happen. I think awareness is something that has to happen. I know a lot of people are going after Coach Mo potentially for this. Oh, they hired the assistant special teams coach to be the regular uh, uh, special teams coach. That's how and it works. Yeah, well, you work, he, you work your way up. That's how it works, though. Yeah, you're supposed to uh, hopefully find a promotion, especially if somebody else doesn't do it. Coach Mo is a great dude, great coach. He can only you can only work with what you have. In some teams, the roster, the money is spent high. So then the special teams players are coming in sometimes on Wednesday, playing Sunday, being released on Monday. These players that you don't know the names of that are now having to learn something they've never done before, potentially take a punt pass set or maybe cover a kickoff or kickoff return, and they're just trying to earn a job. I think there has to be a lot more, a lot more concentration on awareness because that ball hitting that person's foot can't happen. Yeah. That can't happen. The returner can't let that happen, by the way. The returner has to be the one that is in there saying, ah, get the fuck out of the way, because the returner is the eyes for everybody. So I think that can clear up. The snapper and Corey Bohorquez, they can figure it out, right? This week, a lot of reps. He was a new snapper last week. Hopefully, they'll be able to figure out so Mason Crosby doesn't have to deal with, you know, a lack of confidence from the holder, balls everywhere, especially in a 21-mile-an-hour gusting stadium, which is not easy for the snapper. They can figure it out. I think there's a couple adjustments that could be made to the special teams to get them a lot better. But if the defense as a whole can play like they played against the Chiefs, with Aaron coming back, Odell potentially being added to that, Devontae Adams, Lazard, MVS, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, now you guys got a fucking squad. Now you guys got a team. Oh, yeah, Bakhtiari hasn't played yet either, and on the defense, you know, arguably two of the, the, both of their best players. You know, Jair Alexander should be coming back, Zadarius Smith. Like, they're, they're still pretty banged up. So if their defense can – I mean, they've been – plugging and playing guys all year so if they can keep playing like they have been yeah i mean but the special teams is the the big the there's big a couple thing. of things they could figure out there i think personally i hope and reps are one of them but also just like a concentration on something like hey let's just get the ball back first let's just get the ball back we got aaron here then let's start adding into things but the returner has to keep that the returner's the eyes for everybody gotta put cabo back yeah. there muffed one too. i think so I think so. Because even when they even when they weren't like they're you know I mean if you're trying to help out a guy making his first start they they started multiple drives like inside their own ten like you just can't, you can't yeah do you can't that. let balls bounce either like yeah. the returner there's a lot of decisions that get made that people don't really give credit to like a fair catch you're like oh you just kind of fair catch it's like well could have let that ball drop and if that ball drops and gets another thirty yards you're fucked there's a lot of things that have to, you have to keep people away from the ball if that's going to happen. You have to decide whether or not you're going to catch it. You have to count and make sure everybody's on there. There's a lot that the returner has to be the eyes for, but I think you can fix that. Mm -hmm. I think you can fix that. I think you can fix the snap and hold situation that fucked over Crosby, even though Crosby, hey, make the kick, dude. That's what you're supposed to do, even though there's a lot of shit happening in front of him. 
But man, what if Aaron comes back on a tear because everybody is against him and you get spite, slight Aaron Rodgers and that team? Let's go, dude. Yeah. Huh? You got to be pretty excited. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, and we'll, I don't know when the when we'll actually hear about the, the Odell stuff. I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's not going to happen. He's not going to wind up in Green Bay. But for the next <laughs> couple hours, I'm going to be very excited of the possibilities of that. You're saying no chance, huh? Yeah, probably not. I don't okay. think it's going right. to happen. Well, but that, I... it's sweet to think about. All right, let's get out of here. Hammer Don's in 15 minutes at YouTube.com forward slash Hammer Don. Don. That's D-A-H-N. They'll go through all the gambling. I assume they'll talk about me going two for last night. Oh, yeah. And stealing a win over A.J. Hawk. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and we're back tomorrow with Coaches Up Chuck Pagano. I can't wait to chat with him, A.J. Yeah, I, I am definitely interested in what Chuck thinks about everything that is going on around the NFL right now. Everything. Yes. Is AJ Dillon always on punt team? No, but I saw he was late out there, and he's the wing, by the way. That's a left pretty wing, important. and he ran out. I was like, why is he even in there? A left wing is one of the most important people. Jack Doyle was that for me, yeah. and as his reps got picked up on the offensive side of the uh, of the ball, because he was just a special. Jack Doyle was just a special teamer at the beginning of his run here for the Indianapolis Colts. I think he was on the Tennessee Titans. They cut him. They bring him back home. And he was immediately a fit in our locker room. Like, everybody loved him. He was a diehard special teamer as a tight end. He's my left wing. I appreciate you, Jack. I just need you to protect here on the blind side. Let's go and do this thing. And then as his reps grew on the offensive side of the ball, as I was jogging on the field, I would always get a, a speak for, uh, speech from Jack Doyle about how tired he was. And like, hey, listen, probably not going to be covering anything here. <laughs> All right, I got you, Jack. Like, we'll get a fair catch. So AJ coming back on the field. I was also a little bit alarmed. I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know, especially at that position. That's a very important. Don't get up and under, especially you come in late or panicking. Okay, you take a little, you take an extra kick slide back. Boop, boop, he goes inside. All you got to do is just sit back one time and then bang up and under block punt game over. And that was the way the Packers special teams had been going. Yeah, to. Right. So big shout out to A.J. Dillon. I mean, not for forgetting he's on the fucking punt team. Like, let's figure it out, obviously. Uh, yeah. But on the flip side, not making it worse and compounding the issue when he had to be tired from the offensive drive. And once again, that's Coach Mo put him out there because he's potentially the only one that knows how to fucking do that mm-hmm. because of maybe players being shifted around and the whole thing. Yeah, and I know uh, Coach Mo was big on, like, Lafleur wanted to pull Amari Rodgers from punt, and he said, no, nah, stick with him on his next one. I think he had, like, a 15-yard return, so... I think he does have the pulse of those guys. But, yeah, you just got to clean it up. Well, see, got to clean up. Can't be making mistakes, especially this deep into the season. We're going to continue to do that, though. We'll fuck up forever. And right. we hope you'll join us tomorrow for Coaches Up Chuck. Thanks to Aaron. Thanks to you, AJ. Boys, thank you all so much for your incredible hard work. Zito with the new clicker system this morning. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Yep. Uh, and thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.